It has all been coming down to this. We gotta turn big dreams into action. We gotta mix action with action. Oh, oh my, what? What an incredible moment. We gotta turn big dreams into action. We gotta mix action with passion. Time short, no time for the action. Be the first and last out, make it happen. We gotta turn big dreams into action. We gotta mix action with action. Without further ado, let's get rolling! Oh my word! What's good, Brawl Nation? Welcome to another monthly finals. It's your boy F Dot, and I'm joined here by Ark and Teddy. Teddy, it's been a minute. How you doing, bro? I'm doing good. I'm excited. Monthly finals here for the MEA again. Always something I am so excited to cast, and I can't wait to get into it. Heck yeah. How about you, Ark? What's going on, old friend? It's going to be a very good day, isn't it? Always a pleasure to be casting my home region, and uh, a lot of changes coming into the game, which no doubt are going to ricochet throughout the competitive scene. Absolutely. Changes on the field, but everything should be as you remember as we jump back into our BSC Monthly Finals. We've got Power Match format going on, so picks and bans, and of course an eight-team single elim bracket. We're going to give you the best of the best, and all of the best of the best is a best of five. So quarterfinals to grand finals the whole way through. Of course, we are starting here in EMEA. Zeta Division reigns supreme. And Navi, Dogster, Lobster, well, one of them is on this list here. Ark, Dogster, Lobster in fourth place overall. Yeah, gotta got say, you know, this is a team that had tremendous results last year and looking like a real contender this year also. Uh, a couple of team issues that we've seen on socials that are coming together now a little bit better and now the team's a bit more reformed as a result and maybe coming together stronger. I think that you cannot count them out. They are a real contender in this competition. Also got to mention as well, A&R and that leaderboards didn't actually qualify this month. So a real chance for many of the teams that are below to try to close that gap. There are definitely a lot of teams out here trying to compete for pretty much the big stuff let's throw the bracket at you real quick and show you which teams are going to be taking the field here today because there are a lot of conversations that i know we want to get our hands dirty with so let's start off right off of the rip we've got sk gaming going up against the number one team here zeta division now arc i'm coming right back to you because i know you got some feelings on this zeta division number one team in the region sk gaming uh, not number one team in the region. <laughs> what, how are you feeling about this? Yeah, not even on the leaderboards at the moment. Well, I mean, <laughs> what we can say for Zeta is that they've won every single monthly final so far, February and March. Um, is, this is a big match for the SK Gaming, but they have made a, a lot of moves recently. They've, you know, bring, bringing back Jetson into the mix has made a big difference, much more reformed and refined now as a team, and they are performing fantastically well. We saw them in the Kesso playoffs uh, as well as the uh, monthly finals for them, and, you know, they managed to reset the brackets in the grand finals and actually go on to win up against Team Kessler themselves at a match point match situation. So they are making plays, they are making moves and you know, that can't be underestimated. They are no longer that team which many are gonna be taking advantage of, but nonetheless, that is a tough match to start them off. Absolutely gonna be a tough one and I'm excited to dive deep in there. A couple of other matches on the field though, Teddy. What's your thoughts? What are you feeling today? I mean, I think an exceptional match is gonna be the fourth quarter final. Reply Totem versus Foot Esports mm -hmm. is incredibly packed and really a 50-50 at this point. And I think this is uh, one of the more exciting matches for this uh, set of quarterfinals. Gonna be a lot of fun watching uh, Reply Totem go head to head against Foot for sure. But whether you want either team to win, just make sure you're watching. Event.brawlstars.com will get you plugged in, get you some extra outside of the lines type stuff, and even some rewards. And we ask you for your predictions. So we got to do our predictions as well. And here we are. And I love to see it. Teddy, you're rooting for chaos as well. Ark, you've always been the wise friend here. So you're kind of going with the Zeta Division. I understand. <laughs> Teddy. Talk to me. Why do you have faith in old SK Gaming? Well, I feel like I, I have to have faith right now for them, and they have to have faith too, because they didn't qualify for the two first monthly finals, 
and they desperately need those points. And I know they're matched against Zeta, but I feel like they got so much more to lose right now on the side of SK. That's got to be a big motivator. And as Ark said, they had exceptional results in the, the Kazo Cup. So I'm hoping that that's the, mo the, the little boost in confidence they needed to start driving. I, I, I feel the same way. SK Gaming, I really have faith in the infrastructure. Let's say I think bringing on Jet is a great plan. Ark, you set the table so wonderfully. And then you went Zeta. You got it. You got. You got to tell me what's up, man. I mean, going back to the qualifiers, you know, SK scaved their way through. They almost went out in heist in a, an earlier stage, and it wasn't looking like when it came down to that kind of pressure that was upon them that they were able to necessarily pull through. But they did, and that does count for something. Um, definitely, the Kessel Cup will give them a, a big lease of life coming into today, as they knew it was going to be a very, very tough matchup from the outset. But nonetheless, I just don't know how they're going to fare in that earlier stage against the team that have won every monthly final to date. Well, we'll get there when we get there. I believe that's going to be our third matchup of the afternoon. But for now, it's going to be Dogster Lobster, number four in the region, taking on Nada Svincir. Well, I've got to say, you know, Navi have had troublesome times, haven't they? Let's be honest, MMA Cube and Angel Boy on their side. But let's focus first on Dogs the Lobster, Kanan, Tomzy, and Cyclone, a team that last year, again, had fantastic promise. In fact, they almost made the world finals. Came a little bit short, but nonetheless, have really shown themselves as a worthy contender for this region, a team that could very well go all the way. And just having a couple of team issues doesn't necessarily help things. They have seemed to have ironed a lot of those things out now, and that's a fantastic thing to see. Yeah, I feel like this is uh, the team that has had really the chance to start popping off now in 2023. And with the issues they had early in the seasons, it kind of broke my heart a little bit because it felt like this was their chance this year to really uh, break apart from, uh, you know, some, some old habits of just barely not making it in tourneys. But it seems like, honestly, bringing Cyclone back may have been one of the, the best changes in, in recent memory for Dogster Lobster. As he's played with him before, there's still quite a bit of synergy with him, and he is quite a strong mechanical player. Uh, we both got, I think all three of us actually got them beating Na'Vi, so Dogster Lobster looking good so far. Yeah, I, I agree. I think Cyclone's a very aggressive player. Best player in EU, as Choker would say. Let's focus now on to Na'Vi, of course. MMA, Cube, and Angel Boy, we all know and love them, but it has been a rough start to this year, no doubt about it. Uh, you know, in terms of points on the leaderboards, have definitely been struggling to really earn them and to be even able to qualify as well. We saw them in uh, February going out in the first round, but back now and looking to try to make better on that scoreline. And altogether, I think it's a great move as well, having that communication really be on point and just sharing in those victories and those all important wins. Should they be able to earn them here today, will go surely a long way. It's an important monthly final here for Na'Vi. They've also been, I don't want to say slacking, but it feels like they can definitely get more points on the leaderboards than they currently have. <laughs> So it's going to be a challenging one. And I, I do like the positive energy they're bringing in, you know, somewhat relaxed and showing that, you know, they're unfazed coming into this match and confident. I don't know if I would be as confident facing Dogster Lobster, but it's not and I feel like they always pull through uh, the most unexpected wins when they need the most. One thing you've got to say about Navi is that this seems to be a common occurrence every single year. They have a slow start. They're slow burners, but they take those losses really on the chin uh, and take responsibility for it and come together actually stronger. I mean, that as well is what my next point was going to lead on to is the fact that they've got a tremendous you know, community backing them, behind them, cheering them on. 92% of those watching over at event.brawlstars.com feel like they're going to get the win today. Only 8% for Dogs the Lobster, but I'll be honest having watched what i've seen over the car past couple of months i do feel like dogs and lobster have got a, a lot more of a percentage at least in my heart going into this one shooting star up first and the band's already in i do love to see that make ban we'll talk a little bit more on that later but eve is the first draft there coming in and it also got to mention that eve has had a new additional gear come into the mix and it is a mythic one at that so you know being able to then spawn in uh, more pets you know with the quadruplets gear is going to make it a big factor nanny and jean to add to the mix of dogs the lobster and that's always a good pairing yeah, I like the Eve here a decent amount. Gives you so much extra breathing room on your lane, just more space to navigate. And I agree, 
I think the new Mythical Gear is gonna be uh, very valuable as well and just add a little bit more pressure. G, I think, is a decent way of dealing with it. Just spread across those uh, shots and make sure all the hatchlings are low enough that they don't quite manage to make it all the way to their target. And Nani, I mean, we've seen it time and time again on Shooting Star, one of the staples of this map. I definitely do like them bring that brawler in. We'll have to sprout as next pick here for Na'Vi. I mean, uh, there's not tons of options when it comes to throwers, and Tick would probably be the best one, but as it is banned out, I think Sprout is second best, and it's good enough here for Na'Vi. Yeah, I don't mind at all. Would like maybe to have seen a Grom myself, but nonetheless, I think that uh, the bans are very important here as well. RT as well had a recent slight tweak, slight nerf, but only to his super, really. Um, B is always going to pack a heavy sting here. Uh, but you no, know, obviously I would like to have seen that Max combined with that gene, but it's banned out. And there is the Grom that I do kind of prefer here. So I am favoring myself a little bit more towards the Dogs the Lobster Cop. I think Nanny here as well is going to be able to get a lot of value, uh, extending that range massively so, and assert some pressure and some authority. I think for Cyclone or whoever is on that gene on the side of Dogs the Lobster, they're going to be quite cautious in the respect that obviously the bee can drop the, the Honey Molasses and you just pull back that instead of the bee. And ideally, you know, if bee's got amplified shot, you don't want to be pulling that one anyway. The uh, East spawnables as well definitely going to be causing a problem. So I think the biggest you know, attribute there on the side of Navi is the comp going up against that gene. So it's just about how they're able to really utilize their strategy going into this one and, and capitalize down. Because I think in that respect, they have a chance here. Yeah, I think on the side of Dr. Lobster, it's going to be about trying to uh, just run through all of the utility that Navi has, right? Whether it's for the gene pools or for the Nani peeps, they're going to have to burn gadgets or uh, maybe sprout wolves as well to tank the, the peeps and that's going to be a limited amount that you have available for yourself blue star on the side of navi we did have some changes to bounty as well so first to 20 will win but usually on shooting star we don't quite get to 20 stars i'm gonna be paying very close attention to that score although wouldn't it be great to see in the first monthly final since that change in emea that change come into full force and have a really epic conclusion but so far can't really say much to the epicness of this one as there is just that blue star and there is the honey molasses tanking there for the peep. But I think the dogs still obviously they've got to keep that rolling in, uh, you know, exacerbate those gadgets along the way and ensure that when Kanan can get that pull to hand that he can really land it at just the right moment because there's so much against him at this moment in time. MMA though, healed up, he was very low, about 165 HP earlier on there. So cutting it a bit fine, but so far, I would say that in terms of positioning power, Dogs the Lobster are doing pretty well at holding themselves well in the mid. Missed pull from Kanan though, and that could prove costly. That's the first one he's had, and there's only 45 seconds left. Yeah, not a whole lot of time, enough potentially. Cyclone low HP, but nicely done by his teammates, creating some space, making sure he can heal up. Now a Grom Bomb is available as well, but MMA does always have his gadget to jump away if need be. Heading into the final 25 seconds, Dr. Lobster is still a singular star behind. The hatchling's not really going to be finding a whole lot of value as the watchtower from Tomzy tanks it up. And now a final push from Dr. Lobster to try to get a kill and steal away this game. MMA is low HP, falls. That might just be enough as Navi push up, try to get a trade. The pool connects onto Angel Boy, but he's the one that ends up going down. And Three stars make it only one now as MMA gets a final kill, but it is Dogster Lobster that will be picking up game number one. Solid stuff. Uh, those moments towards the end of Bounty as well can be very troublesome. Some great body blocking there. Kanan was incredibly low, was able to stay on his feet there as well. I really like to see that from a team like Dogs the Lobster, really just being able to make those moments count. And, you know, Navi were very cautious for the majority of that game. They didn't really give them much of a look, and it was those final moments that really did come in clutch. And that all important pull that Kanan hit at the end as well really did make a big difference there. Absolutely. Blue Star. Again, going to be picked up by Na'Vi, giving them the early advantage and the advantage of defense as well. Let's see if Dr. Lobster can bring it back as they did in game one. They do have a pretty decent mid game so far, pushing them way back in spawn and getting quite a lot of tags. A peep is going to be available for Cyclone. He's not going to be popping it just yet. He's very low HP and he needs to be careful of any aggression coming in from Cube on the right side. It does have that supercharged shot, connects it onto Kanan. It's not going to result in any kills, but nevertheless, some value here and there. A minute left on the clock and Navi are going to have to fend off all those attacks from Darkster. 
Yeah, Cube's doing great work there. Has got the Amplified shot to hand, but, you know, Cyclone will also have returned to Sender. That is a concern. MMA again going down to 180 HP. And that is definitely not placing Navi into a good spot. Cube now low as well on the right-hand side. Surviving on as a result of that Honeycomb shield. But then on the left-hand side, Taunty gets a very important pickup. The takedown of Angel Boy brings them two stars. One star ahead now. That could be crucial here as we go into the final 30 seconds. Cyclone still sitting on his speed. Kanan has a gene pool as well. Final push starting to come in here for Navi. And oh, that is a poor gadget from Q. And he gets punished for it a little bit too late on the trigger. He goes down. Oh, it's three stars in favor of Donkster, Lobster, Blue Star on their side as well. <laughs> Another pickup from Cyclone on the right hand side. And surely Donkster, Lobster should be able to defend here as MMA is going to get pulled as well. And taken out eventually by Tom's he dogs the lobster with a much more dominant second game securing now set number one tough start for Navi Dogs still played it perfectly, didn't they? Let's be honest. I mean, uh, the majority of that game, they had the positioning power when it wasn't in their favor. It's because they chose for it to not be just going back upon themselves and just keeping that control. I I'm not sure that MMA got a super that entire time. I didn't see the Mythic Gear even coming into full force as it does provide an extra, extra spawnable. Yeah, he has uh, has had a tough matchup there um, and didn't you know, didn't really thrive off the back of it, but just the aggressiveness of Dogs the Lobster and that control-based ability was what really shone for me there. Yeah, they played it fantastically, you know, and uh, as I kind of mentioned in the beginning, I feel like burning through the utility from Na'Vi was very important, making sure they just can't, uh, you know, dodge the pools with a jump or honey molasses. I think there were a lot of mistakes from Na'Vi, like this skill here on Cube should never realistically be happening at this level of play. But maybe some nerves and a bit of a warm-up game here for the first set could justify that. Nevertheless, it gives Navi a little bit less room to breathe getting into the rest of the series as they'll be kicking off uh, the match with uh, a one-set deficit. Here we see the stats as well, and you know, it's a tough thing to look on the right hand side, isn't it? You know, looking at MMA, just that one kill there, but it was more one more than everyone else on his team. And look at the amount of DPS uh, over. Navi from the side of Dogs the Lobster as well. Everyone doing their bit and not a single player on the side of Navi into triple figures there. So definitely a troublesome start for them. Gonna have to go back to the drawing board, really kind of think things through just a little bit as to how they're gonna be turning this one around. And I've got to be honest, it kind of has to start with the draft. But I'm kind of liking what I've already seen, to be honest. I mean, getting Meg out of the mix will maybe have a chance to discuss a bit more about as to why, because obviously Meg's had that rework recently now where she will spawn in, in mecha form. We saw it already today in the APAC region just how dominant Meg really was faring. So I'm glad to see it being banned as well. Uh, if, if you're on the side of Dogs the Lobster, they choose to keep it open and Navi really capitalized down on that. We know that Navi are a team that really like to combine healers into the mix. And that is where Meg is really proving to be a big, big problem. Let's see though, as the band's coming in now, no one's banned Meg. It's going to be a first pick here for me. Poker is available as well. The bands on the side of Navi were Stu, B, and Max. And aggressiveness is the way to counter Meg, having spoken to a lot of the pro players in the scene. Many of them finding that Meg's a bit overwhelming to deal with. Some of them are saying the way to handle it was sheer aggression. Nita coming in for Dogs the Lobster is the first pick. And there is now an epic gear for, for Nita as well, um, being able to provide more damage on the side of Brooks. So that's a consideration here as well. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know 100% if it's necessarily a must-pick gear when it comes to Pro Bowl, to be completely honest. Um, but it may very much come in play. And I was thinking it's all this sort of bros that uh, we really like as well. We see them running the Nita so often. So straight up snatching it away from them. And I was kind of expecting them to take it. As you mentioned, Meg, a very strong pick, very early pick you want to bring in as well. And Navi are going to be taking advantage of the fact that Doxer didn't quite go for it to take it for themselves and take the spike with it to just remove one of those heavy damage dealers that can deal quite well with Megan, uh, you know, with enough range as well to do so without endangering himself too much. And I feel like their bands kind of lined up with the fact that they wanted Meg as they took out Stu and B, which uh, deal quite decently with Meg as well. It's kind of funny because literally, as I was saying, going into this draft, the one thing that might be uh, able to help Navi here is exactly the draft that's playing out. If they don't go for, Cro I mean, Crow's good, no doubt about it. Definitely going to be uh, keeping that tick damage over time onto the Meg. But is a Carl as well? 
I'm, I'm fairing with Navi here. They got Poco wide open here. Uh, and it's really difficult to deal with a Meg and a Poco combined in that force, considering how Meg has just throttled her way into the forefront now of the Murta. Um, Dogs the opposite, if they are able to contend with this combo, they haven't even picked the third brawler on the side of Navi yet. Uh, it will be a huge testament to them to be able to gain the set off the back of this draft so far. But I am, I am very much sided here with Navi. I think it's a bit of a no-brainer. Buzz, okay, doubling down on aggression. I don't necessarily mind it. I, I think the poker would have been possibly a little bit better in terms of keeping Meg's survivability there. But uh, you know, we've got to consider the fact that Meg has also though, had a little bit of a nerf to her damage, and, and that is a consideration there. Uh, but nonetheless, we've seen it running riots. Uh, I don't think you can really go wrong with it. But maybe Dogs and Lobster have got something up their sleeve here. Uh, I think mean, every team that we're going to see today in the EMEA region has come well prepared, despite there being a recent update, despite the balance chain is really causing uh, a ruckus in the meta um you know they have got a strategy no doubt about it and i'm looking to see how it bears for them yeah the buzz to me is going to be a direct reaction to the carl right trying to make sure yeah. that if he gets into a super he's not going to be staying in one for long angel boy does get the kill but a quick trade from cyclone i have to be careful on the trades on the side of dogs or lobster because if the meg is up has enough HP and damage to cause a lot of trouble in even 2v2. Let's see. It's Dr. Lobster now. I have a bit more controls. Some nice connections again from Cyclone, but he's low HP himself. Kanan did get fed nearly an entire bear from an early aggression from Angel Boy, but he doesn't have it quite yet. And a play from Angel Boy, and that one goes straight into the net. Navi was a wonderful start there due to an individual play from Angel Boy. Fantastic stuff, really was. Got to remember though that Meg will have passive healing now in the turret form, uh, into the mech form, uh, mech sort form, sorry. Pass over to Angel Boy. Potential here for a gadget if he wants to try to get behind this movement here from Dogs the Lobster, but playing it slow, just taking care of business in the backside there. Kalen's in a great spot here. Thomas as well, the flying hook could go in here. Not gonna happen, pass to the left, and now the ball's safely away, and a bit of a miss there for me from Dogs. They were in a good spot, commanding position, but now low HP is gonna force them back just a little bit, and Cube able, able to work around that wall so stupendously there. Kanan does a bear now, that's gonna help, but a nice stun from Angel Boy, finds the kill, and there's no trade inside just yet. Second will eventually find a connection. Cube is still up on the right-hand side, and. Even though he doesn't deal a lot of damage when he's not in his mech, he can still reset heals just the same. Cyclone has jumped, Tomzi has super as well. There's also two supers for Na'Vi to try to fend off this attack. Cyclone is low, doesn't quite get his jump off. Angel Boy is going to be able to chain supers there as well. Claim a nice two-piece and with low time there might be a chance for Na'Vi to just play it safe, play defensive and lock in this game. Well, Cube's got super now as well, but worth to mention as well that that did also receive a nerf. The field the still swipe is definitely not as strong as it used to be, but now with the position power they've got, 10 seconds remain, and Dr. Lobster are the ones that have got to make a play here. Navi have got all the time in the world, they can put the ball into the corner if they want. Cyclone's got no super to jump on it, and it goes there, not enough time. Navi starts to put something on the board, and that is a huge relief for them, no doubt about it. A strong game from them. I, I think a lot of mistakes, and I would even say blunders, from Dox to Lobster, as we can see exactly right here. The positioning sh should have been better, I think, on Dox to Lobster to try to prevent those sort of actions, but props to Angel Boy. He spots an opening, seizes it, and absolutely delivers here for Navi at a moment where they desperately needed it as well. Let's see if they can provide this sort of uh, effort again here in game two of Brobo, where Dox to Lobster are going to be more cautious. Angel Boy again cycling. Pass through from Cube, but Angel Boy's too weak to be able to contest it. Tomsey full HP. This is the shot though, that could prove costly, but the defense just off the line. Crucial for Dr. Lobster, but can Navi still make something of this? Not gonna happen. Tomsey on the right hand side takes down Cube, and that's gonna allow a little bit more of a breathing space to push the ball forwards. Angel Boy cornering up the ball knows that early on they do need to be careful about how they approach things, especially if he doesn't have super to work with. Nice tanks from Cube onto Kanan, just keeping him low HP. Trying to prevent him from healing up, and he does so successfully as well. And just straight up gonna be feeding 
that bus super on the right hand side tomzi wants to go aggressive it does pay off as he gets a kill but it's quickly traded up by q one one now but i'm not sure if cyclone can really go for a play here and think slow down navi in defense but we saw how strong their defense was in the previous game yeah, it's a chance to reset things out a little bit here. Cube, very low here. Cyclone knows it. Wants to keep the poison tapping in, but can't quite connect the shots. Hayden as well has got Bruce, but now the stun coming through from Angel Boy, who's absolutely been on a tear all time. Cycling in again. The jump just in time there from Cyclone, but that could have been a crucial opening there for Navi to be able to capitalize on. Wasn't to be. Now, Dogs the Lobster have got a real opportunity. No goals on the scoreboard here. So if Dogs the Lobster can secure something in this position, great slowing toxin there from Cyclone, really causing a stir here. But somehow Navi are keeping the ball in their possession and able to work around the situation. And it just seems like no matter what Dogs the Lobster throw at this, they can't bail it to a goal. Overtime might be a problem for Navi though, and Dr. Lobster are aware of this. Playing it slow might be a wise idea. Just wait up for most of the walls to open up as overtime comes in. Could be the difference maker. Angel Boy gonna take control of the ball. It's not really like he can shoot at anyone now, anyways. Might consider cornering it up until he gets a super or just pushing forwards instead. Gets his super now. There might be a chance to make a play. Can he get it? He goes for the shot. Doesn't really line it up nicely there. Cube is low HP. Big super from Tomzy, but he goes down. Cube out of the mech now as well. It's a two on two. It seems like Navi, they're getting some ground. Got a hand to Cyclone there. Did a tremendous job on defense, but surely now Navi are all over this. One oh, he gets the ball. He jumps in. Able to secure it. A second solid defense from Cyclone, but he's got no help. And that is the concern. A super shot here. Not going to take any chances. Goes to Cube. Has the shield. Gets the goal. Beautiful stuff. And Navi are looking much, much better than when we started. It was close at the end there in overtime, but MMA clutching it up. A beautiful pass from Cube as well to secure this one. They needed the set and they absolutely delivered. I feel like that, that, that early goal from Angel Boy in game one was really the spark of hope they needed to just, you know, get that confidence boost. And after that, they started dominating more and more because at the end of the day, in the first game, I did really feel like Dr. Lobster were kind of uh, playing better, just getting more positioning across the map and just more presence on the enemy side of the map, but Navi, they could afford to just play it very defensively. And in game two, they got that clutch final goal as well, and just seizing the few opportunities that Dogs and Lobster gave to them and making the most out of them. A nice strike from Cyclone there towards the end, but it wasn't quite enough. Navi shining here in Brawl Ball, one of their favorite game modes. We all know it, but they did it. They just played really well here. Yes, yeah, Cyclone did great job there on defense. Wasn't quite enough. Uh, got to draw attention as well to Angel Boy there with the 11 takedowns. Phenomenal stuff from him. And that bus pick, I've got to say, really did cut the mustard. Uh, you know, it's more like Navi to go with a heal-based idea. But now that, you know, Meg's able to passively heal over time, you know, it allows Angel Boy to really thrive off the back of that really aggressive idea. And, you know, I've still got to question the use of Gadget, though, a little bit on the side of the mech going in with the toolbox. Uh, we've seen Navi do that a lot, to be fair, but nonetheless, normally against a B or something to be able to tank those shots, but they, they seem to feel like that now with the passive healing to mech that Jolting Bolts isn't nearly as, you know, as viable as an option that bringing toolbox is a little bit of an indirect buff, almost. We're also hearing just uh, to say as well that uh, you know, Zeku will not be subbing in um, on the side of Dr. Lobster, a team which sometimes do make some changes here, but going into gold on Gulch now for knockout, and that, but like, last set for Navi now really is going to bring in something of or, I'm not being funny but Meg is still viable here she's not banned now they're going to be picking in Max as their first choice banning out the B the Bell and the Daryl on the side of Dog Stop a very first early draft there Bonnie very very uh, normal to see that being uh, you know uh, given so much attention to in this particular region but the bands being Gene Tick and RT I like the Bonnie here speed gear you know just stay in the bushes get an extra speed and the map is practically only long-range flights besides some particular angles around the mid. So I do like that pick quite a bit. Eve is an interesting one here for me. 
we've seen it here before. It's not like a big surprise either, since Eve got buffed as well by uh, her new gear. It does make sense to see some playtime from her, but not necessarily my favorite Buster. On the other hand, it's something quite wild to me. I mean, maybe I'm missing something, but it's not really an expected pick for me on Golden Gulch. I would agree. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's something that I would expect to see more from the side of Navi. Uh, not to dig at their drafts in any way, but uh, you know, I do kind of prefer to see other things combined with the max. Um, let's see what they choose to add to the mix, and maybe they've got a strategy up their sleeve here. But so far for me, I do what, prefer what Dogs and Lobster have got. Um, definitely Bonnie as well in knockout, especially can really cause a problem. Leon going to come in for Navi. We have seen a bit of a rise in Leon play, uh, primarily in, in maps like Ring of Fire for Hot Zone and also for Shooting Star and Bounty. I can't remember the last time I've really seen it thrive in Gold on Gulch, but nonetheless, it's definitely one of these broaders that is very underrated, but just a bit map and mode specific. Um, let's see now, as Dogs the Lobster have got the final say here, and I'm already preferring what they're bringing in terms of their comp. I think that uh, as long as Navi have got a plan and a strategy behind their ideas here, because we haven't really seen much of Buster, let's be honest. Probably going to come in for them. It didn't work out in Brawl Ball, but they're going to see whether it will work out in Knockout. I'm, I'm kind of worried for this come from Navi, to be honest. I, the Buster is a big question mark for sure, but even the Leon, as you mentioned, is not really a brawler that's on, on, on the top of the meta at the moment. It's not necessarily awful either. I can definitely see it work, but... I don't know, lots of uncertainty for me uh, regarding this uh, Navi comp, and I really want to see how they approach this. There's only going to be one way to find out, and that's once we battle it out in-game. And we're ready to start here, as we'll be seeing Kanan on the right-hand side, Cyclone on the left, Tom Z playing more around mid, and the camera is uh, starting to follow along now. I'm kind of like made, making mental notes as to where people are not playing Meg when it's not banned because uh, ultimately we've seen so much Meg play in Apex already today in places that you wouldn't normally see, but a great gadget there from Cube oh. gets the takedown on the shores. It's beautiful stuff. Navi coming together so, so well, and it's just Kane and left all alone. Great stuff from them, and you know, this is a very tough comp to make work. There's no, there's no doubt about it, but that opening stance there from Navi to me speaks volumes. It's a crazy start from Navi, absolutely crazy, and I mean, it's the buster out of all of them as well to find that early value. Kanan is going to try to get a super of his own, as everyone has super on the Navi side. Anyways, there's no supers to feed besides Kanan's. <laughs> he's not really given any opportunities, and he's going to go down before he unlocks it. Let's see how round two is going to go, as Navi have... Pretty much all the utility in the world to work with. Immediately a lollipop drop gonna be placed down on the top. MMA is in this, trying to catch someone off guard. Just goes for a couple of tags and falls, falls back. So, slower start now for Navi. Lollipop drop there for MMA. Will keep that shielding and he could choose to go there on the top side, but no longer as the thing gets taken down by Kanan. It's looking better from Dogs and Lobster so far as they start to keep this pinch coming in, but speed coming in there from Angel Boy. Cube going on the aggressive. Tom's in low here. Big jump there from Cyclone. And they do manage to get a takedown to Cube along the way. It's now three versus two, and the tides might be turning here for Dogs the Lobster. A bit of a missed opportunity from Navi, I think. They started the run with three supers, and all they got from using all three of them was just feeding Dogs or Lobster supers instead. And uh, mate, wise decision goes down to the gas to not feed Navis. We did have some gas changes as well in the not going now percentage base, so not the usual 1k. Doesn't change much for Max though, but it is uh, interesting to think about if we get to the later stages. So far, we haven't quite gotten there in a round. We said again, all that utility in the last round, but now it didn't work out too well, but maybe it's second time lucky for them. Like to see something of an aggressive play from MMA and as well. Now, speed coming in from Angel Boy in the pinch is strong. Great shielding there from Cube. A lot of damage coming down. And Dogs the Lobster are bang in trouble. Kanan low, Cyclone low. And there, down goes another three versus two yet again. And now a sigh of relief as Navi can hide behind this wall and just buy their time down just a little bit more. What a turnaround for them as it looked bleak in that last round. But now they should have this one in the bag. But they cannot slip. If they do that, 
And this could be turned around still by Dogs the Lobster. They're just going to buy down the clock, keep the control, and keep their HP high. The max speed Buster Pool is a brutal combination here. Cyclone, he just has nowhere to go. Goes down. Kanan is next in line. It's going to be Na'Vi now taking over the lead by just one game. It's a strong one as well, considering how dominant they looked in this game. It's going to be scary here for Dogster Lobster. Don't want to be a set behind and they need to contest this one. It's looking great for Navi so far. I really do admire the way that they've gone into this and just chosen a really out there kind of idea, but it is working more often than it's not. But we have seen a few cracks there shown in Dogster Lobster capitalized. So let's see whether they can do just that again and get themselves a better start this time round and ease the pressure off a little bit. Angel Boy doing just that pressurizing Cyclone, getting him down to 1,300 HP. Kanan as well out of position here, has to jump away there. Just the nick of time, gotta go. But they're not out of the woods by any means at all. Again, another shielding the Cyclone, just keeping that right-hand side at bay. And that does alleviate a lot of the pressure. Great stuff from him. But again, I love to see how Navi are being so aggressive, but overly aggressively. So there, Angel Boy goes down. QB incredibly low, ticks down to Cyclone. Fantastic start for Dogster Lobster. I love this approach from Dogster Lobster. They pretend like they're gonna fall for the exact same traps that Navi have set up and said they bait two gadgets from cubes the gadget that practically won them the first set now he only has one to go and dark lobster is already up by one round the halfling's not gonna find a whole lot of value tomzy don't caught of gorn but mma doesn't dare to commit and tomzy nearly doesn't but he will get away for the time being Flying Toxin there, not going to get much value there, just on Angel Boy, and Cyclone will need to do a little bit better. A little smile there from Cube as he probably is tensing towards that very idea. Speed though coming in there again from Angel Boy as well, as the uh, smoke trails coming in on the top there from MMA. It's one takedown, two takedown, only one more to go. Now he responds with aggression in a beautiful turnaround. Yeah, Navi as well, don't really need to go on the hunt. They have two players with... Their brawler picks that, you know, will be able to reload their super without committing to any fights. They just passively get their supers back. So they'll have two supers to use getting into this one. And Dark Soul Lobster, they do have one. Let's see if they can put it to good use as Navi is ready for some more aggression. Don't have any buster pulls though. And again, we did see how valuable that gadget was. This is such an important round. Now they claim it, there'll be a set ahead, and that is huge against the team, which are really doing fantastic work at the moment. MMA trickling down 12 HP and does pop. The jumping from Tomzy, aggressively done, but Cube is able to hang on just a little bit longer. Three versus two, and that does give a huge advantage here for Dr. Lobster, as long as they don't get overly aggressive here. Just got to heal up, keep the control. Angel Boy, 240 HP. Surely just waiting for the gas here. Cube got done. Get some value for it. Gets the takedown as well. Oh, my word, it's a 2v2 now, and Navi have got a chance. Tom Z in trouble as well. He might go down to Cube. Cube loves that close range fight. Cyclone gets him low HP. Is it a 1v2? They're both low. Wow. It's going to be Angel Boy. That survives at the end of the trades, and Navi, they will be locking in this set. Unbelievable scenes here as Navi defy the odds. What an important moment for them, and surely the confidence displayed in that very idea going to feed into this next set. They're smiling. I can completely understand why. Dude, it was looking fantastic for Dobster Lobster. It felt like they really figured out the strategy from Navi. And it, sure, they, even in that game, they did concede the, the second round as well. But it felt like, you know, they were kind of okay with it because they come in with some supers for the third one. Cube has no more gadgets and his gadgets have been the main problem. But he, even though he doesn't have any gadgets, he still hits them with an insane play. We talked about the synergy between Max and Buster getting that speed and then uh, going for a pool. He had no speed, no pools when he brought that one back and still managed to turn around the game and set here for Navi. Beautiful stuff from him.
love some of these replays i really do cube did phenomenal there in those final moments as well just didn't you know so often we see teams just kind of settle for the gas uh, in my opinion maybe sometimes at too much of an earlier stage but not to be for navi four kills across the board there Thomas has been a rough round there for dogs the lobster cyclone did pretty well though on the side of things had the most kills out of anyone and the dps was high on the side of dogs the lobster which begs the question what they're gonna have to do in this next set to try to stop Navi in their tracks. I can tell you that Zyaku is subbing in for Kanan. So that is in their idea, something which is gonna give them the advantage. We do see a lot of substitutions on the side of Dr. the Lobster. We kind of questioned it going into knockout and it wasn't to be, but now it is their strategy. But Navi have got a commanding lead in this position now. And again, especially when you consider their performance so far this year in the BSC, it hasn't been great. They need this win and they've got so much going for them now. A risky draft, it really was a bit out there, let's be honest, but it paid off and that's what is remembered in these kind of matches. Every single point here for the, the qualifying for the World Finals is going to be so valuable for Na'Vi, but also potentially taking some away from Dark Soul Officer, which is setting quite comfortably high up there in the leaderboards for now. It might go a long way as well in trying to catch up. They're not there yet. They still need to pick up a set, but they're one ahead. And that's giving them the opportunity to do exactly that and try to hurt what hurts most for Dark Soul. Exactly. Yeah, you know, when they've got that momentum in your favor, you've got to keep it riding in. And, you know, I think that that was the time to experiment more with the draft for Navi. I think for me, having watched them have some pretty out there ideas in the past, I think they're going into parallel plays and it's a great map. Great to see it back, let's be honest. Um, they should maybe consider being a little bit more traditional here as they have got that cushioning in their favor. Um, but nonetheless, it's Navi. More often than not, they won't do that and they'll still sometimes make it work. So I'm all for it. But nonetheless definitely uh, a map and mode which is definitely going to be very different in terms of how this one plays out this is going to be much more about securing those positioning and, and also having something aggressive on those right hand side lanes to really contest your opposition yeah i, I just want to point out again getting into knockout was not necessarily the best start of the match here for navi they go for two just completely off meta picks and still managed to look incredibly dominant. That's four games in a row now. And you talked about momentum and they got a ton of them uh, riding into parallel plays. And it's looking dangerous now. It's looking scary uh, if you're a Dogs and Lobster fan. And we all predicted Dogs to pick this one up. And it seems like so far the Navi Nation may be right this time. Well, it's a chance to reset. Definitely we can see the strain being felt there on the side of Dogs the Lobsters. They've got to knuckle down now and no more chances. And it does feel like the energy is much more with Navi. You can just see almost the adrenaline just go through the veins of MMA there. It's such an important set for them and they know it. We haven't really seen much from them all year long, but this is their chance to make their mark. And as I mentioned earlier, they are a team which really look back upon their performances and smile in the faces of those that fault them and pick holes in their abilities. And this was exactly what we're seeing here today. We saw them go out in the first round to reply to them. That was a rough start for them in February, but this could be their chance to land themselves in the semi-finals here. Parallel plays for Hot Zone coming in. And, you know, I, I, again, I'm just gonna go out there and say Meg, just simply because at the moment it's viable everywhere. But the only place we've not really seen her picked or banned so far has been our, our last map there of Codom Gulch. So um, let's see. Ultimately, I think that it could work quite well on the right hand side, to be honest, especially now with the passive healing over time. Meg is really difficult to shake off the map, and that's kind of crucial here. But nonetheless, you know, we've seen a big drop off of Borders like Gale, who were fantastic on this particular map back in the previous map. And it is going to be that. I rate it. I absolutely rate it. Uh, bands of B, Stu, and Jesse on the side of Navi. Uh, I do like the Jesse fan as well, by the way. It's actually quite a viable option here. Sorry, on the side of Dogs the Lobster. On the other side of things for Navi, there's a band of Carl, as well as the Penny and the B as well. Ash is a big pickup and a loot from Dogs the Lobster. Very nice ideas from them. Spike adding to the mix for Navi. I would kind of like to see maybe an Amber being picked up here i yeah. i don't know I've, it looked so strong in paper i haven't quite seen it played out in competitive yet but i don't see why it wouldn't be very strong and this seems like a pretty good map for it as well tons of grasses and uh, narrow hallways here and there as well that you can really utilize that slowing so maybe the gear yeah 
yeah, I, I really like the idea of it. We'll see if uh, either teams want to commit to that and we'll see it on the side of Navi. <laughs> yeah, dude, having the Amber and the Mag, I mean, sure, you're still facing an Ash, which is an incredibly brawly to face, but you do have quite a bit of utility in your tool belt to make it work. So I could see this being really, really scary for Dr. Lobster. I love it. I absolutely love it. You know, if you stick out of the left-hand side lane, if the Ash goes there, then you're able to get your super so incredibly quickly, burn down the bush, see everything coming. And now again, with that new gear, that mythic gear coming for the mix of sticky oil, then you're gonna have that additional slow to add to everything as well. And that is so troublesome, especially maps with little choke sides as well. It's gonna run a riot. Janet is gonna come in for Dr. Lobster, but I, you know, I still feel like Navi have got a killer comp here. If they can make this work, this could be a done and dusted. I feel like Dr. The Lobster now have really got to rise to the table and show this comp for all it's worth. Can they do it? Absolutely so. Have they got the skills to do it? A hundred percent. But this is a ballsy move from Navi and I love it. I like it too. I mean, we went from two off meta picks to probably the two most meta picks when it comes to uh, the, the most recent balance changes. Let's see how this goes down. Already Angel Boy aggressing the left side, Tomzy aggressive on the right as well, is gonna get into the zone, but takes so much damage, is forced to pop a gadget, and the swipe from Cube will settle that fight. At the end of the day, though, a couple more percentages on the top right are gonna be going the way of Dr. Lobster, but uh, with Cube in the zone, Navi quickly equalizing down. What a start for Navi. I mean, just going super on the aggressive. Some interesting lane ideas, not to what I was expecting, but nonetheless, it's working. And that's what matters. Tom Z now in a real difficulty here. Low HP and a 1v3. Everyone from Dogs to Lobster in their spawn. And Navi just got to secure this zone. They can just go back and do the rest later. I mean, this is phenomenal. Completely not what we expected. And, and what a time to show it. They're in full control of this situation. I mean, Dogs to Lobster are just all over the place at this point. Yeah, this is uh, looking like the beginning of the end for Dark Soul Lobster as Navi have double the percentage time pretty much than what Dark Soul were able to achieve. And it's looking like they'll just lock it in with MMA in the zone to secure it. The team captain to close this one out and get Navi all the way up to match point. A single game away now from moving on to the semifinals, knocking out Dark Soul Lobster. I'm impressed. I've got to say, I am impressed because Navi have had a, a lot of difficulties. You know, in the Kessler Cup, you know, losing to SK Gaming, losing to Foot Esports, big you know, contenders, especially Foot at the moment in the BSC, and, and they are making this look easy. I, I hate to say it, but they actually are, and the draft is where it's really coming into full force. Uh, and that's probably, for me, a weaker of the areas for Navi, but they've got to maintain it. That's the thing. And so far, so good on this right-hand side, keeping Tomzy at bay as Angel Boy on the left-hand side going in on Ziaku, placing down the oil there, and Sticky there as well. Sticky oil is showing its form, so the gear is in motion as well. Cyclone's stuck in between the rock and the hard place there in the mid, and can't really move away or get away from the situation. But I feel at the moment that the momentum is very much with Navi, just taking their time here. And that's never a bad thing. Certainly not. Tomzy, low HP. Slowly, but surely, uh, resetting. It's looking much better than the previous game so far. Shaku building up a lot of control as well. MMA finds Tomzy on the right lane, and that means that now Navi, they're able to start creating some more space, some more pressure onto Noxer Lobster. Shaku has flight as well but he can't really commit is gonna try it and there's no help onto angel boys but he's dodging so wonderfully well he might even end up winning that fight he will do exactly that and now there's a big weakness on the left hand side angel boy looking to abuse it the flames will be connecting as well but no need cube finds a kill onto cyclone and cube has found his way into the zone it's gonna go down but three percent now in favor of navi and seeing how defensive their comp is it's a scary prospect here for Dr. Lobster. 
It really is. Angel Boy, though, stunned out. It's only 3% in it, remember. So if Dr. Lobster can just try to secure a takedown here on Cube and uh, keep MMA low, drop the base there from Zek for that very reason, takes the skies and gets some damage onto Cube as well. But Tomzy couldn't quite close the gap, does so in the end. But if Zek can get that takedown, he'll be able to land himself on his own. And they have done just that. In the meanwhile, Angel Boy is doing the same on the other side of the field. It's neck and neck at the moment between these two teams, but it is still match point for Navi. Couple percentage lead still for Navi. Darkster is their backs against the wall. Need to aggress, but also make sure that their left side holds up and that their defense is strong enough to keep Navi away. Tomzy in big time trouble. Shiaku trying to confirm the kill will do just that on the left hand side. With 25 seconds left, they have yet to get back into that top right zone and they need to do so if they don't want to be eliminated from the April monthly finals. Zack is doing great work, but it's got to get a super really quick to get on that zone. But in the meanwhile, Tomsey is doing as well. He's got no gadgets, no pop the pill there available to him. Great stuff from Cyclone, 66-67. Dogs the Lobster take the lead and survive on a little bit longer, but only just, and they know it. There is a chance, a real chance. So now this could go to a fifth and final set but they cannot drop the ball. They cannot go back into their old ways. And Navi continues to keep up so much of a fight. It's a neck and neck battle now, much different to what we saw in the previous set. Phenomenal comeback here in the nick of time as well for Dunkster and Lobster, but they're far from being out of trouble just yet. Still a match point to fend off and still a really strong Navi comp, but we did see you know, the ideas behind Dogs and Lobster's comp, and I think Shaku played a phenomenal game uh, for, for, for game two here. Uh, just getting so much value on the left-hand side. Cyclone popping off now as well, pushing up in the zone and starting early on to get some percentages locked in for Dogs and Lobster in enemy territory. A trade perhaps there between MMA and Cyclone should be at Tom is able to get it. Cube doesn't quite go for the swipe, and instead he's gonna go down, so loses it all together. Tomzy will fall. But it is gonna be a bit of an early lead for Dunks and Lobster, not in total percentages, but in percentage uh, locked in on the enemy side of the map. Yeah, and that's really crucial to remember there because, I mean, that's 70% uh, you know, effectively once they were able to capture their own and uh, a huge momentum boost for them to get that early start. And like you mentioned, Zeka doing great work because getting Angel Boy out of that left-hand side lane is so crucial from preventing Navi from doing exactly what they've done in the previous outset of this game. So Cube going down now as well, not able to stay in mecha form. Seems to be a bit of a common occurrence this time round as the aggressiveness of Dr. Lobster really shining. Tomsey clearing up the right-hand side and his massive, huge stuff for Dr. Lobster. Once they secure that, they just focus on their own zone and that's in their spawn. Yeah, that is quite important, but at the same time, there's a full HP mech into Dr. Lobster's zone now. Cube just holding on to that position for the time being and considering they already locked in their zone, they might not even need to go back in defense. If they can just hold on to this aggressive position. They could lock it in right here, right now. Cube low HP, 91% now for Navi. Cube will go out of his mech, but is that gonna be enough now? 6% left of flames as well to create some space. They're trying to make it happen, but maybe rushing it as well as they end up going down. Everyone falls on the side of Navi and Shiaku is trying desperately to get back into that aggressive position he locked in earlier. But I don't know if that's going to be enough. Navi are so close to the finish line. Cyclone is burning up as well. Angel Boy should be able to survive, but no, he doesn't. He goes down. Is there enough time here? They're in the zone. A couple percentages behind. I think they may have miscalculated because right now Cube is going to lock it in for Navi. It's 1% that will knock Dockster Lobster out of this bracket. And Navi go to the semifinals. Only 1%! <laughs> I mean, by the narrowest of narrow margins, wasn't it really? But it was a little bit of a miscalculation. I thought Dogs the Lobster had it. Oh, it was going to be a draw. One of those two things. But oh my word, did Navi do well there. Locking their feet firmly into the semi-finals. And I couldn't be happier for them. Absolutely so. I mean... What a crazy match here as well. The first set, look, just how the casting just kind of expected it, right? Na Navi just not quite looking like their former selves and Dogs to Lobster 
playing as well as they have been for the last couple of months but sets two and three were a totally different picture navi coming back incredibly strong with still one of the most ridiculous comps i've seen in a long time the buster the leon coming into the action with the max speed as well to just absolutely dominate in knockout and then finally in parallel plates they close it up with an incredibly close clutch one percent and when i say the sentence about a miscalculation i'm gonna be honest all right i didn't know who mis miscalculated just yet i didn't know if it was q Bobby. i didn't know if it was dogs or lobster but it seems like yeah a little bit of a mistake there it was super hard to call let's be honest and i can understand why they risked it you know it was half a percent at most but it was half a percent enough there for Navi to get to 100 and for Dunks the Lobster to still be at 99, Navi are going to the semi-finals. Yeah, tough moment there. Tom needs to kind of commit to that Meg takedown. Had a great round though, 11 takedowns, but 15 for Angel Boy. That guy was doing mad work. But I mean, we've got to give a huge praise as well to Dunks the Lobster previous to that because I mean, that round was effectively over, really. I mean, Navi had it in the bag, but they were able to defend so successfully well. The Lou was doing great work uh, keeping the Navi team at bay, but in the end, it was just that little bit of a miscommunication or a little bit of a misinterpretation of the situation, really, because uh, I think if Tomsey committed there, it would pre prevent the mech from getting on the zone, and that was what did secure things for Navi, and I think there was another member of Dogs the Lobster capping as well. Nonetheless, the MVP, as you voted for, which is a vent, .brawlstars.com will go to Cube, and I, for one, agree. Absolutely popping off with that buzz pick earlier in Brawl with one of the best goals that we've seen all year long. And again, the aggressiveness of his play style is really showing all it's worth. Yeah, I mean, uh, to my eyes, everyone on Na'Vi deserved an MVP for this one, all having their moments. And uh, that, that, that was a crazy match from them. And it's been a while since I've seen a crazy match from Na'Vi. They've been either, you know, dominant or way too predictable and getting dominated instead. And this was just a really nice turnaround, seeing, you know, some unbelievable clutches from them and really showing the full potential of this team. Great stuff to start the day, and we've got so much more coming now. Our next match coming up very, very swiftly will be Abafantasi and Team Kesso. And again, you know, I'm very excited for this one because I'd love to see uh, a bit of an underdog story here coming in. Let's talk first and foremost about Abafantasi because, you know, they've actually had a better statistics of qualifying for monthly finals than some of the big dogs of this region. Uh, Philip Stell, as well as same as well, really have got a good squad. But they struggle to escape these quarterfinal stages. Will today be that day? That is the question. A great deal of, of, of skill and a great opportunity is ahead of these guys. Uh, like I said, I think that this year is a great year for them. It reminds me very much of how we saw Dogs the Lobster last year. But the question is, can they pull it together today? Because Team Kesso are not going to be an easy opposition, Teddy. Ammo Fantasia stands for I have a fantasy, I have a dream in Romanian, I believe. And awesome. well, I mean, I, I think it works quite well with their situation. They do have a dream and that's making it past the quarterfinals. I believe they haven't quite made it past the quarters in the two last monthly finals where, by the way, they did qualify. So they're high up in the leaderboards right now. A team that not most people knew about, but they've been on the grind for a long time. And uh, they're, they're, they're looking interesting because they've qualified three times in a row. But at the same time, they haven't quite yet managed to make their mark in the monthly finals themselves. Exactly that, you know, it was a tough one though, wasn't it? They went up against Sata in March and that was a sweep and understandably so. But let's speak as well about Team Keso because this team is on the rise. Boss, Javi and Blacksy as well. You may not have realized that Blacksy has now come onto this roster. Early this month, Team Keso waved goodbye to Ali SSJ and bringing back Blacksy into the mix. And I loved watching Blacksy play for, for Team Keso last year. He was really, really great with the aggressive brawlers. I remember his Leon in Ring of Fire was unmatched. So it's fantastic to see him bringing some new lease of life to this squad. I mean, Team Kesso had a great performance, didn't they, in the Kesso playoffs. A really, really solid one. Made it all the way to the grand finals by keeping themselves within the upper bracket. Did get the uh, bracket reset by SK Gaming in that grand finals, and they eventually would go on to take the win. But it did go to match point, match point in that process. So Team Kesso gave them a really good run for their money. Nonetheless, I do feel like they are the favorites coming into this one, and for good reason. They've got a lot a wealth of experience behind themselves uh, against a team like Emma Fantasy. But nonetheless, this is the BSC. As we know full well, anything can happen. 
Yeah, I'm exactly with you here, you know, on, on paper, if you're just looking at the results of 2023 in the BSC, I'm a Fantasia, they have more points, they have more success because they've qualified more. Consistency. But, uh, exactly, but at the same time, they do have a 0% win rate in Monday Finals, which is not a good win rate, and Team Queso, I mean, it's not looking much better on their side, let's be honest here, but they do have some more long-term experience, you know, being in the scene for the longest time at always uh, either the highest or a very high level. And therefore, I'm completely with you. I, I think they are the favorites coming into this one. But I could definitely see Amo Fantasia just, you know, popping off and, and showing up, uh, you know, finally showing up at the monthly finals with their highest level of play because they've been able to do damage to the biggest teams in the qualifiers month after month beating teams that no one would expect them to to beat so this is the time to do it in a monthly final really well as we said team kester didn't qualify last month this time round with some team changes they have done so and 88 percent of you voting at events at brawlstars.com feel like those changes are cutting the mark flaring phoenix will be the map up first for knockout and the draft coming in Megas banned <laughs> so we know that we're not going to be seeing that and I think that could make a big difference. I think that many teams have got to consider that with a lot of, uh, you know, certainty really here. RT as well as the Tick on the side of Ammon Fantasy. Team Kesso, the Grom. Guts coming in though, for Ammon Fantasy. And the bands aside the Grom were the Max and the Janet in that early draft there of the Gene, which can be fantastic in terms of value on this particular map. Having the Vision gear really can go a long, long way holding that mid. But Gus as well, they're able to really have that cookie popper gadget to be able to then assert some authority and damage on your oppositions, looking to pair it with the Amber. And that is one that I actually prefer over the Gus, as we already saw today, Amber, the new Mythic gear, can really cause a stir and getting rid of those bushes, I think it's actually better than having to rely and depend upon a vision gear. I, I mean, I, I love it. I love the Amber because you can burn out the bushes and even in the later stages, you, you could just put your super on any lane and then move away, you know, and then your teammate has a lane against someone that's permanently slowed there whenever they they move up and try to aggress with a new mythical gear. I, I think it can be very strong. We'll see what sort of approaches they have in mind. Obviously, bringing down the mid bushes is a top priority as well. Uh, so I'm, I'm not going to be expecting them not to do just that. See the great come in. Great is an interesting place because we don't see him all that much but we occasionally in knockout see him just you know go for some very aggressive tp plays or play off the heel as well from his start power that uh, comes from from using his tp so i can see the value it is quite hard to land your shot so you have to be absolutely ready with that sort of roll and mechanically cracked to get those connections we'll see the Bonnie as the final pick here from Team Queso. Bonnie always good, especially in the bushes as well. We'll see how long we'll have the bushes, but the jump in can really help get either some assassinations or close out the games at the end of the rounds. And finally, the Daryl is going to be the final pick from Ammo Fantasia and from this entire draft as uh, it will be locked in and a way to really bring in another level of aggression here for Ammo Fantasia, which had a very passive comp until then. I do like what Team Kessler are bringing to the table. If Ever Fantasia can make this work, though, some interesting ideas would be my, my kind of go-to idea with the Daryl, but it can, uh, you know, do wondrous work if you can kind of creep your way forwards in the map and, you know, have that little bit of the lake to really increase that role as well, potentially here. But Bonnie here is definitely going to be a strong attribute there on the side of Team Care. So let's see who gets that early start and who can get that early three versus two. So far. TQ definitely more aggressive here. Sam and Fantasia are playing it passive. Philip trying to get his uh, super from sending next to the puddle that is gadget produced, but a beautiful gadget and snack from Javi. Locking in an early advantage here for Team Queso as they get the opening kill. Still gonna get pulled as well, opening up the map furthermore. See if he decides to try to go for hero play. Funnel Cat is already pumped by Javi, by the way. All three in the first round. Might be a chance here for Cell to try to do something, but it is going to be incredibly challenging. He's actually going to go for the roll. As his teammate goes down, it's not going to be ideal. And Team Queso was a very convincing first round, locking in three supers as well that will be carried over to round two. 
There was some hope, but I wasn't too convinced that, that Daryl was going to be able to one through here. But nonetheless, you know, we can dream, as can Emma Fantasia, as you already mentioned. So let's see. But the magic hand is available to here to boss, and magic puffs as well, just being handed over every now and again. Getting themselves into a good spot on this right hand side here for Team Care. So if Boss chooses to initiate it, it's going to be supported. That's the thing. And a big roll in from Stell. Not going to avail too much though. Two versus two now though. Having getting some good shots, but misses that one on the same. And Black is able to secure it though. Teamwork makes the dream work. And Team Care, so take the first game. Beautifully done by Black here as well. Getting the super onto the gust that moves into the wrong direction as well but getting that kill pretty much up on landing and again the follow-up as well considering how low hp he was and he was facing a daryl that was shielded up by the guts it was a potential tricky situation coming up but at the end of the day his team queso was a very dominant first game locked in and ammo fantasia are gonna need to adjust are gonna need to adapt getting into game two same this is gonna get pulled again and he goes down once again early on this is a huge problem as philip Ooh is next in line <laughs> ends up being in a one-on-one -on -one, and actually <laughs> the fire what? from the amber is gonna prevail take down the gene and suddenly ammo fantasia kind of get a, a round out of nowhere i think that's a triple kill with the feel of there just going to town on everyone it was incredible they just all had the tick over time and then just popped one by one uh, are we serious are you kidding can we can we get the twitch chat to check that oh my word i i don't think i've ever even seen it if it was the case but let's see how team kester respond surely that must have shaken them a little bit but it is other fantasies that are a little bit more on the back lines here as they got to get out of the spot, or at least set their authority more. Blacks has got jump as well as boss. Everyone on Team Kessler has got super here, so a lot of utility on their side. But can they hold their own? Oh, onto Stell, and he goes down. Blacks, he getting a kill of his own, and a nice and cheeky TP away. Philip can't really do much besides trying to maybe get a bit of a super, but he can get his passively anyways, and his puddle is not... Uh, gonna be there anymore so he, he, he is able to still find some value here and there no passive as he doesn't have any gadgets so we'll have to try to get some tanks either way getting into round three still those of his super but boss is a pull as well if anyone over aggresses it's gonna be the end of them I'm still reeling off the back of that play from Philip. <laughs> I mean, that was just crazy. I'm trying to keep it together, Teddy. Help me out here. Uh, Boss has got this magic hand. The ball here is available here. So he's going to land it for sure. As Harry just keeps trying to keep Philip there on the right-hand side low. And I think that's wise considering what we know he can do. But the miswalking cane could prove costly here. This thing in position, though, and that's quite crucial. The gut shield is available. And if Stell wants to roll in and gets that applied to him, that could well be the play here to make. That's what they're going to do. But the roll's a little bit late here. Blacks can just jump away as well, which he does. And the pull was perfect. Team Kess have really stood their ground in that position there because I felt like, for me, Emma Fantasia had a great opportunity. Now it's a two versus one. Kiss should have this one in the bag. And they do as they take the first set. A strong first set on there. And it feels like Emma Fantasia, they have their chances here and there but we're just not quite able to lock it in. They they, they started uh, playing in this and really at the middle of round two, uh, sorry, game two, which is too late to get started. You make some mistakes here and there, and it's already done and dusted. A strong first set here from Team K. So, and I think Ammo Fantasia, if they adjust quicker or even just start a set outright, you know, strong was, was a good comp and some good ideas. I think they can stand a chance, but so far, Team Queso definitely a much more dominant team. There is only one play that I'm looking out for here. <laughs> Keep your eyes on Philip there. Unreal stuff. And I'm curious to see whether it was, in fact, I'm pretty sure it was a complete triple takedown here uh, as we get towards it here. Still went in. Blacksy there with the defense as well. Great work from him. But the, the, the amount of value there onto Blacksy. And then the follow up here onto Javi. It was the next game, though. <sighs> this play was huge. It really was. I think it was here. Yeah, big burns there. Super as well. Gets the takedown. No, it wasn't that game. <laughs> it was the game to follow, surely. Come on. Where is it? Highlights real. Give it to me. Give it to me. I think it's this one. It was this. I think it was this moment here. Yeah. Just got the lineup beautifully there. Big bang onto Black Sea. Follows off the boss. Super out there. And look, one, two. Boss the third to topple. Beautiful from him. Amazing job. In fact, the first time I've ever seen it happen.
That, that, that was a crazy one. All this teammate had to do is survive, you know, just live. And that's enough. Very well done on his end, but it wasn't quite enough here for Ammo Fantasian set one. And stats wise, it's fairly close actually when it comes to damage, just still uh, slacking quite a bit more considerably than the rest of the pack. Kills wise, obviously, it was Team Keso much, much more present on the scoreboard. We're moving on to Bounty, another slower game mode, but it is a map where you can bring in some aggressive ideas at times as well. But you gotta draft it right, and off the bat, TQ unbothered by the RT nerf as it's gonna be their first pick. Yeah, triple throw a band out there by Amma Fantasy, and I think that that's not a bad idea, to be completely honest. But uh, yeah, the RT did get a nerf. I think to a lot of the pros in the scene kind of questioning as to why it was really uh, a nerf that was aimed towards the super side of RT, which he doesn't really get too much of an opportunity to utilize, but it was a base HP damage as well. Uh, sorry, base HP nerf. Uh, down from 4,100 to 3,900. But the time between attacks and split form was uh, increased uh, double, actually. So you can have less shots in that form. But the mech on the side of Amphantase has got to be a concern here. The team Kesso, no doubt about it, regardless of having the RT, which I think is still very, very strong. Carl adding to the mix uh, with the flying hook, definitely going to be going to be in the position to be able to secure that blue star early on. Colette being added to the mix, and I do quite like this cop start from Kesso. I think the Colette's a bit of an odd pick for me, just a little bit here. But let's see what Ava Fantasy adds to the mix. I think the cop is better on the side of Ava Fantasy, but the question is, have they got the ability to match the chemistry that we're seeing on the side of Team Kesso? I like the ideas on the side of Team Queso, obviously, I mean, Gene and Mech are in a good place overall, Mech just in general, really strong, Gene particularly to Bounty, a good way to try to turn things around, get some chip damage as well, some nice information gathering in the bushes too, Neve as their final pick, it's gonna be an interesting one, getting uh, to play that into a Carl, which can really easily dispose of pretty much all of the hatchlings, so we'll have to try to see if uh, Ammo Fantasy can keep the evil way from that. Besides that, I mean, comp-wise, I personally would maybe even prefer the ideas from Ammo Fantasy a little bit more, but I feel like Team Queso has some good counters going for them, and I'm really curious to see how the RT is actually going to be playing out post-nerf. I agree. I really like the drafts that we're seeing from Ammo Fantasy, and, uh, you know, they've got some good abilities to make things work. It's just that Team Queso have got that longevity of a squad that they just so much synergy and connect connection with each other but and a very swift take down there from black on to philip and that's going to place of a fantasy in the back spawn early on still needs to get mecha form riding in swiftly as well there's another takedown and we've got to remember as well with the recent change to bounty the games will stop at 20 stars so ultimately if kessa keep this up we might be seeing that play out for the first time here that is Absolutely true. Three supers available here for a team queso. Potentially three kills if played correctly, and that would get us one step closer to uh, getting to those 20 stars. But they're playing it safe and cautiously as they should. It is a monthly final after all. Vaxi, never mind, not playing all that safe, not all that cautious. Ends up going down. Harvey also in a dangerous position, but it's still going to result in a uh, net positive here for team queso. 10 stars on their side, only the three for Ammo Fantasia, seven star gap that is scary for Ammo Fantasia for the least. The pool connects, boss still gets a super follow up super as well. Takes one with him, getting Team Kaiser to 12, but lowering the gap by one star. Well, there are more hatchlings on the side of Philip there, so if he does get another super, nice, gotta go there as well to get out of the way of Black Sea as he wants to ensure a takedown. Six stars is doable for sure. If they get Javi taken down and anyone else, then they will be able to take the lead here. Same gets the ball. Black Sin, that's one problem solved. But it's going to be a takedown of Javi. And here's the problem here. He's got Super as well to hand. 10 seconds on the clock. Big flying hook there from Black Sin. Knocks back though by Same. And I just don't see a way that Emma Fantasy can close the gap on the very person they need to get. Especially not there from Boss. Able to secure the takedown of Stell. And Team Kesso take another W. I, I love the awareness there from Team Queso. They knew that Javi was the only one that couldn't afford to go down. They could sacrifice both other players because even though it would have been a tie in stars, the blue star that Javi was carrying 
would have made a difference. Beautifully done there by Team Queso. Oh, Strong no. statement and yeah, this is this is gonna this is gonna be tough for Ammo Fantasia. Team Queso again was a free blue star. <laughs> Raising the uh, the white flag there, giving him. I don't think that's what we're going to see play out nonetheless, but definitely feeling the front and the heat of what Team Kessler brought to the mix today so far. So again, that same story we saw in the previous game, isn't it? Five-star lead and that blue star already with Team Kesso. Blacksy locking himself in this left-hand side, keeping Stell low, as you've got to do against the mech now, the rework that's in play, and that was a swift takedown from Javi on the right-hand side. The first sign of life comes from Phil from the right, and it's just two stars, but up now six in the blue. This is looking a lot better. Yeah, oh. Blacksy gets spooled. Massive kill for Ammo Fantasia back into this game. But is that going to be enough to get them back into this match? It's uh, still going to be a whole other challenge there. As we do have two supers available for Team Kazo to try to get some value and some high impact. Still low HP on the mech, but should be able to just heal up. And the magic puffs definitely helping out there as well. Well, time is on the side of Team Kazo, as is the positioning here. They're just keeping back ever Fantasy in this spawn area, but a oh, big pull. Harry hasn't got time to get the super off either. Blacks with a fumble on the right-hand side as well. Everyone going in for Team Castle, but will they come out? They do! Oh my word, what a steal! I didn't think they were going to be able to do it, but they did just that. Ever Fantasy not done though, trying to keep this gap closed. There's time, but a huge moment there for Team Castle. Absolutely crazy plays I. There, the, the, the team play was phenomenal, but Blacks is the one now carrying all the stars that they need. Boss is going to get a great super off as well, creating a big distraction. They need to take care of him, but his stars don't matter at this point. They still need a kill on someone. The pool is going to be missed. He was so far out of range anyways. And that's going to be two sets up now for Team Queso. And again, we see that adaptation coming in from Ammo Fantasia, the improvement, but just a little too late and a little bit... Uh, too too far away from being enough and team k so now taking a commanding lead with ammo fantasia still trailing far behind totally delay tactics by the way at the end of that game from boss they're just able to be a thorn in the side yeah. of ammo fantasia for such a long time and it made a huge difference by the time they took care of it they were not able to contest where the stars really lied and uh, great work from them uh, i gotta give a lot of praise to ever fantasia because they're having moments they're having moments of glimmering you know potential it's just not availing towards something which is able to contest with a team like team Kessler at the moment it's fair to say but can they bring something out of the back pocket something to really rivalry the uh the matches that we're seeing here because so far it just feels like team Kessler are kind of running away with it this play was insane as well coming up in a moment where team Kessler just went on an absolute tear in the spawn side i think it was coming up now and yeah i actually fumbled there so i thought maybe it's not gonna work protective pirouette coming in there as well boss as well with the mass attacks having that additional shielding to ensure survivability what a calculated maneuver that really turned the tides in that game yeah, that was beautiful. Just combining the Colette and the Carl Supers. Even though the Carl did miss his gadget, we did notice it. But uh, he was still <laughs> able to pull through and make it happen. And it was just phenomenal stuff from, from him and the rest of the squad, really. It, it was a closer set. But so far, Ammo Fantasia, I still feel like, yeah, they have yet to show us. They have what it takes to, to turn things around. And they need a, an impeccable run if they want to have a chance at a comeback. I don't personally see it happening, but I love being proven wrong. And I'm a Fantasia, they're a team that have proven a lot of people wrong so far just by making it three times in a row for the monthly finals. Very few teams have so far in 2023 managed that feat. Let's see if Safe Zone is going to be more their jam as we move on to highs for set number three. Yeah, nothing excites me more than an underdog story, but is the dream just a bit too big at the moment for Ammo Fantasy? Is the question going into safe zone for Heist? It does feel like to me this is a very much a Team Kessler kind of map. They like those long range, but also aggressive ideas to add to the mix. And you know, that's where you can really pack a punch onto the safe here. Mech's not banned. I'm gonna say every time, it's just the thing to do today, isn't it? Just to point out at the beginning of every single game, whether it's banned or not, because it does make uh, a potential factor here. Artie coming in for Team Kessler. I really like that pick. 
to the bands there being Penny, Max, and E from their side. The Penny's a huge band for them. B, Bonnie, as well as Otis, Fab and Fantasy here. Maybe considering a tankier idea for their comp. Uh, it's kind of a bit of a strange brawler to, to, to ban is Otis here on safe. So nonetheless, I do love the Brock. Brock and RT is a pairing here. Uh, it's fantastic. Despite the indestructible walls coming into the mix and sort of deflating a little bit of what Brock's able to bring to the table, nonetheless, it's still a really solid pair of hands. Let's see, though, what other Fantasia are going to be adding to this collect, which is already a very good starting hand. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe an 8 bit or something along those lines. Maybe. Yeah, well, they banned B. I was going to say B would have been. Quite yeah, fantastic, B But yeah, it's. Uh... Out of the picture, and they'll go Carl instead, which I I used to love so much on Safe Zone, but I feel like it's been kind of un, uh, undershadowed, overshadowed rather, by uh, a lot, lot of other viable picks, and it's not as easy to get into uh, that that top right position you want to be landing in. Bell is going to be their final pick, and uh, to me it lacks flavor just a little bit, as I, I just like the the, the the personality of Team Castle's comp quite a bit more quite a bit more of a statement i mean just as i say that we end up having edgar that did get buffed a little bit hp wise i believe that was his only buff but he might have some decent matchups here and i don't even know if he cares all that much he might just want to jump on safe and go deal some damage respawn and do that again yeah, I don't feel like the buff warrants a pick here. I mean, I'm looking on the other side of the field. The brawls that he's going up against don't really cater towards it. I mean, the best counter is really towards a Rico, and uh, I just don't know where Team Kessel are going with this idea. I think he could be well be right, just trying to keep that aggressive cycle onto the safe to ensure the uh, the takedowns. But it is it is a questionable one. I would much prefer to have seen something like an 8-bit or something with more range coming from mix. I don't necessarily mind the bell, actually, on the side of Fantasy here. I was expecting maybe a Daryl, just considering that they banned both the B and the Oats, which just seems to be uh, a bit of a, a showing of ideas here. Great value there from Saint, but he didn't go for the pickup there, and it's going to prove costly. The pickups does not come back enough to get the takedown, and it does seem like, for the most part, other Fantasia were able to defend there. Uh, nice mark onto Javi as well, so should he heal up, he will go down pretty swiftly as well, but uh, definitely not the best start here for Kesso. Yeah, certainly not. Sammy doesn't have his super, but Black Sea shuts down any aggressive ideas there. Well done by him. Philip not quite able to confirm that kill, but the bell shot will be bouncing around and keeping everyone nice and low as Harvey is able to match the damage pretty much onto that blue safe. Only 1% ahead now for Ammo Fantasia, but they still have some chances to deal more damage as Sammy. Find some more shot, find some more value. Nearly finds another pickup as well. And get some nice damage onto Blank C2. Still though, it's gonna be predictable with that super and Javi is ready for his repositioning as he catches him on landing. A big lead damage wise, but one that Javi is gonna try to close down just a little bit. Beautiful pickup from Javi onto Sammy as well. I'm a Fantasia not quite as much ahead anymore, but a Colette super here will Further enhance their lead, you know, all the way down to 29% on that red safe. Yeah, I've got to say, this is the most convincing that we've seen so far for Amafantasia as they try to secure this last final percentage on the safe. Just 29% now, 3% there, less. As Sam just gets a nice pickup onto the safe as Stel coming into the mid now. Just trying to earn that super so we can go onto the safe coming back there. With the shield as well, Blacksy goes down yet again. He's having a rough game, that's for sure. Just the 13% now, and Amafantasia will start to bring back a game, and that's huge. They haven't had a single one so far. Uh, this is gonna be the one. This is gonna be the first game that Amafantasia pick up, and uh, to me, really, the difference between this game and the other ones is that this this one had an Edgar in it, and it didn't do I much. I don't get it. I don't get it. Sorry, I gotta jump in. I'm angry about the Edgar Teddy. <laughs> Yeah. I don't get it. I, I, can, I, can I can understand there's an argument to be had that it counters some ideas, but I just don't see it happening. Uh, I mean, it, it's very much apparent that Team Kessler are struggling way more than we've seen them struggle with so far. I don't know why they've done it. I really don't think this is providing much value, but maybe there'll be something in this next game to change my mind over things. You know, it just seems like every time Black tries to make a play, it's countered. And I think rightly so. It's, it would happen that Emma Fantasia is going to be very much aware to it and, and just work on that synergy soon to ensure the takedowns <laughs> again second time in a row as i'm talking <laughs> yeah I, I i don't know maybe he thinks he's the tempo or something but it's not paying off so far <laughs> i'm a fantasia was 
a little bit uh, of damage uh, behind, actually, this time around. But they do have full on mid control, so surely they should be able to start catching up. A jump in from Black Sea is going to be punished as he gets slowed by the nest egg. And now Boss is pushing forwards, hunting for still, but he will be taken out. Philip gets a nice pickup as well. The mark is going to be missed, but Black Sea is nice and low, anyways. And the Saint starting to take more and more damage. Emma Fantasia now is a 5% lead. Good amount of area control so far. Boss low though. Good pickup swings from Sam and he will secure it onto Boss as well. Going in as well, gets the takedown. Beautiful stuff. It's much, much better, isn't it? And a singular set can change things so massively so here. Big mark there onto Black Sea as well. Again, I'm looking forward to the stats at the end of this game. <laughs> Boss in a world of hurt. Continuation cycling there from Anfantasy, who are just all over this game. It, it should be GG's well played. I mean, Javi's just hiding in a corner at this point, and even though they do manage to get a couple kills here and there, still gets another super onto the safe. Nearly could have chained this one as well. And a chance here for Team Kids to get some further damage. Sammy ooh, gets deleted by Boss. And finally, he's gonna be popping a super there. Quick trade from Stell though, and Black Sea's just gonna be a spectator there as Stell closes out the game and set in favor of Ammo Fantasia. But I do like, you know, seeing Philip here from Ammo Fantasia being composed, you know? They, they know they got a little bit of a freebie here. Not the best of drafts on the end of Team K. So Team K do seem like they had some faith in the draft because they seem surprised that they're losing this one. <laughs> but I, I do like the approach, you know, from Ammo Fantasia of not just being overjoyed and thinking, oh, we got this. No, you want to set, relax and see, you know, if you can get it to a, 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 a fifth and final set. Don't get overexcited because if Team K's are shut down at overexcitement and man managed to turn down, uh, turn over, sorry, the momentum again, uh, that could be devastating. So I appreciate that. And to be honest, they can also cheer for the victory a little bit because it's nice for them to get that set on the board and it gets them one step closer from catching up. Yeah, you gotta you gotta celebrate those wins, of as, as course, and try to keep the momentum on your favor, on your side going to the next one. But I feel like Team Kessu, when they approach the next draft, they're gonna play it a lot safer. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, <laughs> the, the Edgar wasn't it. it. It just wasn't it. It was so apparently obvious that it just wasn't the play there. Uh, despite Black Sea being incredible, by the way, with really aggressive in your face brawls, it's definitely the sort of brawler that if anyone's gonna play and make work, it's him actually. Uh, but it just wasn't the case there at all. But having said that, I mean, he gets the same amount of takedowns as Javi did. So, I mean, there's something to be said there. But look on the other side of the field. Philip there with 14 takedowns, almost 300 DPS as well. Uh, and that is a victory story to sing there from Ammo Fantasy. Uh, going to this next set, if they can bring some of that momentum forwards. I mean, Boss as well had a great round, by the way, on the side of Kesso. But nonetheless, it's these moments that can start to really shift things into their favor. Um, it's going to be a tough ride, no doubt about it. And Team Kesso will not go easy on them. But regardless, you know, you've got to take the praise, you've got to take the victory stories and try to bring it forwards and take it all the way to a fifth and final set. I really like your, your argument with the risk here coming into the next draft. Because typically, uh, you know, common idea is that when you are the favorite, you don't really take any risks because you don't need to. If you have an, a fairly yeah. even draft, you should be winning. Whereas if you're the underdog, you want to be taking risks because then you can try to equalize the playing field by, you know, getting the upper hand in the drafting phase. So it's a very odd approach here for Team Kaiser to go for that last pick, Edgar. Now, I'm not too worried about them just yet. They do have two sets here to try to correct their mistakes and just close it out, lock in their spot in the semifinals. But Emma Fantasia, they're giving, giving a, a bit of an extra chance here to try to do some damage and who knows, maybe pull off the impossible. Black Sea looks a little bit disheartened there. I, mean, I don't think he should, to be honest, because he's so, so good. It just wasn't the place to pick that particular brawler, considering the combat they were up against, in my opinion. But nonetheless, this next draft will be a clean sheet and a start to start over fresh here. I'm a Fantasia as well. We've got to point out in those previous uh, sets, which went the way of Kesso, they, they were pretty convincing, let's be honest, or very convincing, I should say, in favor of Team Kesso. So there's definitely a bit of a skill if, in my opinion, that favors them here. But it's a question of these particular moments that can really bring a team like Emma Fantasia to the forefront. How do they handle pressure? 
how to come back when under, you know, the might of two sets. Uh, and that's the way to respond. The question is, can they continue that into this fourth set and take it all the way? Uh, if they can, I think that that will be a huge turning point. You know, Team Kesso have been a team that in the past have been known to be reverse swept. It's you know, something that we saw actually on the world final stage. But this is a different environment for sure. Um, and I feel like a lot of these recent changes have been making them a, a much better team, having much more success. But, you know, if they are starting to show some cracks and taking a few more risks, then that's something you've got to take into consideration. I feel like they've got to approach this draft very cautiously and just be a bit more traditional. I think that if they were going to experiment with the draft, then that previous set was the best time to do so, let's be honest. You're two sets ahead, you've got that cushioning, but now they've got to get down to business and really land it when it comes to Brawl Ball and Pinhole Punt. I, I, I think you may absolutely valid points here and uh, again i think an even draft is always going to be in the advantage of, of the favorites and the favorites are clearly team queso so i would you know just double down on what you said and, and agree they i think they should just go for a very safe draft i'm expecting them to but then again i didn't expect them to go for edgar in uh, set number three so maybe <laughs> no they still did. have some surprises <laughs> for that. that is very true no one did no one did <laughs> Bands are lined up, Colby and Crow for Amo Fantasia, Team Case opening out the Mag, Max and uh, Ash for their side. As we'll see the Janet first pick, which I don't mind. I don't think it's the fanciest first pick. I mean, we've seen it so much and for so long now as a, a very common first pick uh, that I'm not really bothered by it. I, I, I like it fine, but it doesn't really bring in a whole lot of fluffy. Yeah, it's a very common pick, isn't it, in EMEA, as it is across a majority of the regions, but nonetheless, I feel like EMEA play it about the same as South America, actually. I do like the bands, though, on the side of Keso, and that does come, come full circle with what I was saying previously about, you know, just taking no chances. You know, banning out the Meg, banning out the Max, RT coming in as well, and the Ash getting rid of that. I think that there's some really good starting signs there for me. Carl, B, and the Crow band, not bad bands at all by Emma Fantasy, but I feel like Team Keso have just Taking it a bit more, uh, a bit more of a cautious approach, considering that they lost the, the coin toss here. And RT is always a great brother to have here on uh, on Brawl Ball. Penny as well coming in, able to just like, it's really secure yourselves that control that you need to have when it comes to scoring goals. I like the Penny. We might be seeing uh, our new gear at play as well. Get an extra damage yeah. on the mortar which could be quite valuable. I, I, again, I don't know if it's necessarily a must either, you know, because you have other gears that are just really important too. Speed gear, I think is, is pretty much a must on this map as well. Potentially, you might just want to be rocking damage gear uh, instead as well. So I'm not entirely sure what the approach is going to be, but I would kind of expect the, the new gear to come and play on this map. We'll see this two locked in as well now for a MO Fantasia. And I like it for sure. I mean, just a lot of value all around, a lot of utility for the team and an incredible uh, uh, fighter when it comes to one-on-ones and being able to just get an opening here and there. So I don't mind this approach whatsoever. They're going to have a lot of utility combining uh, the gadgets of both uh, their picks so far. I feel like that can give them a nice early advantage if they want to fight for that mid, as we'll see Sam as their final pick, which is going to be much more interesting here. Uh, I, I don't know what to think about it, because against an RT, if RT is super, that might be a quick way to just die if you get over aggressive. But at the same time, it could do fine against Penny, and we'll see what the final pick is for Team K. They do have some opportunity here to try to find something that deals with oh. it nicely, and Surge is a phenomenal way of doing just that. Yeah, what a great counter idea. I mean, you know, Sam's job is primarily to kind of just go in and cause a, a problem, right? I mean, Penny's got a great deal of knockback potential. Surge, you know, that is his game. Uh, I do feel like Sam is going to really struggle, or whoever is playing that Sam is really going to struggle. RT of Super, um, they've really responded well. It made sense in terms of the draft because Ash is banned, and therefore you know you're not going to kind of have that brawler show itself and, uh, and lose that kind of 1v1. And Sam does tend to struggle a little bit against that in a 1v1, but uh, nonetheless, surprised not to see even like a Primo. That's quite a common brawler to have here in this region, and uh, we've seen you know, people like Samantha doing uh, insane plays, and also Reply Totem, uh, greatly so, uh, on that particular brawler. But I want to see how Stealth performs here. We are going to see as well, by the way, the Penny Epic Gear coming into play. It's called Pet Damage. It will do, uh, will provide 20% more damage on the turret side, so that is definitely worth considering here. 
Um, but let's see how things play out. So far, so good for both sides, earning their utility and just uh, a couple of takedowns, but nothing too crazy as both sides battle the mid. Mortar gonna be causing some problems. Taking Sammy into the skies. Ball is sent to the right hand side by Philip. Gets his super back very swiftly as well. Harvey huh? goes down, and now a three on one is Blanks. He's alone to defend. Gonna give it his best shot, but not quite gonna cut it here for Team K. So it's Emma Fantasia locking an early goal. A minute and a half left on the clock here for Team K to try to equalize. Great start for Ava Fantasia. Surprised to see it because I feel like they don't really have comp for it. But nonetheless, Flax is going in, but very, very aggressive. Gets taken down for his troubles. Herb has got super here. We're we'll going to try to get Javi and does find the angle for it too. Will he be able to score from this position? Oh, a bit of a rough shot there. Don't know where that was going, but maybe even off the field. Let's see that they can bring things back to some order. A push through here. Still goes in. Team Kessler left the door wide open. And Ava Fantasia did not hesitate to walk through. What a miss. From Kesso! Unbelievable from Ammo Fantasia because if you look at the draft, they, they really really shouldn't it. they shouldn't be standing yeah. a chance. I thought it was an I, I honestly thought looking at the draft, I thought that it was a huge blunder to go for the Sam this early into the draft. I mean it was their last pick, but considering there was a pick still open, and that every brawl on the side of Team Kezo should be able to, you know, deal with it decently. They have some utility to deal with it. Plaxi has been miserable this game, getting shut down left and right and just not there to take care of Cell. And that's going to be a free goal even earlier than the previous one for Team... Uh, sorry, for Ammo Fantasia. They're, they're up 1-0 again and they're practically a goal away from taking us to set five. I put my ear to the ground, Teddy. I'm pretty sure I can hear the chat saying reverse sweep. But let's see whether Team Kessler can muster something back up here because they, they do seem to be very flustered and all over the place. Philip is having a fantastic game, by the way, dancing around the situation. But this is a great chance, a great opportunity, and it's fumbled. Terrible stuff. Team Kessler have got to get this under control. They should not be losing this. Tough spot for Team K, so Ball is going to be cornered up on the right side. Boss is going for it, still trying to interrupt it, but a pass is going to connect to Blacksy, and he scores it up for Team K, so still fighting here for set number four as Blacksy gets an early pickup, and he was struggling so far in this set. But it seems to be shining more now. A nice ball from Stell, but is it enough? Philip is low HP, so is Blacksy. Blacksy falls, and I'm a Fantasia, they'll get some control back. What an incredible gadget, can I just say, from there, from Stell. That saved the moment. That was a short goal there for Kesso. Beautiful stuff from the magnetic, ma magnetic field there coming into play. But can they recover from the situations? It does feel like Team Kesso is starting to make the cogs work again. Big heals as well from the hearty recovery is still really being scrutinized here. Black Sea's getting his stacks and his mobility up as well. And the ball gets cleared. Great stuff from Emma Fantasy. Far from out of the woods, but I'm surprised they were able to bring that away to delay things even more so. Stella's going to have a tough spot here. Javi's got super as well. Everyone there, knocked back to hand. Kesso finally start to find some fight in this battle. And it's about time. I'll be honest, they've got such a strong comp to do it. And that's the first sign of life. I think for Ammo Fantasia, it's all about shutting down Blanksy on that surge, which they did wonderfully well in the first game. And uh, all the way up until, you know, their first goal in this second game as well. Look at that, a strong start from Team K, so and that could be troublesome as still is still trying to find some value. Harvey is able to take him down. And I think Blacksy is a shot or two away from stage two, and he really needs that extra movement speed to try to find and follow around the Sam that moves so quickly. So far, not able to get those opportunities just yet. Stel can't really contest this against Javi now, not with super to hand. Boss taking a few shots, as is Blacksy as well. That penny turret again coming down with 20% more damage. Bill goes for a trick shot and he almost gets it! Not quite gonna happen, but oh my word, what an attempt! 
a very important takedown of Stell. Say we can't really do much about this situation except land onto Boston. That shot was fumbled. He should have really landed it, held on just a little bit longer, but not to be. There's now some cracks starting to form a little bit here from Amphantasy, taking too many chances and too many ideas that just don't pay off. Stell should be able to get this in, but he's not going to be able to do so. The knockback there too strong, but definitely some opportunities that are being wasted here for Amphantasy. Yeah, they had a lot of chances here to get some big kills and maybe even score. It's not going to be meant to be just yet. Blacksy gets pulled, is jumping away, gets reset on his heel. Can Sammy find him? He will do just that. Bolt pushed forward, but Javi catches it and is going to push it back once more. Oh. That's going to buy some time, but the space and the control here is in favor of Ammo Fantasia, and all they need is a goal here to take the advantage. This could be a crucial moment. Team Castle are on match point. But if Emma Fantasia get this goal, it will go to the fifth and final set. Laxi Low here could be forced back, and Phillips couldn't quite find the distance to close, to connect them. But Boss and Javi are under a lot of scrutiny, and the heels keep coming in there for stealth. Philip, though, now low himself. He's got to retreat back a little bit, drop the base there from Sami, taken care of quickly there by Blacksy. But that's a great defense, it's got to be said, from Boss here as the timer approaches going into overtime here. And Kesso know that they've got so much momentum to be able to secure the map and then bring back a goal potential to follow. But Philip's been left untouched. He won't be able to go through it here. No HP and not going to be able to do it. But a door left open there. Crazy stuff. Another attempt there, but everyone is so low on Team Queso, but everyone gets to live. Team Queso now with a final assault, potentially the final one of the match. If they can score this one up, the Mortar plays aggressively as well. Blacksy could jump in, he's gonna do just that, picks up the elimination. It's only Philip left alive and he gets melted down. Team Queso are gonna be moving forwards to the semi-final. They'll be matching against Navi later on on that side of the bracket and i'm a fantasia i mean in the first set and even the two first set it felt like it, this would be a trio sweep and we really wouldn't have that crazy of a match but sets three and four certainly provided tons of entertainment whether it was facing that edgar or now in brobel as well which is funny enough i feel like they were looking really strong here despite getting so heavily countered but then earlier in Heist, they were still struggling at times against the Edgar, where it felt like they really had the draft. So, not quite able uh, to see some of the opportunities here. But honestly, I mean, what a run for Emma Fantasia in this match. And they gave it their best shot, and I can definitely respect that. Oh, absolutely so. I mean, if that trick shot paid off as well, I mean, <laughs> wow, that would have been absolutely insane. I mean, they did throw a lot at this one. And let's be honest. It was far from smooth sailing there for Team Kesso, wasn't it? I mean, it really was. So looking at, you know, their matchup coming up between themselves and Navi, I, I mean, you know, you kind of got to be favoring Navi a little bit more in that situation. They just didn't look like themselves and towards the moments where they were put under pressure. And I think that's the weakness at the moment that we're seeing with Team Kesso. But a win is a win. And that's what counts. Some big score lines as well there on the stats. 13 takedowns for Blacksy, a much better game for him as opposed to Edgar that we saw in uh, the map of Heist previously to that. And almost 300 DPS, a really solid performance from him. Great showing as well. Boss, fantastically well as well. But uh, some great opportunities were made by Emma Fantasy, no doubt about it. I feel like if this squad keep up and just keep their pace going the way they are, they're going to consistently improve in the BSC. I think the stats, the, the stats here are even more impressive from Blacksy, considering he struggled. Like he did nothing in the first game of Brobel, like nothing. Yeah. He got destroyed the entirety of the game, and still he managed to pump off. It's gonna be Harvey that gets voted as the MVP for this match. He had a phenomenal series all around. Team Queso. I agree with York. I feel like it didn't really look the best, but as you also said, a win is a win, and for now that's what they got to focus on. Emma Fantasy, despite qualifying for every month of monthly final, is not necessarily going to be the team that you know they scrim against the most and analyze the most. So I can see some surprises there as well, maybe, and some flimsiness and not being too sure in what direction to take the drafts. But we'll see if they can prove us uh, wrong against Navi later on.
Tavi beat uh, there by the stats by 1% for MVP, by the way, just to put that one out there. Very close there on the votes over at event.brawlstars.com. If you haven't been there yet, go there right now. Sync your game with your Supercell ID. Get your predictions in, most importantly, for our next matchup. That is what you need to do this very moment. Coming up very, very shortly, it's Saints Division, the number one seed, first in this region, going up against SK Gaming. Who is their first monthly final? <laughs> Let's see how this one will go down. Coming right back after a short break. Finals down, and now we jump into the other side. As Ark let you guys know, we got a doozy on the way. It's F dot and Teddy. I'm glad to jump in here. Half of the quarterfinals done. What's your what's the pulse? What's the feel right now? Dude, the, the two first quarterfinals were already EMEA worthy, so I'm really happy about that. But now we got two quarterfinals that are, honestly, if you look at the lineups, if you look at the matchups, they are grand final worthy. It's Zeta Division versus SK <laughs> Gaming, and Reply Dota versus Foot Esports. I mean, that could genuinely be a grand final. Absolutely. I mean, we've seen Reply Totem kind of be the guys, and Foot has been a big, big talking point in this region for sure. Zeta Division. Well, they are the guys. This is your number one team in EMEA and SK Gaming. Well, they remember when they were the guys, but it certainly hasn't been lately. So some things changing behind the scenes at SK. And so maybe this will catalyze the squad. Jetton kind of jumping back into the mix here, Teddy. I think that bodes well for SK. Yeah, certainly so. I mean, Zeta Division, it's a very different story than SK, right? They're, they're comfortable with two monthly final wins out of two monthly finals. It means that even if they were to lose, they'll probably still end this month first on the leaderboards. They just have such a massive lead, yeah. which is a statement. They've been playing phenomenal. They've been looking so good and so joining in this year as a coach as well with this team, uh, just bringing a lot of extra value. And, and so far, the results have been in favor of Zeta Division. They, they are coming in as favorites here, but to me, I feel like the stakes might help SK just push them uh, in the right direction. That's the idea for sure. With such an established and known entity like Zeta Division, I think that's a really big talking point when it comes down to how SK Gaming are going to prepare, the homework they've done. Enzo is a known quantity, formerly hanging out with Reply Totem. We know how this guy kind of approaches the game, and SK Gaming certainly does so as well. And so Chaos, Yoshi, and Jetton certainly have their work cut out for them. Listen, I ain't saying it's going to be easy. It's still going to be a difficult day, but at least SK Gaming have a lot to draw on, whereas Zeta Division, on the other hand, SK haven't been making monthly finals. SK, there's, there's still a little bit under wraps, so to speak. Man, it feels good to see Jetum back with an SK jersey. It's, it feels like it's been a long time. It was only a year, really, a bit more, but he's back with SK Gaming. That has been their recent change. And it's been working out so far, to be honest, Evdon. I feel like he, he, he's been really playing well with the team. That Their synergy is back to maybe not quite where it used to be, but it, it's looking very promising. And I was very doubtful when he joined back to roster. I love Jedin, but he had a very quiet 2022 year. In 2023, didn't sure. really get all that much done either in the two first monthly finals. But right now, SK Gaming, I mean, in my predictions, I got them winning. 
So do I. And this is going to be a lot of fun because I... I'm going off a little bit of, of heart here. Like you said, Jet and seeing him back in the jersey, I think it's a big deal. 2023, a lot on the docket here. Zeta Division are comfortable, and the fans at home know it. Shout out to the two friends there hanging out in the water. But like SK Gaming, I think... There's a lot of unknowns on the team. The second half of the season, we're going to see some additional BSC points in additional tournaments outside of what's going on here in the monthly finals. So I think SK Gaming sees some of the, these announcements and goes, we know what's going on. So let's jump on in. Ring of Fire is where we're starting things off. And we see the Max and the Squeak Bands as well. No Meg. Get used to it. Amber. Also going to be a big, big problem with the trouble puddle coming through, slowing everybody. So keep that in mind. But first off the rip, we have, well, the two stunt girls to start us. Bonnie on one side, Janet on the other. Yeah, the sisters facing each other. This path is going to be joining the ranks here for Zeta Division. Just get an extra sustainability, survivability brought in by that healing station and try to just get that chip damage from afar as well. I like the ideas from Zeta Division. They've been playing very safe with their drafts, but it's been working out really well so far for them this year. So I don't blame them. SK might want to try to bring some originality. They are the underdogs getting into this one. I mean, I think we saw the predictions from you guys. It was like 82 to 18 or something along those lines. Yep. So very, very strongly in favor of Zeta. I mean, you know, if you look at the results in 2023, I perfectly get why. <laughs> I like the RT selection here. Uh, when it comes down to Hot Zone, he's the type of character that might find some struggles figuring out where to play. But when it comes to Hot Zone, put the bottom half on the circle and just spam. Now, recently, small changes get a little bit of a nerf in, in regard to his uh, bottom half damage, but or, or ability to spam it. But I still think it's there. And then combined with Colonel Ruffs, this is a uh, Strong team for SK Gaming. I think Colonel Ruff's a little bit traditional when it comes down to Hot Zone specifically, but in general, just some good brawlers. Yeah, Ruff's is in a pretty decent place. Feels like it's been one of those brawlers that just hasn't been nerfed or buffed in just such a long time. Just a, a, a very sure value that you can bring onto your team. And in the long term as well, if you can get those buffs and those traits out for your teammates, it can be very, very valuable to ensure that the late game fights are in your favor. Carl, as a final pick here from Zeta Division, I like it. Carl, just overall, very mobile, lots of damage up close and chip damage from afar, able to nicely poke around the walls as well with his pickaxe and try to dislodge opponents from tricky positions, which can happen quite quickly on Ring of Fire as well. So if someone that just pushes up on the right or the left. So right now, looking at the drafts, I feel like both teams really have a shot at it. It's fairly even all around to my eyes. Yeah, I, I got to agree there. I don't think there's anything that really totally locks down the position, but I also don't think either team has trouble getting on in there. And so we'll start things off pretty quick. Left side, I'm going to be looking at Colonel Ruffs trying to deal with this Carl, because I think Carl is going to be the skeleton key for Zeta Division as ZD starts things off hot with a nice kill in the right lane. And ultimately, Carl won't have to be that skeleton key if it's his team locking up the point. Yeah, so far the rough gadgets have been pushing him back quite a bit. But as you said, doesn't really need to be over aggressive if the right lane is winning. It's going to be absolutely fine for the left lane to be a bit more passive as, as long as he's not losing it. Control is going to be favoring Zeta Division, and nice. so far it's dominant 55% in their favor. Ooh, this could be an opening here for SK, though. But there is some presence here. Nice dodges from Meow. Takes to the sky, and I Chaos toasted! Nice shot from Zeta Division. SK tried to step up. Try being the operative word. 8% in the pocket, but it's 70 and counting for the blue team. Jiro gets a little excited. And that might be the, the blunder that allows SK to step forward. Already 70% up is dangerous for SK Gaming. No room for mistakes here as Jenon gets a nice cheeky kill on the right-hand side. Takes down Meow. Maybe a shot there for SK to try to get some presence, but Garo is just overextending in the mid, and he can't afford to do so. They only need a couple more percentages, and Meow and Naoi, way too much of a bulk of wow. HP. 
for SK to deal with. They'll lock this game in and take the 1-0 lead. Zeta Division, they are playing just textbook hot zone. I mean, we saw as their lead got larger, their play style got more aggressive and, well, risky. Because at the end of the day, sure, in the beginning, you really can't make that many mistakes. But like you said, when you have 70%, yeah, you can kind of flying hook on in there and go for it. If you kill everybody, awesome, it's over. And if you don't, well, you still have mad time to play with. So I, I like Zeta Division's whole approach to, uh, to this hot zone. Start one. Well, start two is not going to be quite as glorious as we have a full on team wipe favoring SK Gaming. Building up some nice control. SK have some presence on the right hand side as well as Aikios is going to be present there. But Garo gets a nice kill on the left to try to relieve some space and create some pressure now favoring. See the division quickly caught up percentage wise as well and the supply drop will destroy the walls, destroy the healing station in the process as well. But it's still full on control for Zeta for now. Ooh. The play out of Carl on the left side, making use of the walls and the super. Giro's able to win this left side lane. Worth noting it's been a lane swap, no longer. Fighting against the dog man, but this time going in the mid and to the right side! The double kill for the Carl. And just like that, Zeta Division. Trouble getting their footing here in game number two, but well, they're feeding and they're feeling it. Looking at the start of this game, it really felt like Zeta might be able to make something happen. Sorry, SK might be able to make something happen, but as we move forward, it is all Zeta on the scoreboard. Yep. Zeta locking in game two, taking this first set and I mean, doing it in such a convincing fashion as well. What a start here for Zeta Division. Yeah, I mean, convincing fashion, excellently said, compatriot. I, I, great, just wonderful. Because game number one, we saw SK Gaming do a good job of keeping Carl at bay and was like, okay, sure. And, and Zeta Division adapts by going, all right, fine. You keep our Carl out of the game, that's no problem. We'll win with some of our other characters. And then here, well, Carl did the thing. So they can kind of follow the miner or they can build around him. Either way, the win's gonna come. That's scary when you go up into a set against a strong team and go, well, you had two ways to win and you did both. So Zeta Division, certainly, they're the number one team and they're playing like it. Yeah, I, the, the, the lane swap was interesting because even though it worked out all the way in the beginning of game two, very, very quickly. Uh, somehow, Garo, as you said, made, made it work anyways. And he was kind of killing both lanes, regardless, being even more dominant on the left and just allowing himself to, yeah, go mid, go right side, just <laughs> seizing the opportunities and doing what you'd expect from such an aggro car. Wonderful stuff from Zeta Division. And SK Gaming are going to need to approach things differently as we move further into this match. Definitely got to agree with that one. I mean, you take a look at what Zeta Division was able to do and just dominance. Uh, honestly, I think SK Gaming might have gotten into their, their own head there after loss number one. Sometimes you lose the game just with the way you press the buttons. I, I, I don't think they should have uh, lane, lane swapped. They kept Giro down the entirety of game one and still lost. That doesn't mean the approach was wrong. Either way. New game mode, new approach. Out in the open is the map. Knockout is where we are going. We'll see how this one all works out as RT is slam picked off the top. Meg is available. Worth noting. I think she's, I'm in agreement with Ark, Teddy. I think Meg is just evergreen right now. Uh, it's such a terrifying brawler to bring into the mix. I don't know about RT, to be honest. I mean, they played it earlier as well, uh, just a set before, and it didn't really do much, to be honest. Yeah. It, it did get nerfed. It wasn't the biggest nerf. We still see plenty of RT. We still see it work, too. But they got to make it work this time around. Gene, I like it here a lot. The scouting capabilities from your splitting shots is just so... So, such wonderful value all around just being able to get that extra info for your teammates similar stuff with janet really providing a lot of information white shots gadget as well that enables you to get tons of vision 
in the bushes reset heals too something that gene will also do so they'll be really heavy on that side of things resetting heals and getting information and you always have that x factor from you know getting a great janet super and maybe even sniping someone from afar or gene connecting a big pool so i like their approach but otis and um then bringing in uh the grom too is something that I really don't mind from SK. They could find some really good value there too, but right now, draft-wise, I prefer Zeta. I, I got to agree mainly off of the RT as the Sprout's locked in here, and we love Sprout. Definitely big Sprout fans. Uh, yeah, I, I the RT is the big... is, is what I'm going to talk about with respect to this draft here for SK Gaming. It didn't really work out in the first matchup, but I also think RT was probably the most... Uh, the, the character that most importantly leaned on actually getting on the point. So he didn't do anything, but we didn't get a chance to see him do anything. Now, with that said, I feel the same way approaching out in the open. Now, obviously, a little bit tanky from a long distance. So that's something you can lean on. And it's probably why SK selected him overall. But I just feel like that secondary, uh, that secondary power is kind of left out so we'll see if half the brawler is going to be good enough as a division plays from the bottom side going to be looking at this sprout to keep players at bay but it's the grom that's up against the sprout so grom's probably the strongest brawler on this sk draft in my opinion i like the grom a lot i feel like you know Facing another troll on, on their lane, it's not going to be the hardest for Meow to just get some proper dodges. So I do like that they're yep. moving him a bit more, uh, you know, in the mid. Boys, Grammar, you really want to be shooting at a mass of people because when they're under crossfire in the first place, that's when you get a bit distracted and then suddenly your Grom shots all connect. Yeah, Grom's, it's funny. Grom is uh, the, the old, it's easy. Just don't get hit until you got everything coming at you right now. I chaos. Sneaking up on the right-hand side, less than half HP as well as Yoshi. But the gas is sneaking on in here. Three on two as Grom falls down. Make it three on none. Big plays out of Zeta, and it's Giro that gets the last shot. What a strong start for Zeta picking up this first round and not dropping a single player in the process. Escape. Need to be on their toes a nice move on to Garo over extends there and that's gonna be a kill locked in but now he is there for the trade and at the end of the day it's two on two with a gene pool available too suddenly things start to look quite good for Zeta again as Meow gets a snipe <laughs> onto Janon and realistically that should be the end of it yeah it's gotta be the end of it and also that can't happen man I don't know <laughs> not a great look here for SK Gaming. Zay Division certainly feeling good. They've got set one in the pocket. They're halfway on their way, claiming set number two here. As we get two very quick back-to-backs, they didn't even put themselves in a bad spot by losing Bonnie early on. And SK couldn't react as IKS fell down half a second later, making the two-on-two -two Zetas. So we'll take the field again. Clean slate this time. SK Gaming trying to keep things interesting. Well, uh, the tiniest of texture bugs here, affecting mostly Zeta Division. <laughs> the gameplay is going to be all the same. As SK have fairly even control this time around, as we have a bit more of a dio. dio oh, I can't pronounce it. Um, uh, a split uh, from top right to top left split. <laughs> <laughs> Diagonal, oh, there it is. Yeah, I got it. I've got it now. I, I struggled for a second. <laughs> but eventually, that sprout wall is going to be enabling Zeta to build up more control. And this is not looking all that good here for SK Gaming. They're going to have to really push in. Ikeos gets in on his own as the gas was forcing him to go more aggressive. And it's a three on two that should be easily locked in for Zeta. A little bit of tilt, I think we see, Teddy. Yes, the gas was forcing the hand of SK Gaming, but they easily could have converged as a team. iChaos chooses to go in a second or two early, so he chooses to die a second or two early. Giro takes to the sky, but the gene pull? Good. Jetton falls down, so does Chaos. The double kill for Naui. 
and Yoshi gets finished off here. Nice shot. It's trips. And that'll claim this one as well. Set one and two. Done. Zeta, they are sunny side up. Rough start of the match for SK Gaming. Already two sets behind. And now you can see better behind. Just looking through his notes and trying to see if there's something maybe to turn things around in set three because SK Gaming, they failed to qualify for monthly finals one and two. And now they're risking not making it past quarters in the third one. And they need those points, man. They need them desperately. And right now it really looks like Zeta is giving them absolutely nothing to play with. Got to agree here. You know, I, I'm going to, you know what? I'll, I'll disagree. But just very little, because I think Zeta is giving them something to play with by not picking Meg. What's going on? Like, I, 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 yes, you could just be aggressive against her. I think she's very strong right now. Um, probably would have shown her prowess here as well. But not the case. If you're SK Gaming, what's the biggest change you need, you need to make? I, 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 I think draft is a problem in the first place. Something that SK used to master so well, it just doesn't seem like they quite get it their way. And I don't feel like they're necessarily playing the problems they pick all that badly. It's just, yeah, yeah. Some, some fairly mad drafts all around. And I think with so much pressure on their shoulders as well, Zeta, they're happy with playing it safe at this point, you know, because they're calm and relaxed. They really don't have all that much to lose. They have such a strong head start and they it, they really got so uh, still a lot to win too, you know? So I don't know. I feel like Zeta are just very composed and SK Gaming not really taking them out of their comfort zone. Well said. I think, SK, I think Zeta Division is very, very comfortable. And... Uh, well, SK Gaming might be playing for behind, but we're behind Zeta Division. Why is the camera... You know what? I was going to say no go back so I could complain about it, but I don't want to say... No, don't go back. We can't even see these guys. I knew it was Inso because of the giant glasses, but like, come on now. Zeta Division, literally just turn around. We want to see you win. It's that simple. Much love. Sort of. <laughs> I agree with you. I agree with you. The reactions of the, the faces are nicer, nicer than the reaction of the, the, their backs. So, hot potato. The old back of the head cam. Yeah, we don't see a whole lot. You're absolutely right. Heist is coming <laughs> up next. And I don't know, man. I feel like so far, Zeta and SK, like, they're playing the, the, the same way. There are two teams that like to play the same way, right? Play it rather safe and, you know, just go for yeah. it slow approach and steadily build up control and, and you know improve their situation the problem is Zeta is better at that gameplay mm -hmm. so if they that play this way I feel like Zeta, Zeta can only win I agree there uh, well said I think I've got a little bit of a soapbox when it comes to the meta, and I think Brawl is kind of excellent at this in that there are some games where the meta is just stifling and you got to play it and, and that's it. But Brawl really offers a whole lot of gameplay options. And so Zeta Division are going to be the team that plays the, the, the standard meta, and they are the leaders. So they are going to do it better than you. So you have to bring something different. We saw all of the teams try to contest with their, with their opponents in quarterfinals bring something different. Now, whether or not it worked is a different story, but it certainly came, it certainly looked better than what we're seeing here in quarterfinal number three. And so, Colette selected off the rip again. Going to note that there's uh, no Meg ban, no Amber ban. As we jump into Hot Potato, maybe worth altering, maybe worth a uh, uh, who cares, as I think the Colette and the Coral are really good selections here for SK. Yeah, I, I, I like them, but dude, the barley is a threat. If you don't have any wall breaks, and that's not taking into consideration the, the you know, unbreakable walls that are going to be on the map sure. as well, uh, or something aggressive, it's scary how much value it can find. It's so hard to get out mm. of position, and once he's there, I mean, I, I don't know how you dislodge him. He just gets so much value onto that save. 
and <laughs> can get into really aggressive positions as well. Surge, I think, is a pretty lovely pick here too, dealing directly with that curl and trying to uh, make sure he doesn't get um, any value from his super. So I like the draft right. here so far, personally, more on the side of Zeta. And I gotta say, I like the I like the surge pick as well as sort of a uh, a ban by way of pick. You just mentioned how Barley, well, he's going to be able to do whatever he wants as long as there's no wall break on the other side. So take surge for yourself, removing some of the wall break available for SK. And Penny's going to work along with some of the walls as well. Last choice over here to the red squad. And it's going to be Bull, so there's some wall break there for sure. Do you like Bull? I don't know. Well, it's still a little bit scary because I feel like... So, my idea here against the party is you need either someone to, you know, get him out of position by being very aggressive or by breaking walls, shooting over walls, or uh, something along those lines. And Bull will be aggressive. We'll see what gadget the Barley is going to be going for because the, the heal is stronger overall, but the slow is going to be useful against the Carl. It's going to be useful against the Bull potentially too here. So, um... I, I, I don't know, I, I'm uh, draft-wise, I'm on the side of Zeta, very much so, and we'll see how they play it out. They still got some chances, I mean, I don't think the draft is bad, per se, for SK. We'll have to see right. how well they execute their plans here. And don't forget, I mean, you, you've got you've got the free shot from Colette here. SK Gaming, as long as they farm up that super and they're able to get a push-up, you're guaranteed a chunk off of the heist box. Jetting. Spinning, I guess. Uh, will lose this match. No! <laughs> Wins the matchup with help for the mid lane. Chaos. And opens up the door just a little bit. But ultimately, it's the Barley doing the damage on the top side. As SK has lost 40 plus percent of their ice box. Zay Division, though, none too healthy either. Right now, it's barely even. But the difference is that. Surge was on stage one, now he's on stage four, which is a whole different level of a trend. Let's see what SK can do about it. Jenin is going towards that save, getting some good positioning. But now he is going to jump onto him, nearly goes down himself. Aikyo's trying to nice. reposition nicely, and he won't be able to survive, I think. He does get reset, nearly doesn't quite make it out, but will be... Still up and standing for now as Yoshi gets jumped on by Naoi. Nicely dispatches of that problem. As Data Division still have a lot of control, and Naoi is just such a threat overall. Yoshi has nowhere to go. He's gonna dive to the safe, but Fingera can just close things out right here, right now. Probably about 10% and counting for SK. And the Barley will toss one last over. Zeta Division one game away from walking to the semi-finals. Just another day in the office, if you ask me. The black and white seem pretty well poised to take advantage of... Well, SK Gaming is usually the black and white, but their jerseys are very colorful, so we'll <laughs> lean on that one. But yeah, real talk, man. I think SK Gaming, Jetton... Let's focus on the positives. IKS looked really good in that matchup. I like what he was able to bring. Played this mid lane really well and used that Colette Super to his advantage against the Ice Box. This time around, very different for SK. Jetton getting some damage on the left hand side. And it's SK starting things off 20% and counting as they win left and mid. They got the perfect lanes now as well. They have, uh, uh, I mean, not anymore, but they did have the, 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 the bull. Um, that was going to be very aggressive, and Akon was able to get a lot of value onto the Barley. But maybe some lane swaps and Surge getting to further stages is going to be a different approach. The late game, on paper, should be favoring Zeta Division as Ikeos goes down, and mm. now he's back to stage four. This is where disaster might strike for SK. Now he does so much damage, plus the Barley. And Zeta Division does 50% to SK's box, but now SK on the backswing, dealing with Meow and I Chaos trying to go for the kill. Beautiful play by the enemy mid laner. The Chaos is able to win 48 to 24. SK Gaming with the lead. Now he inching on up and wins the duel. 
Has to fall back for defense, though, Teddy. And Yoshi, just barely staying alive. 13% left for ZD. And this was close. Jenon is still alive, but Garo is going to take him out. And the position is looking better and better here for Zeta. They do need to be careful because Yoshi is creeping up on the right side again. Now we should be able to take him out and without taking any damage instead. It's actually going to be very even. Miao gets some more damage on safe. But actually, a team wipe here for SK. This is their chance to pick up their first game as Jenon gets a shot on safe. Surely Yoshi One more. gets through as well. And he'll close it out here for SK Gaming to finally pick up their first game when they desperately need it. But they have some presence on the leaderboards now. Much, much better approach. And what I like about this win here is this didn't seem like a fluke, Teddy. It really seemed like, listen, it wasn't overall dominant. as they Division able to fight into it. But SK Gaming won that game because they were the better team executing on the field in that one. And that's got to pose. That's got to feel good. Well, the start of this game, it's probably not going to be feeling the best for SK Gaming. Two kills early on. Favoring Zeta. Jeden gets some nice value on save, but is feeding Naoi in the meantime, and Naoi will be able to take the elimination in the end. Yoshi on the right wants to make a run for the save. Now he's there to prevent him from over aggressing. Meow, incredibly low HP, will fall eventually. Jeden also low, not quite able to take down the mortar just yet. Big plays in the mid from Naui, but I Chaos able to answer this time around. Now Chaos going in deep, trying to find the kill on a barley. Won't happen. Jetton didn't get the memo, so their damage was a little bit mistimed. Another Colette dive in again against the scrum. Yoshi trying to make the play, dives in, dies down. SK Gaming tied right now. 78 to 76, so all but, but essentially. Now we have Naoi back on stage four. Yoshi aggressing, but we're just feeding supers at this point. We'll be getting a little bit of his back from the damage he takes. Beautiful kill from Naoi. He's been so dominant on the surge. And now it's Garrett able to get some nice connections on the save. They'll be building up a nice and healthy lead. Garrett's still alive now as well. As I chaos is taking some more damage and needs to be really careful if he wants to be able to reset. SK previously were not locked down this hard. Yoshi finally makes a play here in game number three. Did well in two, but not off to a great start so far. Day Division with the lead by about 17%, but here comes Yoshi again, and Colette, and Carl, knocked out of the super, but it's still a bunch of damage. 39% left for Zeta Division, and Carl still going. And Jenin. Trying to get some more damage on save by Kios gets a nice super to connect to. Big Surely play. this is gonna be a set and SK gaming. Just like a Phoenix rising from the ashes, as it looked like it might just be it. Are able to get the set. And now suddenly we have a match. They are alive, folks. You'd truly love to see it. No bias, I just like to watch Brawl. So we're guaranteed a fourth set. Very amped up to see SK doing this. Again, this team, not even on the leaderboards, but certainly we know what they're capable of and giving us a little glimpse of just that. Yeah, as we said, no bias. You know, we don't have our predictions and honor and rewards on the line by predicting SK Gaming, but no bias for, for, for this one. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it, I mean, phenomenal stuff from SK, really. It, it did come down to the wire, you know? 5% in game two, that's what was separating Zeta Division from the semifinals. SK Gaming, they pulled through, they made it work, and I, I absolutely respect that. I mean, having to, you know, make the calculations on a base race in the last second like that, when there's only 5% of a difference and you're done to a match point, you need to be very cold-blooded to do all that successfully in SK Gaming. Looking good here in this uh, third set. It took them five games in a row, I believe, from Zeta before SK pick up their first. But now they have a <laughs> second. And I mean, at this pace, we might really have a match on our hands.
I mean, here's the thing, man. You said in order to do what they did, you got to be really cold blooded. I haven't doubted SK Gaming's ability to be, you know, cold blooded, that winner mentality, ice in the veins, clutch Kobe, whatever you want to call it. I chaos has been on stage before. We've literally heard him, right? This guy's kind of loud. And so, like, that whole conversation, I'm, uh, th- that is why they won. But that's not why I doubt this team. I doubt this team. If I were to doubt this team, it would come from lack of communication. SK Gaming have made, have tried to make some big plays, and largely it's focused on iChaos, as he's kind of, he's my star of this team. But sometimes... It really feels like he knows it, and he tries to play hero ball. But they won that last set because he went in at the same time as Yoshi and Jetten, and they played together. Communication will win this set. It's just a matter of SK, do they have it or not? And Brawl Ball, certainly a communication tester for sure, as we jump in here in our fourth set. Could be the final one if Zeta has their way. If not, we go to dry season for Mountie. Just going back one second on the stats earlier, just amongst two players, they had 660 damage on the side of Zeta Division for 33 kills. Just a massive difference compared to the few kills SK had. But SK, they got the value on save they needed. And at the end of the day, you play objective, yep. you win. And Bromo is just the same. Let's see if they can apply this again coming into set number four. Listen, man, it's about the stuff after the stuff. Kills count. In bounty, sure, you know. But what about that? What about the objectives, baby? Gene, selected here for Zeta alongside the long range Gus. And now option over to SK. They've got one already. Who complements this pick for SK? Amber, uh, Amber not available. It's a tough goal. To be completely honest, we could see some more long range approaches across the board. As we do already have that idea, uh, let's be fair, uh, Janet will do the job very much long range and provide some AoE damage as well, which is always very nice if you need to uh, deal with any spawnables or multiple opponents pushing up your lane. And her gadget as well, drop the base, just really strong both in on a defensive position or to aggress if you manage to get towards those top walls but still got a final pick for both sides and it's gonna be RT so really keeping that sharp shooter approach lots of damage from afar here for SK Gaming Zeta Division more utility based for now and their final pick still to be decided RT, an interesting choice here. Will be good on the defensive end. And looking to compliment the draft here from Zeta. Will be Carl one more time. Again, just evergreen, aggressive type character. Backyard bowl. I'm liking what Zeta brings to the table largely off of the gene. But ultimately, this will just be, I think, he who brawls better. Uh, the RT is a little bit experimental, but a strong brawler nonetheless. I think both these drafts are attractive, but I lean towards Zeta. Yeah, I like it a lot because they both have very different ideas. It's very much going to be utility versus sharpshooters and then uh, just a little bit of aggression that the Kong can bring in. Same for the Bonnie, uh, obviously, if you have your super. But the ideas are fairly different, and as you said, and yet the draft feels barely even. Let's find out in game how they're able to play this one out. As it is going to be as passive as you expect Backyard Ball to be in the early stages, just trying to get some supers to open up the situation. Yoshi in the mid, but it's Chaos that steps forward first. And here's a big jump in from Jetton. Nice kill across the way. And Giro trying to chase down Chaos, but ultimately nothing happening here as Chaos will have to be pushed out and a reset. Yeah, I feel like it's hit gaming. That's such a good control, but maybe trying to force that aggression a little bit too much without really having 
really having the utility to do so. The pool is going to connect onto Yoshi. That's going to be an insured kill. A jump in from Jedan that lands really in the middle of everyone, but not able to get value onto anyone there for it. Like Kyos is flying over, just trying to reset the heals, but unsuccessfully so. Ooh, Another the pull! From Yao Ya is going to be problematic here for SK. Well, Zayda needs to step up now that they've got the kill and the one after the fact. The third comes through as well. Pick up the ball, boys. Giro and Meow both turn around. The pull misses, but the shot does not. And Zayda are the first ones on the board. There's nothing Jaden could have done in def defense. The pull was just preventing him from getting in range to block the ball. So beautifully done by Zayda. And again, the slow approach is going to be in their favor. Pass to Jaden. Goes for the shot, but it's going to be a miss. Meow wouldn't have been able to catch him either way, most likely. And this aggression from SK is quickly deflating as we're towards the final 25 seconds of this game. <laughs> and SK Gaming desperately need a goal. I like it. Deflating. Gus got a balloon. <laughs> well, now he's got an attack here. Left side and the pull mid side. And so with the double kill here, SK Gaming, no shot to win this one. As we count down from 10, Zeta Division with game one. Yeah, this has got to be heartbreaking for SK. They go from facing a match point to turning it into their favor for the high set. And then the next set immediately facing a match point again. But we did have some signs of life from SK here and there. Just got to do better getting into game number two which could very much be their last one unless they're able to reverse sweep this set just like they did for heist i think earlier i said i liked both the drafts but i'm i'm seeing not much out of sk i don't i don't know if it's a draft or a draft issue or not but they just i don't see their game plan here teddy yeah i mean i feel like their initiator is really gonna be Jenner, right? Try to just jump in with right. the super, and he messed up his jumps for the most part in the previous game. And if that's the case, there's just not all that much they can do with their comp, to be honest. And Jenner's gonna try to that's make true. a run for the call. Does manage to at least secure the trade, which is gonna give up just a little bit more control that Zeta would have had otherwise. So usually, like, you want to find that secondary win con. If Jenner's not landing these supers, where do you go as SK? Home. That's where you are. <laughs> I mean, that just might be true as the pull comes through and everybody winds up on Zeta's side. Jetting barely alive. Scratch that. Toasted. Ball not in scoring position just yet. But Zeta winning that scrum means the next time they win, the ball should certainly find a home in the back of the net. Jetting jumps in. Jetting goes home. Chaos takes to the sky, and SK stems the bleeding for a moment. Zeta Division coalesced around left side. Pull and kill. Two more to play defense, but the swing in is strong. Carl does go down. Is that going to be good enough? Oh, beautiful kill from Janina, actually. Didn't really see this one coming. Jumping in with 2 HP. Doesn't even land on target, but still gets the kill nevertheless. Not a lot of time left, but SK might be able to snatch in a goal just in the nick of time. They have the positioning for it, but they need an opening, and right now they just don't really have anything to do just that. Answers trouble without Jet and Super. They don't really have many options. Killing Giro just raw will help out. Yoshi stepping forward, but gets smoked out by Carl. SK have to go now. This is their only opportunity. Countdown till overtime. Pull in. And it's taken too long. Now, now he goes in on the left-hand side. Jetting taken care of. And with OT happened, Zeta Division now poised and ready to make their mark in the semifinals. Vengeful Pass spirits. up field here. Oh, and actually, there's the dash in. <laughs> A little bit of a messy fight there. I thought that surely Zeta would close this one out right here, right now, but at the end of the day, it's a two-on-two -two and a bit of a reset. What a change here, the unbreakable walls. Big difference in 2023 Brawl. Nice long-range shot coming out from the RT. 
And now it's SK Gaming pushing forward with 21 seconds on the clock. Respawn comes through, so back to the three on three. Zeta now hiding behind the unbreakable wall. And something's gotta give. iChaos playing it real safe, backing up. But that means it's time for SK to step forward. Jetton goes too far. There's the pull. The shot's defended. We go again. That was scary. That was scary. SK almost out, but not quite. And it does feel like game after game, they're playing better and better, but it doesn't help when you start the series off two sets behind. Let's see if ha, they can try to contest this set and maybe take us all the way to a fifth. We're not there just yet. Another match point here for SK to face. Front-loaded composition here. I think we've done all of the whiteboard work. Jetton needs to land the jump. That's what needs to happen. Giro and Chaos on the right side, both barely alive. I Chaos lands the kill. Jetton jumps in, finds his as well. That went successfully, and the goal comes as well. Beautiful play from SK Gaming. 100 HP in it. <laughs> as, uh, that's what uh, Jetton had left when he picked up the kill in the gene. Close, but close enough here for SK Gaming. Yep. No. Lock in that goal, and now Zeta Division are the ones that need to aggress. Garo gets Icos very low HP. Jenna is gonna fall to Naui, and suddenly there's Ooh. a bit of a chance to pull from Meow. You know, will connect, and you're gonna maybe try to make a run for it. No, they'll play it safe, and that seems like a more wise decision as well. Two and three should not be scorable here for Zeta, and slow and steady approach is gonna be favored. Jetton jumps in, this time gets a trade out. So a two on two. The pull is good and a two on one. Ball castled in the top right here. Good choice by SK. They've got to last an entire minute now though, in order to find themselves with a game 2A victory. Now oh, he's pushing Now we left hand side. Yeah, that's gonna be Big a damage, kill. Teddy. This is looking Good for Zeta. Man advantage. Akios goes down. Yashi gets pulled as well. And it's only Jelen left in defense, but what can he do on his own? Surely Zeta are going to be scoring this one in. And they don't waste this opportunity. 30 seconds left, and it seems like overtime is looking more and more likely. With both teams scored, I think so as well. Real quick, who has the upper hand in overtime on paper? I think it's fairly even, to be honest, but considering Zeta have been playing better, I would still say Zeta, but it is fairly <laughs> even. And overtime is looking more and more likely now as well. Five seconds left, and it seems like Zeta Division very much going to be in the driver's seat as the walls break open, but they're the ones with just a little bit more positioning. Can they convert is a real question. Beautiful Vengeful Spirits from Meow to get some value across the board. Now he's going in, but gets punished for that overextension and suddenly SK Gaming, got one more player alive, but is that gonna be enough to score? They have two supers, maybe some charge shots, but a beautiful gene pull here from Whoa! Meow, but Ikeos is still flying. The pass to Jenin, it goes into the net and SK Gaming are contesting this set with a game of their own. And they are gaming, man. We are closer. So you're saying there's a chance. One more game to bring us to set five. And I'll be honest, I thought we were going to be out of here quick. I saw those first two sets and thought. But now I'm thinking. And it's up to SK to make me cheer. <laughs> Big start for the red team this time around. At the end of the day, this is a confidence composition. Jetton has to feel good about going in. Hasn't had a reason to this set, to be fair. But that last one might change. Shot goes in through the defense. Beautiful play by SK. How do SK build up this confidence after they lost the first five games of this match? But now, that overaggression is gonna get punished just a little bit and Gero actually might end up go going down. Yeah, that's nice. a bit of a problem. Because now Yoshi has the ball, can just push it away, and there's really not 
a push coming up from this one, but Miao is able to get a beautiful pull to connect, and that kill will grant a ton of control here favoring Zeta. Well, now it's Zeta with the wind beneath their wings. Three players strong in the enemy zone. And this one should be an easy score. Walks it in. One to one. And we're just barely over a minute left to play in regulation. If Zeta Division wins this, it's over. If SK Gaming win this, we go to a set five. And we see what Zeta Division can do all the way home. Well, this is Zowie yeah, this going is in here for the play. Very scary for SK. Look at the control now for Zeta. They're pushing up. So close to the goal. The pool connects as well. And a three on two, I guess. Just simply does not have the damage to contest. That's, That's it. it. Zeta should be moving forwards. No. Never mind. No. Not just yet. The defense stands somehow for SK. Bit of a messy push there from Zeta. And suddenly, SK, they're just not out just yet. Heck yeah. I'm excited. Kobe on the clock, SK Gaming gotta find something to do here now. Looking at Jetton, no super available. Remember, that's been SK Gaming's largest initiation tool this entire set. When things work out for Jetton, they work out for SK. Red team clearly waiting for overtime. And now Chaos inching over to the right-hand side, pushes the ball forward. It's OT and Jetton. Jumps into the back line. Meow goes down. Now he trying to defend. Gets the kill, but Yoshi does as well. That's going to be a team wipe. Pass it from Chaos. Can they score it? Yes, they can. We're going to a set five. No way. SK, make it happen. And we are going all the way in this series. Again, five games in a row. From 0-0 to match point for Zeta without SK getting a single game. But now suddenly, we're going to set five. And honestly, I mean, I'm all down for it. I'm all down for it. What a phenomenal comeback here from SK Gaming, but it's not the end of the journey whatsoever. Still the right season to play out for the fifth set. And I mean, what a challenge is that going to be for both teams? This, I, I need to give all the credit in the world to SK and whoever is out there, not only doing the draft, but talking to the squad. Because again, Teddy, you nailed it. The way this SK gaming team wins this last one is, did Jetton initiate successfully? If not, you lose. If yes, this happens. And they're able to team wipe and score. Even if they lose someone, even if Jetton... How many times did we see Jetton survive with 2 HP, 100 HP, just barely alive? That's what's going to happen. This is an all-confidence, all-just, I believe in this comp, win it or lose it on this play. And SK Gaming did not have much momentum despite winning the set before this. So this was a confidence call from SK. And I'm glad they made it. Because of that, they find themselves in set five where, you know, Teddy, I think Zeta Division kind of had the momentum the here, even with SK winning one or two. <laughs> Arc going nuts, as he should. But now that we're here in set five, Teddy, I think it's anyone's game. Again. Oh my, look, look at the stats. So dominant for Zeta Division, but they lose the set. We yep. have 33 kills. It's about the objectives. Got to score. It was 33 kills for now we and Meow combined. Now this time around, it's 37. It's huge. It's more than the entire SK gaming roster. And Gary is not even having a bad match either, you know? But still, yep. SK gaming, they're the ones closing out the games right now. And they're the ones that push this series to a set five. And there's going to have to be some changes for Zeta Division because they're getting so many kills, so much well, damage, but not the value that you would expect. You know, they need to convert. Let me respond with yes and. That's what I'm going to say here. Zeta Division has been very strong and we've seen them time and time again win in the numbers, but lose when it comes to the objective categories, right? The, the heist box or the brawl ball. Well, we're ending this set in bounty. There is no objective. There is no stuff after said stuff. It's just about 
the kills, man. Now, obviously, there's some nuance with playing passive, and we've got a new little hit 20 thing, but but re- this is just brawl. And so far, Zeta Division has been the better team at brawling. That said, I think it's uh, lined up for a Zeta win. I, I, I agree with you, to be completely honest. I, I feel like... When it comes to just the, the, the duels and getting the kills, it's been all Zeno. And SK Gaming, they've been able to win just because of some big gambles here and there, taking some risks and some outplays as well. And just being able to convert more from those specific outplays rather than the consistency that Zeta have had throughout the series. Even the sense they lose in a division, they get more kills, they get more damage. In Bounty, that's going to be a, a whole different affair because that just wins you the game straight up and penny and yeah. Gus locked in already very common picks here for zeta division i mean they, they they love that Gus, and i mean obviously they do have you know the world champion skin on the Gus too in uh, <laughs> not quite under their name but it is their skin very much you know as it has the colors yep. of zeta and maybe that is part why but also part why is because they play it so well so it's scary for SK Gaming. We'll see if we maybe see some throwers in the mix as well, as we do have uh, the ban on the tick, but something like Sprout or Grom is still open, and we know that Ikeos does love himself some Sprout. And there it is. Last selection here for SK to go along with some long range choices with the bell. And then the last pick here for Zeta Division. We've got some long-range damage and obviously the turret on the other side. Curious to see where they go for this last choice. Oh, I got baited. I, I, I saw the blue come in. I thought we were getting the pick. Yeah, I thought so too. But three seconds left. It's going to be great. And that is an both an interesting and a risky final pick to bring in here for yeah. the division. I mean, uh, you TP on the Sprout, you kill him, right? But if you play it well as a team, it's still really scary. So I like the idea, but I definitely feel like SK could win this one. I prefer their draft personally. You you you, you prefer their draft over SK Gaming's? or I prefer SK's draft over the okay. divisions. And is it just about the gray? Because the gray is definitely the, 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 the weird pick, so to speak. I like the Sprout a lot, you know? I feel like they don't have tons yeah. of way to deal with him. And if he just stays away from the great TP, he should be fine. Plays with his team, should be fine. But that's all in theory. That's all on paper. In practice, it usually gets pretty wild. And Blue Storm is going to be picked up by SK, so they get to play defensively. Yashi. With first blood as was, now he falls on the left side, and that's three stars early on in favor of SK. Gray definitely had trouble dealing with the thrower on the left side. At the end of the day, long range, you know, sharpshooter. That's, I think, what Gray intends to bring to the table here. Him and Gus sharing this, playing this mid-left matchup is probably the better choice. A little bit of a yank, and that's where the Gray comes through. Little baby Gene, essentially. But... So far, it's SK with the lead, three versus zero, Blue Star as well. And I Chaos here tosses down the super and brings me out down to just one HP or about no kill. Yeah, a lot of opportunities here for SK, but they're also not giving away any kills nearly. Lost uh, Jedin earlier, a bit of a lane swamp, but it's gonna be matched by Zeta. So they're happy to keep those matchups. And SK are not really enforcing them with that pacing. Beautiful kill for my kills. Five stars now. Now he is low HP, but Jedin is going to be running away back to safety. Rather flying away in this situation. 25 seconds left in Zeta Division. They desperately need to push up. A little bit of a strikeout there for me as far as Jetin's super. Now he very low though. Left side dies and SK gets another one. Eight seconds to go. All SK has to do is not die here. Jetton takes to the sky. That should be it. SK Gaming <laughs> one away from the big win and going to semis. Zay Division. They, 
they didn't make a noise in that one. We've had four match points, five match points with the draw. We've had five match points for Zeta. And now, finally, the first match point for SK Gaming. And, I mean, we'll see if they end up choking as much as Zeta have. But that game looked confident, and Jedin is still alive. It is going to be a one-for-one -one trade. Blue Star is still in the middle, so it's actually a tie right now. Garo is low HP, still standing as well. But the connection from my Chaos is going to give a narrow lead in favor of SK by just the two stars. Well played. Fantastically played by SK. They've got to keep it going here. From about... 80 seconds. And Chaos getting very aggressive. Last time around, it was pretty much off of this one moment, and they all hit the gas. SK have a lead, though. Can play it a little safe, despite not having the blue star, but Zeta's not going to let him. Pushing up forward and cornering SK into their side of the map. Now we... Uh, he's going to miss another pool, and that's going to cost him his life. Four stars in favor of SK Gaming. We are in our final minute, potentially, of this quarterfinal. Shedden does take a small chunk of damage. Shield going to be popped onto Miao to try to allow him to still peek that right lane. Doesn't quite get the angle. Yashi healing back up. Jedden oh, low. Big Jedden place. pulls. It's only one star now. And SK Gaming, they're going to try to hold on to this one very, very dearly. I think they need to get aggressive. 20 seconds to go. Zeta Division lurking in here. Jetton takes to the sky. And 15 on the clock. SK are staring at that clock. One star separates our teams. And Jetton, 400 HP. Here comes Meow. Now Jetton healing up, hiding behind. Yoshi gets the kill. That's it. It's done. Zeta Division, number one in the region, out in quarterfinals. SK Gaming to semis. Zeta Division have won both the monthly finals of February and March undefeated in monthly finals so far in 2023 until today where SK Gaming playing their first monthly final match of the year are here to take them down in a full-on reverse sweep what a story here for SK Gaming, they had no success yeah. whatsoever until this month. And now, I mean, they did the unthinkable. And they're moving on to the semifinals, taking down the Titans that are Zeta Division. I mean, this is huge for SK Gaming. Not only do they get the, the community buff, the yeah, we did it, boys, hurrah, hooray type moment as they take down Zeta Division, but also big picture listen they're number 10 coming into today they're number 10 on the leaderboards which mean or which means we don't even put them on the graphic like they're so but they're technically they're there now this win all of a sudden they find themselves in semis maybe they find themselves in the finals this time around we have more competitions later on throughout the year they are very very far in the back of the pack teddy but they can see the front and this this is the first moment where they actually feel the wind behind them. And they're like, hey, maybe we can get this going. If SK doesn't win this one, then the whole big story can never even leave the ground. So this could be the beginning of something wonderful for SK Gaming. And how picture perfect it would be if it was. And it starts with the downfall of Zeta Division. MVP voted in by you guys at home yep. is going to be at Chaos and honestly 100% fantastic series from him and his prompt plays in the final set were the difference maker for me and he played it phenomenally towards the end as well he baited in so many pools from the grey and then once he put that wall towards the end there's nothing they could do they had no way of taking that wall out or taking them out of that position that was ggs and i mean for me that deserves just by itself the title of mvp completely agree i do want to give a shout out to my man jetton i said his name a whole bunch this set i think especially in that brawl ball situation like it's really that simple sk go into this match and go hit your jumps or we lose
And he, yeah. and he winds up doing it towards the end. And that's a scary situation to be in. So, you know, chaos, that's a, that, that is a matchup where SK Gaming are the most valuable player because it was teamwork that sort of made the dream work there. Forgive the cliche. But at the end of the day, I mean, sometimes it happens. Great stuff there for SK Gaming with the victory over Zay's division. And so I think that moves us on to our last quarter final. Who plays SK is now up to Reply Totem or Foot. Semantic, Drage, and OPE. Definitely some of the fan favorites over at home. But Joker Maru and Mori, well, they've been making noise for sure. The Green and Black, honestly, one of my favorite teams to watch. I like Joker. I like Maru. These guys have fun on the field. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Reply Totem, they were... They're, they're one of my favorite stories in the BSC history because in 2021, they were the big underdog at Worlds and yet they were the best performing EMEA team at Worlds, making it all the way to the semi-finals top four. In 2022, suddenly they became just the best team of EMEA throughout the entirety of the year. But now this year, they've been heavily contested by Zeta Division and other teams that are not far apart. And when I say other teams, I'm mainly looking at Food Esports. So this is their chance, now that Zeta is out, to try to catch up in points, which would be such a big deal. And this statement absolutely applies to both teams, Food Esports, and the exact same basket right now. I, I, I'm very excited about this roster this has been this has been a roster that i've been i've been watching for a little bit i think that seeing semantic wind up on a team with drage this is an interesting duo that i have been excited to see their new chapter you know drage has been such a represent you you drage was sort of like the guy on a team for a long time so was semantic now they both leave their respective teams and they come here into new places and foot have been doing well all things they're just getting w's so i want to see them up against this reply totem squad both of them this it should be an even match for sure if i if i tag your analyst brain do you lean one way or the other man it's a really tough one i'm an incredible Reply Totem fan. So, not really off analysis, but just off my heart, I'm going with Reply Totem. But to be honest, I feel okay. like uh, analysis wise, they've still been looking the best so far this year. They looked so dominant in the qualifiers as well. Um, so, I, I, I got my money on Reply Totem, but for the esports, they're really not far behind. And at the end of the day, for me, it, it comes down to whoever plays best today you know who is in the best form getting into this match and it's a very tough call to make any given whatever day the monthly finals falls on right heist is where we're coming to 91 percent of the fans at home are on the side of reply totem only nine percent believe in the semantic the drage and the open i am excited because I think Food could win this one on high specifically, Kaboom Canyon. Well, we'll see how it all crumbles. As Reply Totem, I think it's safe to say, is the top card. And they're going to go with Eve. Recent changes. How impactful is the extra hatchling? Well, so far, not very, as we've mostly seen Eve lose. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm not sure. But this is a map where just the water mechanic is so strong that I kind of yeah. like it, you know? And I feel like, to me, you don't really want to be picking Eve because of her new gear. I think you want to be picking her on maps where she's already good, where now the new gear is just bonus value. That's kind of how I see it. Well said. I think that there are some changes, like Meg's rework, which is a large, oh, everything's different now, where Eve is sort of like a, a tap of the triple beam balance, you know? I'm in agreement. This is what, I, I am on record as being an Eve hater. And this is one of the only maps I actually like the alien on. I think Eve does a good job here. Like you said, that whole mid-water nonsense. Uh, cool. Eve works out there. But the Otis is the last selection to go alongside Lola and Meg. 
Right now, I am a big fan of Meg. I think she is extremely strong, arguably too strong to leave on the table. However, with an aggressive composition like Reply Totems, that might be what you need to deal with the Meg. Essentially, I think if you can knock her out of that me out of the free super that she gets, right? She starts in the mech now. I think if you knock her out at the beginning, you're in a much better position. And I'm looking at the crow, and, I'm and there, there are the tools needed to do so on Reply Totem's side. All right. Well, there we have it. Set one between Reply Totem and Foot Esports. What a fantastic lineup here for a quarterfinal match. So it means we'll be saying goodbye to one of those teams in the early stages of this monthly final. Joker with the speed gear to mitigate the slowness that Bonnie brings as a whole. Looking to get some tags and actually it's enough to get a super early on onto that save. Some nice value with it too, letting an extra shot there towards the end that really, realistically, she shouldn't really have been a, a allowed to have, but he'll take it. And it's just 26% early lead in favor of Reply Total. Nothing doing just yet for food. Semantic does get a kill on Namaru, the but they're popped out of the mech is Meg, and Semantic popped right after it. Joker goes in. Can't find the kill on a drage, but the assist from Mori comes through. The reply totem have done 26% to the red team's box. Maru is very low HP, goes down. Slow is going to be pumped to try to make sure they don't gain too much control. And now without a mech available to her, Meg is going to be struggling just a little bit more. Ope also very low HP. That crow jump is going to settle that part of the map. And even though for the esports, they've been getting plenty of kills and plenty of damage, that's only on players. On the save, they've yet to really touch it. Not really a, a, a way for them to get on in there. See, Joker can just jump over and has been doing so time and time again. He's done it twice now and has taken down 60 or 40% of the enemy's safe. Boot kind of need a little bit more space than a reply to get on in there. And Maru's not making it easy, although a trade out there is big. And now Ope might have their first shot onto the safe. Nope. Pushed away. Mori still alive. And Joker with the last. Uh, Mori with the last hit off the assist of Joker. 15 seconds left. And it's a massive lead here for a Ply Totem. Not unbeatable, but they need a team wipe here. And just not happening. They even extend that damage furthermore. Oh, wait, was it Cheeky Kill was the ego to close it out, but it's not going to be changing that final result. And that means not quite. that Reply Totem, they'll take this first game, and it was a fairly dominant one as well. Not an absolute stomp, but I, we just really didn't see all that much from Boot so far. Nah, they really didn't get a chance to... to... <laughs> <laughs> they didn't get a chance to do anything, man. I mean, Meg is supposed to kind of overwhelm and overpower, but here you see the two M's dealing with it, two on one, essentially. Drage trying to keep people at bay, and they do find a kill in the left lane. Is it enough to push forward? Here comes Lola, finding just a sprinkle out of the safe, but the ego dead, and everybody respawned, and it's literally 4% done by Foot after their first push. with esports was full on mid control now no one contesting them in the bush and it's a very different picture from the previous game they practically got the same amount of damage i think right now than they did in the entirety of the previous game which is pretty crazy all things considered maru is a jump in secures a one for one trade but being already a player behind it's not really gonna do all Nothing. that much. Yeah, exactly. It's just not the best timing to get a kill. Joker jumping in will get the ego, but Ope is the one that gets the kill. At the end of the day, it's still Food Esports with mid control and the damage lead, which wow. is a deadly combination to have. That was the biggest. Food got a, a complete team wipe, and we're still only able to get about 14% onto the safe. Again, they, their window of opportunity needs to be so much larger than Reply Totems. That said, Reply Totem have yet to find anything. 
as food have been much more successful this time around. Joker tries to jump over the whole battlefield, but instead gets sent to the graveyard. And here's another push from Foot. Mori stays alive, and Maru dives the back line again, but not enough for a kill, and again, a stalemate. The only saving grace really for Reply Totem is the fact that Foot Esports lack range, which means they weren't able to get enough connections on save. Joker gets some damage, and only down to 8%, a Crow Jump or Bonnie Super could still turn things around, but it's going to be complicated here for Reply Totem. Maru is low HP Ten as seconds. well. And time is ticking. Don't think they'll get that sort of opportunities. Unless Joker gets a super right here with attack onto Ope, but I don't believe so. An 8% will be enough for Foot Esports to even things out. Semantic, loud as ever. Although this time, surely discussing tactics as opposed to just yelling out. But definitely a player that Needs to be vocal, I think, both, you know, for himself, but also I think the team definitely needs that communication. Things went very differently in game number two than one. And I think a lot of it came from successful aggression out of food. They found stuff that they weren't able to find in game number one. Despite Reply Totem focusing this Meg, Semantic actually made an impact in game two. Again, mid control favoring Foot Esports. Joker does have super. He's going to go for it onto Ope, and it's going to be enough for a trade, which might just push the balance slightly in favor of Reply Totem now. Semantic is trying to heal up, but has the hatchlings to destroy, which will delay that process. Ope got slowed, and that's going to help Joker get a couple connections, and Maru secured a kill. Joker probably only a tag or two away from another jump, and we know how much damage he can deal on the safe when he commits to it. Ooh. And he's going to try to jump in Foot. the back line, but yeah, he's going to get melted by Drage. Beautifully done yeah, by that... Foot, and it's looking pretty good for Foot. I like how Foot is focusing before the jump as well. That's a big, big part of why they're able to find these victories. Semantic does find a kill. 12% done to the safe, and it was by Reply Totem. So they are in the lead, albeit very slightly. Here comes the rest of Foot, though. And a short little burst out of Meg's mech leaves 10% all gone. So it's 90 to 88. Semantic. Low HP on the mech. I'm gonna go out of it. Poison, shoot. Not be enough to take him down, have 15 HP, that's close. Maori will be there to lock in the kill, though, and some poor dodges will result in his demise. Maru jumping in, but he might end up going down there. Two. It's gonna be a trade, and it's only 2% separating both teams. Joker doesn't really have a chance to push forwards. We all have hatchlings from Maori coming in, but Semantic still has a lot of HP, and Ashling's gotta go. quickly dispatched. Time is a problem. Maru jumps in. He's gonna keep Semantic away from the blue save while stealing some damage himself. Maybe this wasn't worth defending here for Semantic. But time is gonna run out. And Reply Totem, with just 9% of Elite, will be locking in this opening set. Nice play there from Reply Totem. I won't say beautiful, because... Well, we did see Semantic and Friends kind of bite back just a little bit. And I think this one's going to be spicy off of that. But so far, it's Reply Totem. One in the pocket. We're going to Hot Zone. We'll see how this next one works out. Because again, like I said, off of that, I'm in for something spicy. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, it, it, it was a little bit too slow for my taste, you know? Like... I understand that both teams don't want to give anything away and I think range wise as well there was just no real outrange across the board they all had the similar range which means they were all just sitting around their max range if you have someone that has a little bit more range you can try to aggress and push them forwards and then your opponents might want to push forwards to try to make up for that uh, uh, range disadvantage so it, it was a very interesting matchup to that extent where both teams were just really not giving anything away and the problem as well that was very consistent in this set for food is that even when they had mid control, 
And looking at the stats, they have the advantage in both damage, uh, or very close damage-wise, but definitely kills is in their favor. But they were not able to convert. They had control of the mid, control of the bush, which is incredibly valuable, but they had nobody that could connect on that safe unless they really overextended and end up going down. And that was a problem. Absolutely. You know, and, and that's just, I think, a problem with... Mm, it's tough to say if that's a problem with the draft or a feature of the draft, because you can sit there and say, well, we just pick these high option, uh, high aggression brawlers. We just have to get the team wipe in order to, to survive. But a choice, nonetheless. We don't have a choice. We're going to hot zone. Max is the first pick. And taking a look at the bands, Meg's gone. Amber is not, but Stu certainly is. So the Griff selection on the other side, waiting for a second. I love Griff. I mean, get some tank prevention with a high damage and his super. Some more breaks, again, good for against tanks, good for against strollers. And passive healing, too. I mean, incredibly versatile and still somewhat specialized. So I like the idea of the Griff here as an early pick. Drage on the bam, going to be bringing in that healing station that we all know and love. Some bulkiness as well to both defend and aggress at times. I like the draft from Fruit so far, but Reply Totem, I mean, the Max is a trap. We know how good Joker is on it, and they'll bring in the B to join it up as well. Also try to prevent a potential final tank pick from Fruit Esports, but B is versatile now that it will do just fine. Uh, against any other brawlers and against a P Pam notably it can be quite a problem as well uh, Chunky brawlers lots of damage from B that can be very very strong and Barley is gonna be their final pick So I like that they go for a troll Despite the wall breaks available for for free esports. I, I believe that with uh, some good positioning and, and um, Also just in general, you know playing around the, the unbreakable walls is gonna be very valuable and the thing with Griff is unlike a Brock Yes, he does have free destruction. He does not have um, unlimited destruction. He doesn't have a super that can break open the wall. So once his gadgets are gone, that's as much as the map is going to be opened up. I also like Barley here for the for the consistent sort of like uh, ground mechanic damage, right? Like just tossing it there on the point, creates some some no no zones for sure. So our last selection here. And ultimately, I like I like Griff as well. That said, I, I think Reply Totem's draft is a little bit more well-rounded, so to speak. You've got kind of players to deal with everything. I'm really looking at Maru on this B, Teddy. I like this B pick a lot. I, I definitely like it too. I mean, it's a way to counter the Griff just a little bit because Griff will be opening up walls and the B wants the walls to be open, right? So mm -hmm. it, it is a part of the strategy here also open up on the right hand side and that's an open lane that Maori should be more than happy to play it an early kill here for apply lets them step onto their point well pretty early 27 percent and counting up is maru and maury just chilling joker on the other hand <laughs> bobbing dodging ducking weaving just kind of playing 2v1 and doing fine Honestly, Foot, they have 7%. That's what they've been able to get on this left-hand side. Obviously not going to find anything on the right, but Joker dealing with two successfully. What a great play so far. And the right one claimed here by Blue. And Joker continuing to just deal. Right now, things are looking pretty good for Reply Totem. But they only captured a little bit on the enemy side, so... For the esports, they're not as far behind as it looks. It's just they're a little bit behind on, on their wow. own zone. But yeah, that kill is going to be very detrimental to slow as well and to semantic. I mean, Maori is just connecting every shot. And now suddenly they're, they're not just a little bit behind. They're, they're incredibly behind. This is going to be very complicated. <laughs> <laughs> Joker falls down, but certainly has done his due diligence this time. Just a matter of moments as we count up to a hundred and reply totem.
going 100 here. Fantastic job. The the Eminem boys dealt with the right side just excellently and said, hey, Joker, it's going to be tough, but just tread water. Don't die too much. And Joker said, fine, I'll win the 1v2. What a great situation you can be in when you can rely on things like that. Go next. Do it again. Here's my little problem with the Griff is that even though, it, 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 I mean, I love the wall breaks, he's breaking open the map on the side of the bee, which the bee is so happy about, and the barley, I mean, look at that, he already used two gadgets, semantic, to break open walls, and wh what does yeah. he break up next? This wall where he's now, the wall on the left, either way, Maru has strong positioning, and the wall breaks are just not enough to really be a problem for Maru, so I don't know if, if this approach is right from Fruity Esports, but it's looking better than the previous game so far, so I'll give them credit for now. Absolutely. Food have been able to kind of push up on this right side. Mari went to help Joker earlier this game than he did last time around, and that allowed Foot to find some kills and some time on the point. You can see that left one claimed by Drage. Fantastic job there, as Pam was able to step up this time around, dealing with the left-hand side Joker. But at 61 to 54, Foot with the lead, Semantic finds another kill. But they've got to make the play here on the right side of Semantic staying on the point here for Foot. And Reply Totem on the other side, trying to get their marks on the left side point. But Joker having a much, well, cast a curse. I was going to say he's having a much harder time, but he's just going to work. Yeah, uh, important pick up because now suddenly Reply Totem have pacing. They have the timing on their side as they are catching up percentage-wise. Mari is low HP though, and there's that white flank from Opic all the way back in enemy lines. And he's still standing. He got a double kill from that, I believe. And this should still be a game for Food Esports. Because they have that lead, so they can just focus on attacking instead of defending. Drage is gonna survive. So it's semantic anyways. That's gonna be the game locked in for Food Esports. And again, it's a 1-1 situation uh, per game required to set both teams apart. But in the previous set, it went to reply totem. This time around, foot, they can't afford to give this one away. Not at all. Want to stop this one in its tracks. Foot needs to get this to tie up the big picture. Take set number two. Next one's gem grab. And a foot win this one, we're at least going to see a bounty after that. Joker starting things off well for Reply Totem, though. And it's 40% and counting. Reply Totem on the right side and the left. Did big plays on his rage. Yeah, big stuff. Oh, the... I mean, he, he's just melting them apart. Does he get the tree piece? No, not quite, not quite. He's falling back. Okay, never mind, never mind, never mind. I take it back, but still, incredible play <laughs> for him. And I'm just, I, I had to interrupt you. He's just playing way too well in the B so far this early game, and the percentages are reflecting just now. I mean, it, it's it's a beautiful shift. Last time around, it was Joker, because Mori didn't need to. Game number two, he steps up a little early and food punishes him. Now... Mori shows up exactly on time. 73% for him and his squad. Ope going to step up and be put down. Left side being focused on by Reply Totem. Here comes the B. See you later. Mori on top as Reply Totem are looking for number two. Maru finds Ope. Semantic pushing forwards through the Barley Super. Still gets a lot of value. It's only Mari left alive. Can he lock it in? And he will do exactly that. Reply Totem. For the second set in a row, they win it 2-1. It's close when you look at the set scoreline, but they still win some dominant games in it too. And Reply Totem are up by two sets now. And this is going to be a challenge here for Foot. No room for mistakes whatsoever, and Semantic is focused. Yeah, uh, I, I love these after game shots of, of Semantic. We constantly, constantly get him kind of jawing on, talking, uh, and, and communicating to the squad. Here, clearly he's listening. He's not the only play, player on his team that's got stuff to say for sure. And I think that's the mark of a good team, like Reply Totem does here. Joker. 
absolutely the guy in, in game number one. Maru and Mari give him a 1v2, and he winds up winning it. Mari comes through towards the end and winds up putting a dot on everything, right? Then game number two, all right, things go a little bit awry here for Apply Totem as Sim's able to step up and do the do the work. But then game number three, it's not all Joker. Mori steps up and he becomes the guy in game number three here, Teddy. You got to be able to, to share that spotlight if you want to be a team, operative word team, in the winning position. I, that's the big difference, you, you know, b b between this team and any other team that Joker's been on. It's hard to share the spotlight when you have Joker on your team because he's sure. considered as the, the greatest EMEA player. But Maru and Mari consistently manage to pick up the slack whenever Joker just can't because people will try to counter Joker heavily, you know, so he's not allowed to have the room that he desires. Uh, and right now, Maru and Mari absolutely proving that. I mean, yeah, you described it earlier. I think Mar Maru is the. Uh, it's not, not Maru, sorry, Barley, but Maru was playing him as consistent ground damage or something along those lines. Yeah. And that's exactly what we saw there, getting tons of damage across the board. And just that consistent DPS was just such a threat. And there was not enough wall break for the wall break to be significant enough to deal with him. So he was really able to shine throughout the series. And when. Maori started popping off on the B. It, it was just over. Nothing they could do on the setup for him. Shake the etch a sketch and head to set three. B is selected on reply totems again. And we've got Spike here along for the ride. Stu, the first selection overall for Foot. And as far as the bands are concerned, worth noting no Meg ban, no Amber ban either. And there's RT selected. One more pick to go for Foot. All right. I mean, so far, I think I prefer to draft on the side of Foot. Oh, Nita. I mean, ho, ho, ho. I, I love it. Everyone knows I don't like Nita very much, but. Everyone knows I like Nita a lot. There's been a recent buff. So kind of like that you know i want to i want to see yeah. okay, i still don't like nita but i want to see the new gear at play on nita because the last time we saw I'm, nita we didn't see many if any bears so it didn't really you know we couldn't really see the the buff that the pets get from the gear the 20 percent extra damage uh so yeah i i, I want to see it now yeah i'm curious to see and, and i like the fact that we're seeing nita selected more and more as Maori is going to go into the squeak direction. I am a big fan of area denial. That's kind of what I was getting at with Barley in the in the last one. Squeak, that's literally all he does. Combine that with uh, maybe we see some Honey Molasses out of Joker. So I like the composition here from Reply Totem. It looks like they're going to try to deny this mid area. Maru running the spike as well with some some hard to dodge nonsense here. But focusing back on the uh, on the Nita here, you know, we've we've seen teams try to make it work. 20% extra damage on the bear might be what it takes to bring this this character back into the meta. I say back. Into the meta. <laughs> I'm yeah. Eager. I mean, Nita's had her moments and I I don't think it's a terrible pick everywhere. Right? To me, it's just like more of a heist sort of role. As in the current meta of heist doesn't sure. really work for her because, you know, long range maps are not her, her specialty. I don't think it's terrible. And I, I've tried it out and I, I've also faced incredible Nidas before that just run you down and they like they hit their shots around the corner so nicely that you can't do anything. You can't hit them and they hit you every, every single time. So, um,. I don't know. I mean, right now, Drage is making it work. Should be able to pick up Murray. Never mind. He's going to get slowed and nice. full. But it's creating space. And in the meantime, Ope is picking up gems. Foodie Esports is ahead by four. So things are not looking too bad here for Foodie Esports early yeah. on. Although Ope is low. And now suddenly, well, that creates enough space for Reply Totem to <laughs> immediately cash out. Yeah. Drage playing for me right now with the Shiba Nita skin. That's, that's, that's one of my old school favorites. <laughs> Drake was able to deal with the 2v1 on the left side, and that allowed his team to amass a six gem lead. I think it was a four gem lead at most. Now, seven in total. 
But after they took care and pushed up this left-hand side, they being reply totem, instantly fought back into it. We're tied at seven apiece right now. Mid position given to Foot. But again, Maori has this area of denial. Maru has Joker next to it. And those are dangerous things to have in your pocket. As reply totem stays competitive. Nine to eight with the eighth gem. No, this is going to be 10. Ope picks it up, and it's countdown for the red team. Yeah, he needs that extra gem as well. The bear is going to help create some space to pick it up. And now suddenly, the play totem, they need a kill onto Ope if they want to interrupt this countdown. But there's no space, there's no HP, there's no one alive for reply totem to do so. And for the esports, for the first time, they have the lead in a set. So right now, Semantic is talking to his teammates about creating space for him. Uh, <laughs> I didn't really see much out of Stu. We saw that push up in the left lane once, Teddy. I I, I think Stu is such a, a dynamic brawler when he's able to really play. But I just, I, I saw Stu just kind of stepped over last time around and Semantic needs to be better this game. Sorry to put it so bluntly. Yeah, I, I, I love Stu, but I feel like the meta for him in gem grab has typically just been to play as a gem carrier. And right now, there's just no shot that you're going to be seeing the RT on lane. So he can't even switch to that position. It's, it's been kind of a reoccurring team, especially in the MEA, where you play two potential gem carriers. So if you get, you know, uh, countered in the okay. mid, you can at least still change lanes and have a decent mid and not get completely destroyed over there. Uh, problem is, RT is unplayable on, on lane, so that's just simply not an option right now. And uh, it's uh, been a bit complicated now that Semantic is really struggling. He's trying every single lane, he's going everywhere, but nothing is really mm. working. He'll find Maori, but at the expense yeah. of his own life, Drain just falling on the right side, not necessarily in a much better matchup himself right now, and the gems are heavily in favor of Reply Totem. Food kind of recognize what was happening with respect to this left lane i think semantic doing a much better job this time around but it's funny last time he got smoked and his team did well this time he's performing but his team kept at bay 10 gems on joker and food unable to close the gap the slow should all but confirm it joker dodging one more shot and that's game we'll go to a game three here so Semantic giving some more room, but his team, and I guess him, he's part of that for sure, unable to really kind of pick up the rest of the slack. What was the difference maker in game number one that allowed that allowed this team to kind of step forward and take it? I, I, I'm kind of wondering if maybe Food adjusted too quickly on the lanes because Reply Totem sure. won the right lane in, in the beginning, which is kind of to be expected. Like Spike does quite well against Stu. Uh, just because the cactus tanks a uh, full on shot and you one shot him or two shot him up close. Um, the thing is, he changed lanes immediately and then he never really was able to find his position. And when you're switching lanes, you're creating a big weakness for your team, right? Because you're spending time moving around the map where you're not really participating in the fights nearly as much. You're giving away space. And that adjustment, uh, I think, costed them a lot of space. But it's tough goal because if you don't adjust, you probably lose too. Uh, you know, so I, I don't really know. Uh, problem now for Foot is they're facing a match point, and so far every set has been a two-one, but a two-one in favor of Reply Totem. Joker and Maori doing a good job of keeping Semantic at bay yet again. Okay, does take down Joker, who has been a big heavy lifter in this set, and Sim is back. Hunting Maori, who is less than half HP. The heals are good. The gems fall down. Drage, trouble to get in here. Semantic half HP as well. Dashes away. Still five gems on the ground. So a big swing for Reply Totem. Now that they took down Semantic. Yeah, I think they, were, again, they were respectful. They were too respectful on the side of Foot Esports. They could have ran away with those gems. They were scared that Totem would surprise them. But now it's only one gem away for Food Esports from locking in a countdown, and that's one where Reply Totem, they're gonna need some kills to interrupt it. Either the Stu or the Nita will do, but they need someone to go down. 
Ope is going to fall. Drage almost certainly. Semantic finds the dodge. Two seconds. It's not enough to kill Drage. Food take the game and the set. And yeah, Sim, we're all doing that, man. <laughs> Literally 200 HP for Drage. That's as close as you can get. That was so close. This too was probably about to get tagged up as well. Things could have gone terribly wrong. All they needed was another second or two, but they just didn't quite have that. And now put esports on the scoreboard. A set behind still, but a set closer to a comeback. Shooting star gonna be up next, and it's still a very tough call. I feel like foot have their chances. I think. Applied to them kind of true this one a little bit. I mean, they overextended with Joker. Losing their jam carrier is a problem. And that would probably have been prevented a bit of grief, perhaps. But they probably just didn't expect uh, Food Esports to be able to capitalize so well. So, well well done by Food Esports. But I do feel like Reply to them kind of fun fumbled in this one just a little bit. A little bit. I won't, uh, I won't hate on this. Look at this play by Drage here. Drage just counting the seconds for that spike super and barely getting out of there. Nice plays, Drage. Didn't need to do damage. Just had to stay alive, man. Objective minded as always. So nice look at the numbers there. Man, look look, look at the damage this reply totem team does. The objective. And not the objective. Is That's what, what counts. And so far today has been all about that converting, getting not just the kills, but the kills that provide you value, the kills that let you and enable you to complete the objective. And in gem grab, obviously, it's going to be all about those countdowns and those gems. Bounty, as we've said, literally in the previous match, is going to be the complete opposite. The kills are the objective. Yep. So it's quite a different approach and even the first pick again we're seeing a lot of even more than i would have expected i mean eve is in a pretty good place don't get me wrong but we're seeing her a lot so far and honestly i, I mean i don't mind it i like eve so you know i feel like we got nita that you love and i hate and yeah. got eve that i love and you hate yeah so everybody's unhappy together <laughs> <laughs> look at semantic here man <laughs> Bro is going through it right now as he's trying to keep his team here in the competition. What what I love about Semantic is that, like, listen, you know, sometimes these players get on stage and they put on a show. Semantic is not performing for anyone. This is just who this man is. He bleeds Brawl, and he is here to just... Leave it all on the field. We see everything on this guy's face. It's a lot of fun to watch him play. And uh, in this case, watch him not play. <laughs> He's very clearly stressed out. Team trying to figure out which selection to go with here. Big picture, Meg is banned out. So definitely something to to bring up note. We'll let you know what Ope picked in a second. Pick Option Bell. over to reply to him. Oh, it's going to be Bell. Confirm. Yeah, it is all right. Bell. It's, yeah. Uh, you might think it's Leon right now. But it is <laughs> long range and long range. I think that yes, Gus and Bell, peanut butter, jelly. Next, uh, Eve and Nani, waiting for a last pick. I like the Nani. It's gonna deter any Piper ideas as well because the return to center is just too strong against Piper. Piper yep. deals too much damage, and it's gonna get her to half HP if she connects that shot. The poke damage as well from Nani is ridiculous at such a long range. We'll have to see what the final pick is for Reply Totem. Another Leon, by the looks of it. <laughs> we'll just wait for production to confirm it to us. And it is great, apparently, which is, again, an interesting approach. I mean, yeah. every time I've seen Grey lately, it just didn't look that strong, but then again, I mean, I'm happy to be proven wrong. So, looking forward to seeing Gray. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 a long range brawler, right? So you have you have that, and the the cane gadget is uh, you know I call it the baby gene, right? 
I know, theoretically, at a high level, that's all the displacement you should need to confirm the kill. Here, Joker uses it just to get rid of the Olipop real quick, as this one actually is a Leon. <laughs> we, we, we do have the Leon at last. <laughs> we do. Actually right. selected. Big brain. Mari, big range. Two to one, blue star on the side of Foot. Yeah, that would have been a perfect star for Foot getting that blue star and everyone surviving, but they ever so barely lost Rage on the left, and oh, the pull doesn't quite get him true. If he was brought behind the wall, that would have been a bit of a disaster. That would give away two stars, including the blue one. But for now, a single kill would be able to turn things around. Potentially a trade would too. And the Ooh. TP from Joker is incredibly aggressive and actually going to be giving away the, the lead as the peep is not able to find a connection and Opie finds another one. I like this play in every other mode, but bounty, really. You know, the, the surprise. As aggressive as I would have expected from Joker. But like you said, now reply totem on the back foot, 4-2-6 with Foot on the good side. Now tied, six all. Blue Star still on the side of Foot. As it lies on Ope, who's sneaking down this left side lane. Maori and Maru, both aggressed on by not just Ope, but Semantic as well. Nice combination by Foot there. Still a two-star lead for Red Team. It's close, TP in from Joker using his old one, so if he connects a couple shots, he could still place another one. Seven seconds left, Maru is just desperately trying to heal up, but gets reset. A kill from Maori, but it's not gonna be enough. Still needs some- Oh, the TPN. teleport! It's a bit of a messy final fight, but it is one that Foot will win. And now they're a game away from evening things down and pushing this game all the way to a fifth. We also see that, that other piece of the gray puzzle. Sure, you know, I, I think we we see some of the usage, especially, I liked how we saw the lollipop destroyed off the bat, right? Uh, because the cane goes through the wall. But also that last second bounty teleport in, get the kill, haha, -ha, we have the lead now. That's cheeky. And that's gonna certainly be weighing in my mind as we uh, hit the later stages of this game and see how close that lead is. Well, it's looking good so far for Foot. First kill and Blue Star locked in again. Not a gadget from Joker, just desperately hoping that he gets pulled through that unbreakable wall and effectively would be stuck there in a free kill. Ope knows better. Another gadget is pumped, and actually the final one from Joker. Ope does get tagged nice. heavily, and the TP. Is there at last Joker trying to TP away, but doesn't quite get the chance. Messes up his, his movement a little bit, and that's going to cost him his life. And another couple stars going the way of foot six now in their favor as the peep is heading upwards. Finds a connection on Ope. It's not enough for a kill. And instead, again, Joker goes down. And so far, the great is getting absolutely demolished this game. 40 seconds to go. A 10-star lead for foot. So before I talked about Joker kind of making this last second jump forward, not going to be on the table this time around, as it's 14 stars in the pocket for Foot. And they are one away from bringing us to another set five. We might go we 220 stars. I mean, it just might. The new, the new win con here, Foot, can they get to 20 before we count down to zero? But the way Reply Totem is, they don't want to be the first team to fall to that one. And so, nice and simple, Foot win it the old style. A lot to a little. You didn't play, Meg. What are you, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Semantic giving all the love to the people out in chat, as per usual. All right, sometimes he puts on a show. And there it is. I'm, I'm here to watch it. But hey, man, listen, our second set five in a row, Teddy. And we are also on the cusp of our second reverse sweep. Potentially, yeah. You're absolutely right. I kind of missed on it, but the, well, yeah, you're right. Set five coming up and 
the first two went the way of Reply Totem. The next two, the way of Foodie Esports. Is it gonna be two reverse sweeps in a row? Or is Reply Totem gonna be able to prevail and close it out, prevent disaster here? Both teams, as we set things up earlier, they really want this one because now that Zeta is out, this is their chance to catch up in points, you know, make it to semis, make it to grand finals. Every point matters and every point is a chance to catch up. But so far, both teams are on equal grounds as we move to a fifth yeah. and final set to decide who makes it to semis. Well, listen, Drage is very polite. He's a polite guy. And I think it would be rude of him to get to set five and not bring home the victory, right? That would just be rude. So I think, I think Drage and the boys are going to bring this one home. They have to. It would be uncouth if not. I agree. I agree. Gold arm gulch. Everything is possible. Everything is really possible at this point. I've I've seen both happen way too many times. I have thought. I've seen <laughs> both happens way too many times. I am scared for both sides at this point because it's hard to say goodbye to a team of this caliber in the first round because we're we're saying goodbye to one team no matter what here and they're both pretty much you know monthly final champion caliber facts well the bands are out and the picks are trickling in sprout will be the first choice overall here for foot like this always like sprout full stop but especially in knockout and some of the spicier picks are available but i like the tried and true gus I like it too. The shield is versatile. It enables you to push, it enables you to help your teammates or yourself survive in tricky situations. Or sometimes just get away with situations where you really shouldn't be getting away. <laughs> now we're gonna go for the Pam and get those heels in. Keep the team alive. Option over to Foot here. I am very, this is the most excited I've been in a draft in a while, because I think Food and Reply Totem are evenly matched on the field. We see moments where Joker just looks better than everybody, but Food kind of like combines and gets it done. And both teams have had their big standout moments. Both teams have kind of stutter stepped once or twice. I don't think anybody's completely dropped the ball, Teddy. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I like how it is fine. I don't know if it's necessarily going to be the strongest one against those picks, but B is going to be a threat, as we've seen earlier, was in the hands of Reply Totem. Food Esports bringing it to the table now as we head towards our final pick of the quarterfinals. Let's Reply Totem in the driver's seat. Going to be calculating what is the best way to counter as many brawlers as possible get that win condition in seems like Carl is going to be their answer and I like it I like it quite a bit the mute doesn't affect his super I mean once he's already spinning he can't get muted yep. and it's not going to cancel it it's good against Pro. it's pretty good against B I, I, I like it across the board I think it was a, a good option and therefore my draft is going to be slightly siding with Reply Totem but I feel like for the esports they can really shine with the Sprout as well. If you find some nice angles where he's untouchable and gets a lot of value on his opponents, I could see it go either way at this point. So, are there... Well... Maybe we'll <laughs> touch on it later. A number of the meta brawlers, not really selected here. B getting poked out by Maru from the right side. And Drage going to try and shift over on the bottom to deal with Joker's Carl. But Drage is honestly dealing a little bit more damage, and Maori trying to shade over to help. But much ado about nothing just yet. A lot of close, but no kills. Eric does have the shield. If Joker would get a super, maybe that would be an idea to go hyper aggressive trying to take down semantic and maybe another player with him 
Shield is popped now, but there's no super for Joker. He popped his dash as well. And actually, Drage trying to kill onto Maru on the bottom of the map. Mute onto Maru. It's a 1v3, and Foodie Esports are going to be picking up the first round. Nicely played. Another explosive, just kind of strong teamwork from Foot. Honestly, I have no notes on that one. Let's see how the second round goes. Lowry will caught out here. Look Beautiful that. Sprout Super. And yeah. that'll lead to a kill. That, that separates him from the pack. It's hurting him towards uh, his opponents. And I mean, that was just really well done. I like yep. it a lot. This is going to be pretty much certain to be a first game for Furis, but that, that would mean match point. Yeah, for sure. I, I think that's basically why we see the Sprout selected. The three on two being played carefully here by Foot. And honestly, I like it. I think a lot of teams could just kind of play reckless and go on in, but Reply Totem, Joker and Maru, still very, very strong. So Foot, play it safe, wait for the gas and do it the right way. Joker goes in, but he's shoved out. And Maru gonna feel the same round two Game one to Foot. Match point. One game away from a full on reverse sweep. The second one in a row here in the quarterfinals. But they're only halfway there. At least halfway there for, for this set, right? They won the two previous set. Yeah. Which was the biggest and longest part of the journey. But they are halfway there for this set. Or Platotum still got something to say about it. Or do they? Let's find out in this game. Drage chasing down low. Maori has to trade out. Joker barely alive, but Maori steps up and gets put down. Pam has not made much noise this game, and that, I mean, she stepped up to protect Joker, but you need to stay alive. Nice answer. Two yeah. on two. Maru brings it back with an unbelievably clutch kill at this point. Because it was looking like Foot Esports. We're going to pick up yet another round. Do you need to be careful instead of Reply Totem? Because there's still that super from Drage that's available. A Spartan Wall as well that was recycled with his gadget. And they're definitely not out of trouble for Reply Totem. But at least they stand a fighting chance. Mara lands a shot, but finds one as well. Meanwhile, right side in trouble. Drage versus Joker. It's Joker, but Maru, one more shot. Semantic has the advantage, <laughs> but walks into the gas. Tough one, tough one. Could Sim have won that? I mean, I don't know. It was close. I mean, if he connected a shot, it was over, you know? Right. He needed to land it. He didn't. The jukes were on point, and... He took a gamble, not one that paid off. Joker might die there, though. Never mind, he gets to pick up, and that's huge. He is slowed that's down, great. but he's re ready to dash away if need be. And it's a three on two, and potentially a double match point coming up with Joker looking to single handedly close things out. And he will do just that. Maori gets the kill in the end, but it was really Joker with the plays here to lock in this double match point. It's one game which decides which of these Titans are out of the April monthly finals and which ones are moving forward to the semifinals. Usually I'm the guy that sits up here and reminds you to keep your excitement at bay that despite the MVP performance, it was a team game. Nah, Joker just won that one, dude. <laughs> Sometimes... He, he did. Yeah. Sometimes you just do it. Food going to be just as aggressive as Joker was last time around, though. And it's a three on two as Gus eats it. Joker and Maori left to speak. Maori taking a ton of damage from Drage's Otis. A rough start for Apply Totem. Foot Esports looking fierce. Joker will go down, so will Maori. And I completely agree with your statement earlier. Uh, the Pam is incredibly quiet and Definitely the weakest pick on the board, just not really able to find much of any value. 
probably a bit of a yeah. blunder in the drafting, in my opinion. But I'm not the biggest Pam fan, in all fairness. But now for I the like esports, Pam. they're only a run away. And this is a scary prospect for a play total. Pam seems to come up in the defensive side for Joker. But theoretically, you don't want that to happen because Joker's aggressively getting kills like that one. It's a three on two. Reply Totem. Trying to win the round to bring us to a round three, the furthest we could possibly go in the set. Does Sprout have super? I can't, I can't, I can't see. No. He'll get it by the end game. I'm pretty sure he just needs a tag. Yeah, it's quick. And now he can recycle it as well with his gadget. I don't think he's necessarily the biggest problem. To me, the biggest problem is the B because the Pam is going to be able to deal with, um, you know, the damage from the Sprout. But yeah, I mean, now it's a two on one. It's 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 over. That's it for the esports. They are going to the semifinals after full on reverse sweep to Cute. join their brothers from SK with their own reverse sweep totem are out the two usual favorites to be winning monthly finals that Zayna and Totem, they both go out round one. In, in Incredible, bro. Like, this is insane. I mean, so the number one team, the number two team, they're both gone. We have a come from behind victory in semifinal number three, a come from behind victory in semifinal number four. Semantic is gonna play against this SK team. I'm running out of room in the notebook. Everything cool is happening. Not that I root against Reply Toad or Zayn. I love those boys. But and listen. Guess what? Guess what? 92. The, the, the third team. Whoa, 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 whoa. The third team in the leaderboards is ANR. They're not even qualified for this monthly final. <laughs> That's how you shake up competition. Welcome to EMEA. That's how you shake it up. For real. For real. <laughs> so, the whole storyline about. SK Gaming being way far out of it and kind of needing all of the stars aligned. Well, they can plan it out now because all of a sudden the top, the league leaders are not showing up. So your points are that much more valuable because you're not moving up at the same rate as the league leaders. Huge play big picture for teams like SK Gaming. Huge, huge stuff for Foot as well because they are on these leaders. They, they are very excited. And then, like I said, semifinals has Semantic versus his old SK Gaming banner. The two teams that we know are going to do well aren't here anymore in Reply and Zeta. This is the month to be watching EMEA. You guys at home, go ahead and vote in Semantic as your most valuable player. You know, I don't disagree. You know you what know most the of the audience changes? voted for uh, as, as well, I thought? I think you were uh, coming to it earlier, but most of the audience, yep. in fact, 91% voted Reply Totem. That's the safe bet. It is. I mean, we went, we all went Reply Totem 2 on the casting desk, didn't we? <laughs> I, you know, I did. And it was one of those, so like, because I put SK down and everybody was like, oh, I thought's crazy. And I was like, no, I believe. But I don't know if I could, if I could, I, I could do it twice. So obviously reply. Oh, you get one crazy pick a month, you know, like that's how I feel about it. Both of our crazy picks came on through. We've got two semifinals that you just have to. To watch SK Gaming versus Foot on the bottom side, and we've got a whole match before that. We'll see him soon after the jump. Ragazzi, oggi andremo a rispondere a delle domande della Brawl Stars Championship. Ok, partiamo. Quali sono i 16 team che hanno giocato le finali mondiali del 2021? Noi totem, stamina, tribe. Oh no, 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 partiamo in ordine. Allora, partiamo in ordine regione per regione, no? Ma che Dici, dall'Europa, noi, Totem, SK, Tribe, Bunker, dai. Tribe, Bunker, io mi ricordo. Quante... Erano... Yes. Sai, Mario, non lo sai. Era... Milan. <ride> ah no, è vero. C'era in Clash di chi? In NA, Stamina, Tribe. Tribe e Stamina, in NA. Perfetto. Sud America, Inz, Aphelion. Aphelion. Ma Poi. io quell'anno non ne sapevo uno, non ne sapevo. 
Lo so. Allora, tre team cinesi. Z. Tig. Nova. Ah. Dai, lo so, non mi viene in mente. E... Ma lo so, che cazzo sono? Io non lo so, lo ammetto. Trick. Ehi, toc, trick of Cina. Vai, top. prossimo. Quanto siamo? Top top. 3. 9 più 3? 10. 12. <ride> Scherzo. Allora, gli Z. Z. Queen Knight. Bravissimo, bravissimo. Quanti ne mancano? Quindi ci mancano 4. Eka, Navi. Manca una. Ah, Team Flash, bravo. Team Flash. Bravo. Quanto ha vinto di Price Pool Z0 dalle finali mondiali del 2022? 100.000. Aspetta, 400.000. Esatto. In quale paese furono giocate le finali mondiali del 2019? 2019? In Corea. In Corea del Sud. Sono un animale. Dove ha Bhutan? Bhutan de che? Ma Bhutan, dice... Bhutan, Bhutan. Perché fai sta roba ogni volta? Ti giuro, tu passi più ore su Google Maps che su Whatsapp. Busan, Busan! Quanti brawler ci sono attualmente nel gioco? 64. Che c***o ah, 66. 66. Eh. Quali erano le regioni della BSC nel 2021? Enea, Eka, Enea, Sud America, Asia, no, Asia sarebbe Eka, Enea, Enea, Eka, Mainland Cina, Stesia, Sesa, Sesa e Anz, Australia, New Zealand. Sì, dai, bravo, grande. Sì. Quante regioni ci sono nella BSC quest'anno e quanti spot dà ognuna di loro per le finali mondiali? Enea, la faccio fare. Su questo è mia allora, 3, punto. In Europa 3, Nord America East, una, Nord America West, una, e siamo a 5. Sud America West, una, Sud America Ovest, 0. East Asia, una, Cina, 1. Bravissimo. Ah, e eh, non mi ricordo il nome, quella di Asia. Non lo so. Quando ha giocato Totem la sua prima finale mensile? Io lo so. Non lo so Settembre 2021 Sbagliato Agosto mm. È per forza Ottobre 2021 Bravo eh. Al ventesimo tentativo SK Forse Ma non mi Quante finali mensili Ha vinto Totem E quando? Due L'anno scorso A luglio E agosto 2022 Fate la vostra prediction Su dove saranno Le finali mondiali Del 2023 In America Esattamente a Stata. Non sarà in America. No, ti Troppi problemi di... No, ma di... No, no, no. In Marocco, ragazzi. Uh. Quali sono i player che hanno vinto i mondiali? Ben, Serulian e... Nova. Nova. Response. No? Sì. Come Response, si chiama? Team... Non so. PSG Esports erano. Easy. Response. Coup Days. Relay, poi l'anno dopo? L'anno dopo, 2021, IZ con Sweet Tampo, Tensai, Aciapi e Mameshi. Poi l'anno scorso, 2022, con IZ0, Aciapi, Tensai e Kuru. Quali sono state le semifinali nei mondiali del 2022? Stamina contro Z1 e Z0 contro Tribe. Come vi siete piazzati nelle finali mensili del 2022? Prima Montley non fatta, top 8 di nuovo, per No. Perfetto. Ah, ha vinto contro Team Case, top 4. Maggio, top 8. Poi luglio e agosto, primi e primi. E settembre, semifinale, top 4. Poi, primo turno. Sì, sì. Top 8, verso l'ultima Montley così. Turn big dreams into action.
Without further ado, let's get rolling! Dreams in action! Welcome back, Brawl Nation. We're in the semifinals of our monthly final here for EMEA. I'm from NA, but he's not. What's good, Ark? It's going well. I had a fantastic break. I uh, tied up the house, texted my friends. I put my feet up and had a lovely lunch. It was a, a really nicely drawn out semifinals, uh, quarterfinals <laughs> stages for me. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I mean, listen, let's take a look at the bracket because we didn't get enough <laughs> of it. Jokes aside, man, I don't even care how long it took. The bottom side of the bracket, watching Zeta Division, the number one team in the region, fall down to SK Gaming in a reverse sweep. P.S. SK isn't even on the leaderboard. They're number 10. I expect to see that different this time around. SK is going up against Foot, who also had a reverse sweep against another top team. So no Zeta and no Reply Totem. If you just saw the semifinals, you might not know what tournament we're in. But we're headed to the top side here, Ark. Navi took down Dogster Lobster in what is considered an upset, as Dogster Lobster also a top team. Navi not so much. And Queso with 3 1 above Fantasy. Well, a little burn there towards Navi after. I, I feel ya. I feel ya. Yeah, it was definitely the lower bracket of the underdog stories, wasn't it, today? But uh, in terms of our predictions, I, I, I'm not feeling great about mine today. I, I think I went with the majority, and sometimes <laughs> that doesn't always work out, does it? Yeah, there it is. Definitely uh, not looking too shiny for me. But nonetheless, we're all on the same page, at least for the semifinals, as far as they're concerned. So uh, regardless as to what happens, we're all going down together on some level, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is... Is, this is where I really kick myself because I I had the guts to put SK and I just didn't have the guts to put food. You know, you're like, this makes sense in my brain. I expect Drage and the guys to get this dub, but everyone's telling me I'm crazy for it, just like the other ones. So only go crazy in one direction is generally a good life piece of advice so i chose the sk direction but let's yeah. shake the etch -a sketch again <laughs> and head into our new matchup reminder folks event.brawlstars.com is the best way to view our, view our championship and here we are in the semifinals of our monthly and navi the team cube mma and angel boy we know this squad and at the end of the day i like to celebrate teams that stick together i think there's something to be said about synergy camaraderie and just knowing your teammates absolutely so i mean this is a squad that let's be fair do thrive off the back of momentum don't they i mean go back in february they didn't escape the quarterfinal stages we didn't see them last march uh, last time in march and uh, they didn't qualify so today navi are making their stand this has been very very clear their quarterfinals matchup today was a strong one uh with some out there drafts that really did cut the mustard been thriving off the back of those meg picks that we've been seeing time and time again so i really hope that in that respect Team Keso have come prepared. Well, it's up to Team Keso to catch up for sure. As they come off of a victory as well. Well, obviously it's a bracket. So clearly they are coming off of a victory to find themselves in the semis. But it's Javi, Blacksy, and Boss. And this team, I've got I, I've I've enjoyed watching what Javi has been able to do. But Ark, you are the EMEA veteran. I, I want your take on this squad. Give me the, the big thesis statement and then what you think about them. Yeah, Javi has always been the glue for me that holds the Team Keso squad together. Uh, such a prominent player. Uh, but Boss as well has been really taking a lot of that limelight. Uh, and Blacksy's obviously come in very recently, welcoming him back into Team Keso and waving goodbye to Alias as Jay. And I don't think Blacksy's had that moment to shine just yet. Again, that questionable draft that we saw in Heist in the quarterfinal stages of the Edgar. Don't want to see any more of that. I'm good. I'm good with leaving Edgar out of the mix. <laughs> but again, we get a map 
and mode that really caters towards those really aggressive in-your-face ideas, those assassination brawlers like Leon and such, then Black Sea is going to have a great time. But for me, Kessu looked a little bit unhinged in the quarterfinals, and that was a little bit of a concern for me. That's why I've gone with Navi for this one, because uh, Navi looked very comfortable, very confident in that respect. So hopefully Team Kessu have had a bit of a time to relax and kind of discuss what went down in the quarterfinals, come back refreshed and you know get it on. Yeah, I went with Na'Vi more, less about Team Queso and honestly, more about Na'Vi. I've just, this squad looked very comfortable. Like you said, with good word, good word choice. Yeah. Because they, they just looked like they were on the, the high on the leader. You know what I mean? They just looked like they've been here before in a way that I didn't expect. And so I'm definitely excited. To, that sandwich looks good. I'm excited <laughs> to see how Na'Vi goes <laughs> on the field. Gem grab. Hard Rock Mine is our first destination. We'll do Hot Potato Heist and Ring of Fire Hot Zone. Brawl Ball and Knockout if we need it. But the P's and B's are in. And Otis is the first pick overall. Yeah, a very interesting start there for Team Kessler. Quite a safe idea. Otis obviously very, very strong still in the current meta. Meg's open. Again, I'm just going to be doing that today. Uh, putting that one out there. But uh, I would imagine probably more of like a mid if you're going to have it. And I think there's probably better mids here actually to be able to consider. But the longevity... I mean, yeah, well, I was about to go down a different lane, line of thought there. Thinking that maybe in, in some way it's not viable. No, I, it absolutely is going to be the first pick yeah. here. But Navi. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the bands are quite nice as well. Surge, the Ruffs, and the Rico as well. On the side of Team Kessler, the Janet, the Jean, and the Ash. Let's see what they want to follow up with. Penny, great for control. And of course, with the uh, the new gears in play of the Epic gear, the uh, the, uh, the the pets are going to have more damage. 20% mm -hmm. more damage that Penny turret. Yeah, I'm not on camera, but I'm just like, why? I mean, I'm glad the Nita Bear gets 20% more damage, right? But the, the Penny Turret, too? <laughs> it extends to healing Otis as well. Needs... Yeah, that's true. Borders, yeah, so Taro have a bit more healing as well. So we might see a bit more variation occurring, but nonetheless, it's definitely... Uh, I would say you're uh, spot on, though. That particular brawl has always been very, very strong. <laughs> Uh, you know, with yeah. a lot of utility, great knockbacks, and to add something more to her kit, it does beg the question, maybe Penny's getting a bit too strong, right? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, I mean, there, there's, a, there's a big conversation about balance, but there's a lot of different doohickeys to move, so we'll see. Anyway, back in here, trust me, I can get lost in the weeds when it comes to design conversation, but we will not! We will look at Max and Carl and the Mute Man. I like this comp. I don't know if I love it just yet. I uh, like the idea that Hard Rock, that Team Queso kind of has a couple of different options as far as Gem Carry is concerned. But I want to see how Na'Vi finishes their draft. Because I really like Megan Penny. It's a great pairing, isn't it? I mean, I'd imagine that Penny would be going on lane side, which would be an interesting place to see her played out. But oh, Stan coming oh, oh. in, and that's a very underrated one. A very underrated one for Hard Rock Mine indeed. I mean, we saw just last month how Reply Totem were able to really turn the tides very, very quickly on Hard Rock Mine with that exact brawler. Um, it, it got a, a slight buff uh, in, in recent, well, recent balance changes. Not the most recent, but the ones prior to that and has now brought Sandy into a much more viable place. So, especially once that Sandstorm goes down, the unpredictability that it provides really does mean that you pretty much have to right. kind of go a bit more further back onto the what was, and go. what was the what was the 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 buff to Sandy a couple of months ago? What was it? Uh, a little bit more damage, I believe. Yeah, just a little smidgen. Okay, word. And it's it's just it's, enough to bring him into the forefront, just a touch more. But ultimately, it's going to yeah. depend a lot on getting that utility down, getting the supers early, and uh, we'll see whether Angel Boy can do just that. Yeah, I've 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 felt for a while that Sandy's been slept on. No pun intended. <laughs> you meant that a little. <laughs> I did it, I swear! A little <laughs> nudge might be all she needs, all he needs. But uh, a little shove is what he'll provide to Javi. Because we're tied at three. Good start. Both sides were ready, but now that Cube comes into the forefront, really starting to get himself dug in deep and healing now as well. That's bad news for Kesso, but Javi does secure the left-hand side lane onto Angel Boy, and that's a... Uh, somewhat of a saving grace in the meanwhile though on the right side mma does the exact same thing and now with super to hand as well going down now short of the turret providing that little bit of extra uh arsenal in the uh, navi kit and you can go a long long way sandstorm as well you know it's, it's all looking very good so far great stop for navi 
Sandstorm does a great job, and the countdown begins, but Boss finds a kill on the right side and is now hunting down Cube. Still in the mech, so has an extra life, so to speak. But the kill on the other side resets everything. Eight gems now as two hit the floor. All right, coming down now as well, and that's going to give something for Javi to think about. He was trying to heal up along the way, and it's going to stay around 3,500 HP. Blacksy just trying Ooh. to heal up himself, but Angel Boy is lurking, and the face shift will not be enough to do it. Two gems in the book of it. Oh, but no, the takedown on Angel Boy will, will reset things. But now level Peggy, eight gems aside, and that was a key takedown there for me on the side of Kesso. Immediate. That low latency response, so important from Team Queso. Boss has been, exactly as his name states, the boss man. Really, really powerful play here from Carl. He's going to go in one more time, this time on Cube. Finds the kill on the left-hand side as well. Make it triple. The team combines and puts everyone down. It's a zillion gems in the pocket for Team Queso. What a play. I mean, that's just turned this entire game on its head, and there's not going to be nearly enough time for anyone to close the gap, surely here, but get a try for it, boss! Might go down, but no! Survives on 344 HP, and Kesso steal it! All in. All in from Team Queso. Navi came through with this real kind of systematic, destructive composition. Meg's going to sit in the middle and, like, try to deal with her, and my teammates will flank. If it does get a little too hairy, here comes Sandy, no problem. P.S. Angel, but... And then Team Queso went, cool. Everyone go. And they just erased all of that progress. New game, though. Might be a little bit different for Navi this time around. First kill goes to Team Queso arc, but we're tied at two. And although Black Sea is in the mid, I'm not sure if he's going to stay there as Cube wins the fight in the right lane. Yeah, that mech survivor ability is just now quite insane, isn't it, to see? But out of mecha form, so he'll have to earn that back. Speed coming in from Black Sea and starts going the aggressive Angel Boy. Very weak, does go down. And meanwhile, Cube is trying to keep Black Sea low in the face shift. Will uh, work out better that time around, but he has fed the mech. And that will allow a bit more support in this left-hand side lane. Big taps onto Javi there, and MMA will finish him off. Five gems to four. And MMA not done on the left side, pushing Black Sea out as well. Man, Navi, head on a swivel as Queso tries to find the flank time and time again. But Navi know about it, and MMA is winning this 1v1 over and over and over again. Boss, boss comes in. Q very low. Oh my word, able to survive the toolbox yet again in the kit of Navi, which I always kind of question. But <laughs> I mean, hey, it works for them, right? So let's just keep going with it and rinse, cycle, and repeat. In the meanwhile, they managed to bring this back under what was a very, very close call there. Nine gems. Blacksy can't contest the mid, leaving Havi all alone to do so. But now the countdown is on. But can Navi hold Ooh. it this time? Man, man, man. Just doing work. Cube holds all 10 gems, and now it's up to the team to just stand in front. Cube takes this one. Navi get game two. I thought Boss had it. He was full HP, went in, and I just felt like he was going to come out with a glory moment, but it wasn't to be. And Navi, as they went into that match with a few smiling pins, they didn't seem deterred as the fact that <laughs> Team Kesso won the first one, did they? And that's the thing that I worry a little bit for Team Kesso here today because Navi just seemed to have that kind of like, iron exterior that's going to be... And another one as well. Um, let's see, though, in the early outsets, who was going to get the upper hand. Keep going very, very aggressively into the mid and does collect two gems for his trouble, but Team Kesso playing the slower and patient game. Bat splatter into the mid from Javi there. We'll just allow... Cube to think twice about how aggressive he was going in, but ooh, out of mecha form almost there as well. So a very aggressive start from Navi. They've got to be a little bit cautious here. They don't get too confident, actually. Navi goes ahead and winds up falling down a little bit. I, yeah, confidence is one thing. I really think that they just fell in the execution here, trying to make this lane swap happen. Cube trying to shift over to the right side and... MMA just kind of walked into it. Queso now looking for the all push as Black Sea makes his way up left lane. But it's a good trade, two on two now. As Team Queso has mid control for all. Big Sweet Dream stun there as well. From Angel Boy, but he will go down nonetheless. And Cube's going to have to try to jig his way around this. The shield won't be nearly enough. And the gems now with MMA. 
not really where they want to be under this scenario, but nonetheless, probably going to be split. Let's see, though. It will mean that he'll have to be a bit more cautious as to how aggressive he is going to be on these left-hand side lanes, but nonetheless, the turret will help out considerably, and two gems in the pocket for Cube. One more sitting there on the right for Angel Boy to pick up. They're split three ways now, but that might actually be okay as long as they can keep banking and keep back Team Kessler from this mid. There could be a countdown coming in soon. I think... I think the spread gems might be an issue. They really want to pl play protect the president with Q being said president. Uh, he's got a big HP pool, and it's been successful up to this point. Obviously knocked out here as Black Sea makes a great flank. Angel Boy can't deal with boss. And the Carl wins not once, but twice. All the gems on the floor. Cube tries to make the play, but he can't. Boss is alive, gets on out, but can't grab all of the gems. And so we're back where we started, except Navi might be even better. They hit 10. That's countdown. 11 from the mid as well. It's going to be a takedown queue with a huge swipe in the left. Takes care there of Javi. It's down to Boss and Blacksy, and Blacksy's incredibly low. Boss going in as well. We'll get the takedown, but is it too little, too late? Two seconds of the clock. Not going to happen. Navi come out on top. Great stuff out of Navi. They clearly got into a situation. Gem Grab has this really fun moment with gem carrying where you have a plan and you have a gem carrier and clearly it was cube from the get-go but because of the game you know happening sometimes you don't always get to line up your gems exactly and they were spread out like you mentioned and navi had to adjust they had to kind of change their strategy they had to get more involved on the aggressive side from other characters and it worked and they're able to find the victory despite things going awry and they wind up with the dub in set one. Nicely done. And we move on to set number two here. Very exciting. I'll be honest, I felt like, you know, I, I need to see it back, but I think that Navi were lucky that Boss didn't escape with more gems than he did actually in that final moment yes. towards that uh, game because <laughs> it looked like he was going to be able to, you know, cash in on all of them for a moment. But, I mean, Navi just drop the ball a little bit towards the end, but we're able to pick themselves up, and that's what's important. That's what gets you the win at the end of the day is perseverance. And they were able to do exactly that. I mean, not to say that Team Kessler didn't make opportunities for themselves, because they absolutely did. They looked actually a lot better than they have done today previously in the quarterfinals, but very little was in it. It's got to be said. This moment here look, as well, look. yeah, Cuba down the... Oh, he, He's got to go. I think if he went a bit deeper, but he had the flying hook, so he could have escaped the situation as he did so anyway. Maybe, just maybe, there was a chance to get just a couple more gems there, but it was very close to cool. Yeah. And he didn't want to outstay his welcome. You know, I think it's funny. I don't think he could have gotten them all. I think he could have gotten one gem, which we saw the countdown come down to it, to one gem would have reset the countdown. The one gem... Coulda, shoulda, woulda. <laughs> Lost the set. Oh, well. These are the margins. At this level of play, man, one gem can make or break the entire set. Tiny increments. Like that. It really is. Yeah. It, crazy, man. We're going to heist now. Well, historically, this has not been Navi's best map going back to 2022. And I distinctly remember questioning the penny pick here when they picked it. Uh, but I think now it's actually really viable. We'll see how they go with it. But so the bands being Max, Nita, and Colette on the side of Team Kesso for Navi, the Ruffs, the Spike, and the Barley. It's definitely a, a great thing to have this map in the rotation, in my opinion. But I do prefer the bands I feel on the side of Team Kesso, which makes me feel like uh, they actually won the coin toss, it seemed like. I, I thought maybe from the bands that they, they didn't, but they're going to go with M, so I think that's a very, very strong pick to have. Certainly can just sure. absolutely tear through the safe. As you get that mid-control, that's what it's going to be about. So Team Kessler are certainly looking for that lane aggression in their follow-up picks. I love the Nia ban here. I think it's really intelligent. Uh, we, we've talked kind of at length about the change to Nita, where the bear's a little bit more powerful thanks to the... But I... But specifically on Heist is where Nita really shines. The bear does a ton of damage to the box, and banning her in other game modes, I'm probably raising my eyebrow. But here in Heist, I think it's a nice, nice look. Daryl is a very bold pick coming in from Navi first time round, and 
a lot of people think that obviously it's, you know, an M's is a good, decent counter to it, but nonetheless, if you get that roll just right and close the gap and exacerbate the gadgets there for the friend zone on the side of the M's, it can be pretty decent, but ultimately their bans kind of say a similar story. Been you banning out the, uh, the spike, picking the Yotas. These are really big brawlers that would take down a Daryl, so they are minimizing the opportunities for Team Kesh to have a response here. A couple of throwers are still available here, but I'm liking the boldness of where Navi are leading with this, but Team Kesho now, again, have got to match that aggressive side lane idea, and against the Daryl, it's going to be a tough one. Yeah, I like Navi's choice here. A lot of times teams... <laughs> Conventional wisdom is that you should kind of respond to picks and 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 this that and oh. third. Uh, Navi's playing their own game. They're like, yo, we're doing the Daryl thing. We know what's up, and we're gonna ban or pick to support it. You know what I mean? I think there's something to be said about jumping in, knowing the cards that you're gonna hold, and just daring the the opposition to deal with it. And with that said, the surge choice, I do like it against a Daryl. It's very, very good, exactly for that same reason. It is, however, slightly risky because you want to get off that slow and sluggish start. You need to start to gain your supers and cycle them effectively, get those stacks in and increase your range along the well. Primo coming in for Kesso, and I, I really do like that. I, I feel like actually Team Kesso managed to find a bit of a balance that I wasn't expecting them to do. It's a very decent draft, actually, now, if they can just start to keep the pressure on, just keep that Primo rolling in, but that's obviously what Navi intends to do as well. So I wonder whether they're going to consider another thrower aside from the Barley. I mean, I think the Barley is the better of the bands for it, but mm -hmm. let's see how they approach this one. If they want to break up in the map, it's, yeah, <laughs> I love it. I wasn't going to say it, but I was leading, wasn't I? Throwers, wall breakers, dynamite coming in, and I do not see that as a troll pick by any means. I mean, if you've been nope. sticking with the BSC for a while now, you realize that dynamite's in a pretty decent place. You've probably been playing a ladder and having consistent problems against dynamite. I mean, this, this, the speed to that kind of brawler, uh, the ability to land your shots with a slower destination now as well, it's a really, really good one. I just wasn't bold enough to say it <laughs> <laughs> that's fair you know i mean that that's that's the fun part about this this job we just look in the rearview mirror all the time so like it's all good dynamite popped up in a cup like once or twice across the bsc region wide but it's usually been like a cheeky pick or some like this just makes a lot of sense uh and it's navi so i'm excited like you know they play off the wall stuff so that's what i'm here for bob Boss on the bottom side, though, immediately going to work. Bring the enemy safe down to 64% from the Primo. Love that uh, confidence displayed there from Cube, just knowing that the mute was going to poison trickle down boss and very, very uh, at ease to leave him to it. But now Harvey and Black have broken through the mid, and that's going to be a tremendous amount of damage. A swift takedown that was needed, and Cube did land the shot just as he had to. In the meanwhile, Angel Boy is getting consecutive wow. taps, and we are definitely getting a bit of a base race here. But now MMA and Q behind this push, and this could well be over for Navi here, as they might be able to skew the damage. They need 9% is left, and a chance to glimmer for Team Kessler to respond. Ton of time left, though. So if Queso can't... If Navi can't get back up the field, Queso can respond. MMA has to choose defense or offense, ultimately chooses the former. Wow. Both of his teammates go down, though, and here comes Primo to deal with Angel Boy as well. So that 9% is a gigantic 9%. Still a minute to go, and Navi have not made any progress. Oh, a bit of a missed jump there from Black Sea, but I mean, Javi was doing amazing work, just juggling his tasks, and the burn down there will be there onto the safe, but it is defended, allowing Angel Boy to start to sneak through. The slope from Javi is big, but is it going to be enough? The shots do land! 212 oh! HP left on the safe! 1%! Team Kiss have got to end this and end this now before MMA rolls in! He's going to roll in, and he's going to get it done! Navi! Man. You know, that got that got a little scary for Navi and their fans. We saw that 9% happen so quickly. And then it took a while to get back in there. I think what we saw was that the the manifestation of that oh no, oh no, oh no feeling, where we watched Navi kind of one by one go in and get killed, go in and go killed, and go in and go killed. Finally, they coalesce, and they make the play as a team. Nice job, kind of. They lost it a little bit, but they brained it back in, and that was important. 
Angel Boy is going to town. I mean, he, he missed the super there, but he's able to cycle them so quickly. Does it even really matter? Uh, and Kesso have got to be able to take him down. You know, he is a problem that they're just not dealing with, with at the moment. There's already so much damage dealt. That the safe's down to almost 50%, and we've barely even started the game. Very troublesome. Game number one, Team Queso said, we'll fight fire with fire and went aggressive. This time around, they pay attention to him, but Angel Boy is able to dodge enough that they don't take him down immediately. So it's 52% left for Team Queso. MMA gets in there to sneeze a little bit, but Navi still have 90% as Queso this time around didn't race against the base. Lexi now going to jump in, but has to be a bit hesitant to do so because there's the stun and it will land. Angel Boy clears up the right hand side lane as well as MMA rolling in and more damage comes down. The early game is not great for Kesso here. Navi know it. They're going on the hunt very, very early on before they can you know, get those surge mobilities in play. But I just worry a lot here. Team Kesso may have left it just a little bit too late to respond here. MMA on the left clears things up. Angel Boy is still alive. Nice. Boss finally gets it. They've got to go on the aggressive now. Team Kesso have got to give Navi something to worry about about honestly if i'm team queso this is a two this is a two on two and boss's job is to simply punch mike angel boy in his first offensive position of the entire set winds up winning it 30 percent left for team kate no never mind it's gone navi win again an amazing Daryl Gadget, the, uh, the recalling rotator there, really packing its punch. And I love the strategy behind that movement there from Navi. It forced the team Kessler to have to make the decision. Do you jump with the surge onto the Dynamite or do you jump onto the Daryl? Because either one of them is going to be able to pack the punch that's needed onto the safe. And it just felt so, so good to watch Navi back where they should be. We haven't seen this from them for a while now. So they're getting back into the swing of things and really looking like a, a serious threat now. Also, again, I said I said this before about Navi in one of their sets earlier, where sometimes, you know, you get these kind of fluke victories or these off-brand, off-label. This is Navi not only winning emphatically, but winning in their style. You know what I yeah. mean, Ark? Absolutely. They're yeah. playing their own game. They're enjoying themselves as well. That's the thing. You can just see it. Their confidence today is booming. I mean, and I mean, look at Angel Boy on that Dynamite. I mean, that <laughs> might help a lot on that front because the, the confidence is being displayed, even against a, a really tough comp. You know, when you're playing against the Dynamite, you got a Primo and a Surge. At no point in that game did I feel like Angel Boy felt you know, in peril around the situation. Time and time again, he was the problem that was never dealt with. And this is looking more and more like a sweep, despite the stats, because I've got to say, Black's with 11 kills, boss with eight. I mean, those two alone had more than anyone yeah. on the side of Navi, but it's the objective that matters most. And that's okay. where Navi played. It's about the stuff after the stuff. I will be saying that statement till my last of days, I swear. I do want to bring attention to, <clears throat> I do think I'm here to celebrate the mic, but I think Mike had a little bit too much room to breathe. I think Boss could have easily shut down Mike and the decision to fight fire with fire and be aggressive with the Primo didn't seem to work out. And I think that was the wrong choice. So we'll see if the decision-making is a little bit better for Team Queso going forward, because I think that might be the difference as Navi takes the field one more time. And the Amber first pick for Navi? Okay. The Amber first pick here on Ring of Fire. Um, no secret, this is just one of my favorite brawlers. I like the way she works. Uh, area Denial, one of my favorite mechanics. She recently got a buff. The oil is going to make you slowed. So now... The trouble puddle is even more troublesome. Amber is going to be a force to be reckoned with, and I want to see what they pair her with. It's got to be a Leon for me for Team Kessler. This is a Black Sea map if I ever saw one. And we saw OG playing a Leon so incredibly well recently in the challenge finals of the SPS on this very map, no less. It's going to be maybe playing a slow, it could be a third and final one for them, but I definitely feel like it's one that can work once they see the big pitch on the side of Navi. The Meg ban as well, the Lou ban, uh, and the Max as well for Team Kessler banned out. I think it was very, very smart here. This was absolutely a Meg map for Navi, and the Amber is yep. one that we don't necessarily see them play all the time. So yeah, absolutely going to be looking out for that new Mythic gear on the uh, on the side of the uh, of the Amber uh, to really get that slowing idea in on those chokeholds. But 
Poku as well is going to be a big idea, which they could float because Navi loves to pick up that particular Brawler. And survivability is key. Eve, though, going to come in. And again, another Brawler with a new Mythic gear coming in. Uh, a potential additional spawner of, of the pets coming in on that front from the Super. We'll see whether they want to run it, of course. But nonetheless, I do like the comp on the side of Navi. But Team Kesu may very well have a trick up their sleeve with this Leon pick if they decide to play it. Well, we got to see what the third selection here is for the blue team. And it's going to be an Ooh. RT. And so some, some long range, let's say beef. I don't want to say tank, especially with the, with the recent knockdown. But, you know, long range, thick boy. Sure, sure, sure. I... We saw the RT purchased last time on Ring of uh, on Hot Zone at least, and I think RT excels when he's you know kind of on the point. Ring of Fire for Navi, I think, is all about standing on the point and maintaining it. Retake will be a little difficult. What's your? Do you agree or disagree? Yeah, objective always, uh, at the end of the day, is going to be what's, what wins. I'm a little bit sad to see they didn't go with the Leon, just because that was really where I just have so many great memories of 2022 and Black Sea and Team Kesso really thriving off the back of it. And uh, again, I've got to reiterate just how enjoyable it was to watch OG uh, with STMN at the SPS really just showing why that brawl is so scary, but clearly worried a little bit about the range. And I don't think that Penny's by any means a bad pick whatsoever, but Black going to be taking the reins on this B and already a bit battle for the mid as Javi pops the early gadget there to try to get the mobility and damage kicked up a little bit of a gear and cube does fill the front of it. Good tap so on to boss in the meanwhile keeping the amplified shot above his head and MMA trying to capitalize for that very reason but so far Team Kesso is holding further in the mid. Angel Boy right now focusing on well dealing damage took care of some some grass on the left side as the mid lane loses the matchup but MMA and Angel Boy combine to find the kill Eve gets knocked up as Javi jumps on in, and now it's Angel Boy versus two. Boss takes down Cube on respawn. And an easy kill on Amber. And Team Queso, for as sleepy as they've looked in the early stages of this set, Ark, they're making their moves now. Yeah, they are. Well, quadruplets came in from the uh, Eve Super, but Cube quickly sort the things with a super of his own taking down now though 65 percent and climbing now for team kesu into the mid they've been really spending a great deal of the objective in mind and can't really say the same for navi and just a 22 percent for that and a big jump in there from javi gets the kill as well onto mma and now it's cube left all alone it's just target practice here for black sea continuing to tap cube is surely about to go down but nonetheless why not just leave him low exactly that by their time on the objective Team Kesso with a night and day difference now, as this looks to be potentially a set which they can manage. We're not fooled. 99 turns into 100. Unannoying little <laughs> stop there from Navi. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure they get that kill and they're like, man, okay. <laughs> like, you know, you can't depend on that. But in any event, yeah, Navi looking super awesome hot excited we had everything good to say and now i am quiet i uh okay so didn't allow navi a chance to breathe whatsoever angel boy did the work won some matchups got rid of some grass mma killed people i don't know if it's eve specific the rt though i could use more of and there it is one kill Turns to two, and MMA wins their fight as well, and so Navi steps up forward, stands on the pit, and will gain some percentage, 20% just like that. Yeah, solid stuff, really, but it's going to be quite key to see how Team Kiss to respond. It's the first time that they've realistically been under pressure, and they are responding pretty well, let's be honest. One, two, and now the third, just Angel Boy left alone, and he goes down as well. That was a really great retake from Team Kesso there, and some confidence to add to things, because they are two sets down, they need it. But now a cube with that big pickup onto Black Sea, with a two versus three, not an easy one to go for, and Javi's going to come short there onto the jump, and oh, now it's not looking too good. Navi could well be on the way to a match point scenario, but I mean, we've seen that in the previous two matches, and we know what happened there, so I don't want to speak too soon and let the cast <laughs> curse come back around full circle here. 
here. But so far, it's good resilience here from Team Kessler. They've brought things back a little bit. But they are behind. They've got 30% now. They've got to get it more to 60. Well, Cube certainly have a better game this time around. A couple of very important kills coming from the RT. I'm still looking at Angel Boy, though. Trades out versus Javi with some help from the mid lane. And now it's two on two. Team Queso on the point. The Cheesy Boys now take the lead. And it's up to Angel Boy to try and find some position on this mid lane. Teammate to the left dies. And Angel Boy all by themselves falls down. 10% now in closing. It's going to be a huge DP for now because they do take back control over the mid. Now's the chance to buckle down, but they've got to be very careful of these Black Sea shots because that will be the uh, way to turn things around, especially if he starts to land them. But time is of the essence here. Team Kisser have got to make a push. They've got to go on the aggressive. Navi are not far away from getting towards 90% here. It really is going to be a neck and neck finish. Trouble. Navi falls down. They lose the fight on the right hand side. They lose the fight in the mid as well. MMA. The deployable is good enough. Oh man, if MMA is able to get past that deployable, eh, arguable that Navi win the game there because of the double kill. But excellent, excellent gameplay from the players across the way. And just like that, Team Kato are back in it. Listen, if you're just joining us, Ark alluded to it. The last two were reverse sweeps. And Navi looked real strong for the first, well, two. But now we're on the second half of the match. That'd be scary. Yeah, it, it could be. I mean, we've seen crazy things this year in the BSC and uh, three reverse sweeps in a row. I'm not counting it out. Great finale though to end, <laughs> as she's pointed out, rightly so. The uh, trash can for the tanking there really did cut the mustard on the side of Team Castle. But uh, there was a lot of opportunities for Navi to really get themselves that game and turn the uh, heat up in the pressure cooker. Having more than not did land those jumps. One of, the, one of them towards the uh, uh, second game didn't quite connect, but did start to really help. That was the moment there of just keeping the control and the stats again. You know, really do display that Team Kesso, regardless of not necessarily obtaining the objective in the previous game and having great stats this time round, have great stats and play the objective. So the learnings are being taken on board here and that's what really counts. That's what makes great teams here in the BSC. It was a fantastic round for Javi. He's got to keep it up, bring his team back together and pick themselves up, brush up the dust going into Brawl Ball, Backyard Bowl. It's definitely, again, another map for me that does cater towards the Team Keso style. They do like those longer range affair kind of uh, transactions. Javi especially is a real sharpshooter at, at, at hand. So I feel like this could be a chance to bring things back. At the same time, they've got to be on point with this draft because Navi love their tanks, they love the healers. And it's actually going to be a ban there on the left hand side for Meg, an early draft for Team Keso. Other bans that were there were the Lola, the B, and the Colette on the side of Navi, the Bell, the Meg, and the Body. Well, our max first pick here for Team Queso. You were you you, you said this this map might befit what Team Queso kind of brings to the table that long range approach. Max, not always usually looking to enable some of the some of the more aggressive short rangey guys. Do you think the max selection uh, signals a deviation from what we're used to at a Queso, or do you think we'll see the long stuff paired up with Max instead? It keeps your options open, doesn't it? It's like an early, good, aggressive idea, which is going to put a lot of pressure, but ultimately you can combine it with range or with closer range as well. So handing things back over to Navi and allowing them to make the move gives them some options when it comes back around. Either way, you can't really ever go wrong with Max. I mean, it's pretty much up there with the top three brawlers in the meta, in my opinion. Uh, that yep. aside them being B and the Penny and you know, the B's band here as well, Penny could be an option, especially on backyard bulbs and there's kind of like more stalemate ideas as both sides want to establish control play a big factor but Janet coming in is a huge pick for EMEA really thriving off the back of Janet the drop the base can just keep your opposition really under scrutiny when they're pushed back into the spawn side areas so that might be the penny pick that maybe Team Kesso are now thinking about just to be able to have as a bit more of a defensive tool We'll see what they want to add to the mix. As I, I do feel like the closer range ideas are going to be a bit risky. So yeah, Carl, for that reason, extending mm -hmm. the range, but also keeping the aggressive ideas alongside that pairings with the Max. And I think it's quite crucial here because Team Kesso can have options and really utilize a lot of what they've got to go on the aggressive when they need to. 
Yeah, I like the, I like the Carl and the Max options. Uh, you, you keep saying a lot of words that sound like options, and that's <laughs> yeah. what I'm seeing out of this team queso. It's just a lot of different choices, a lot of different ways to play. That'd be around Not predictable, for t- you know? Exactly. You know? Yeah. And, and so the Pam does sort of lock down play style ever so slightly, but it, this is still a composition that Team Queso can say, all right, we're going to play real aggressively, uh, Pam's going to push up, and we're going to ready to go, and then if Navi start to do something different, they can go, all right, we're going to sit back a little bit, we're going to sit on the Pam totem, you know what I mean? You can play this multiple ways, multiple approaches is key here for Queso, especially when you're playing into a team like Navi, who, as you said, you don't really know what's coming. And so, it's the Ice Cream Man. What's up, Lou? It's a scary pick now. I mean, when you look at the other side of the field, there is no wall breaker there for Team Kesso. So, Lou is going to get a tremendous amount of value. I kind of feel like sometimes a little bit here on these kinds of drafts that on the side of Team Kesso, it's all possibly if they play it badly a little bit too passive actually you know having the palm is an idea which you know you can obviously have for the mid game but if you're pushed back into your spawn then you need those healing turrets to keep you in the mix but that's exactly where lou is going to thrive on the side of navi and gain a ton of value uh we see it so much in north america and i don't know why lou has not really transitioned over in the same way to emea because it is such a good pick but it's never really utilized that much we'll see whether it works out here for navi i quite like it I, i'm quite on side with both drafts here actually um so i think it could be quite a close one but we'll see who wants to gain that early start and team Kesso look to be wasting no time at all pushing the ball forwards and lax is on the left hand side might get caught off guard here big shield from angel boy onto cube and that will give a bit more nice. of an opportunity Havi's got to deal with this and he's got to deal with it quickly he's got scraps like a gadget will he use it he will oh my word lands very shot into him and somehow cube finds the angle Beautiful play by Na'Vi there, just winning the fight on the left-hand side and clean and clear. Systematic play from Na'Vi. Lou, I didn't even get to talk about him because he didn't really do much. It was Cube and MMA in the mid and the left that really opened up the map. Boss trying to play better this time around as he lost the duel. Now Team Queso have the advantage. It's up to Na'Vi to play defense here. Yeah, Kessa really have got everyone locked down here. At the moment Navi are the rats caught in the trap, but finally a little bit of a breakthrough as the ball pushed through. Cube can take to the skies if he needs to, but he wants to keep a little bit of a firming hold on the ground just to keep his team able to come back and fully replenish themselves. Great Kuki Popper gadget there for Angel Boy as he just takes care of business. Now pushing forwards, boss incredibly low and a bit of a miss shot from Cube. Blacks, though stunned out, should be a bit of a saving grace enough for Navi to secure the defense. And then doing pretty well under the circumstances. That could well have been a goal there for Team Kesso, but they're staying cool and collected. That's what matters most, but more speed coming in now and a chance to retry that push. I think that's the right call, trying to play it calm. 30 seconds is not a lot of time, but might be enough to be able to push this in, knowing the ball's in the back left. That said, with this performance from Na'Vi, I think that might be all she wrote here, Ark. It was important. No, it needed to happen. Queso needed to win that fight. I don't think they have enough time here. Yeah, if Navi are going to be playing a smart, they'll put the supers onto the ball from the side of the loo and just ensure that there's not enough time to get the ball in the first place. And that's exactly what they're going to do now. But Blacksy will clear up the right-hand side lane. There could be enough time here, but they've got to take them some really aggressive push. And that's exactly what they tried to Three do. Three seconds. Oh, get it. oh my goodness me, he gets it, but is it enough time? No, Blacksy can't secure the shot. But Team Kesso played that perfectly and just came up short changed. By design. By design from Navi, not a care, not a sweat. They come up and we go, hey man, you, 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 if there were two more seconds on the clock, you would have lost that. And Navi go, there wasn't. <laughs> yeah. They knew how it was gonna go. <laughs> Insane stuff. Honestly, that was like uh, such a difficult chance for the team kids to even get to the ball and they almost scored out of it, but just the time was against them. They've got to learn from that. They've got to play more aggressively uh, earlier on and give themselves those opportunities. And this could be very well one of them. The pass through to Blacksy. He's got the flying hook, but wants to get MMA down a bit lower. And it's just delayed things too much there. The shield was handed over. And as quickly as that, all of that momentum is diminished. Tough stuff, man. The momentum 
steps. At the end of the day, you just need to perform it. Black suit on the left hand side gets lewd! Beautiful. See you later, bud! Outplayed by MMA. Fantastic job out of the controller on Navi. Just gonna marvel and behold how MMA is playing this loop pick. You really have. I mean, he's got so many supers this match. I'd love to see that stat come the end of this back and forth, but let's see for the moment. Team Keso starting to secure themselves in. A bit of a rough position. The ball was placed into a terrible spot there. Could have been better off the right-hand side, really, but it's allowing Navi to recollect themselves and try to defend it more so, and that's exactly, exactly what they've done. They haven't got the goal yet. They, they, there's no goal on either side here, so it's a really key opportunity. They've got to take care of MMA. They've got to secure some takedowns, and Blacksy comes in. Everyone does their thing. The ball passed through, and that will secure it. A great time for it, too, but Team Keso now have got to play the defensive game. I don't know whether their aggressiveness is enough to hold their own for a second goal here. Let's see how they choose to play it, though. They've got options in that respect, but they might just choose to try to defend this as best they can. Well, Navi is going to get aggressive here. Lou Super already down. Mistake? We'll see. The Black Seed's allowed to live here. Cube makes the right flank. Oh, it looks like it was the wrong moment. Team Queso. Want to play it slow, and looks like game over here. 14 seconds left, Navi. Cube's going to take to the skies and see if he can do it here, but I think that's all she wrote, folks. Going to a game three here at Brawl Ball. So exciting to watch, it really is. But I think Team Kessler deserved the game, regardless of what happens next. He earned that goal, and they, they, they really struggled to secure it in the first game, second game. Not the same case, but this could very well be the thing which now leads them in to taking this to a fifth and final set. And I would love to see it go there myself, as I'm sure production would too. <laughs> it's been a long day for everyone, but this is what this region brings. Non-stop action in EMEA, and it just goes on. And I wouldn't want it any other way, to be honest. The great start, aggressive in nature there by Team Kessler. Some big takedowns happening. It's now a two versus two, but Black Sea is still such a threat on this Carl pick. And Hugh won't Ooh. take the skies. He'll take the death instead. Because at the meanwhile, Navi know that they can handle this 2v1 situation. And it's just going to be more fuel to the fire. As MMA can't be close away now from another super. He just keeps cycling them over and over. And it's just such a headache for Team Kesso. But in return, they're bringing the speed to the mix. And that is what Navi is struggling with. Yes, he keeps cycling the super. I still think he's tossing out these supers a little willy-nilly arc. Team Queso just gonna walk it on in. It's the second one, and it's the second one. Ooh, careful, careful. Queso so close to finding this dub here. And then just a pass up? No, okay. Blue Super says not, not, not right now, man. Back it up. A very important moment there for MMA because Black Sea had full on goal scoring intention with that play there. And if he was able to get to the ball, it could very well have been that. Still, just that one goal there on the side of Kesso, and that gives them the confidence going into our final minute here. It's Navi who needs to make the play. MMA has got super, but a bit of a misclick there for sure. It's got to have been, unless he's preempting the fact that Black might go in, but even then, I wouldn't go for that play myself. Angel Boy's left alone. This is a great scoring opportunity for Kesso. They can just secure it, but it was a biased time with the shield as well. So now the speed coming in. Can all three members of Kesso secure this right here? And now they're going in for it. Black oh, that's huge. Line. He gets it. Everyone taking Kesso. What are you doing? Miss click from Hammond. What are you doing? Like no! They've got the goal regardless. That is to be bared in mind. It won't be a complete enough to fumble, but it certainly was the miss click that could prove costly if Navi can score this goal. And that if could absolutely be a yes. Cube takes the pass, kicks it in. No, defended by Boss. Perfect timing. And Team Queso breathes a sigh of relief as they almost watched their hopes walk away. But close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. We're going to a fifth set.
Oh my word! <laughs> my heart really can't take this at this point. I'll be honest. <laughs> I mean, you said that they breathed a huge sigh of relief. I, I, I'm pretty sure that I could hear it from here because uh, <laughs> that was <laughs> a key moment. It really was to defend and. Yeah, Navi is still smiling regardless, but surely, and now it's time to think, what do we have to do to ensure a, a win here? We don't want to be reverse swept, as we've already seen in the previous two matches of this region. And it, and it looks like that is becoming potentially more and more true by the minute, as Team Kesso really start to build the momentum up to a point where they've got to believe now that they can actually do this, whereas at the beginning, it was certainly not the case. Absolutely. And I mean, this is this is a in, comp in competition in competitive games. You have to think a lot of like for regular people, you know, ego, arrogance. This is something that you kind of like it, it's, it's, it's shunned on. But if you want to be top five in the BSC, you got to think you're top three. If you want to be top three, you got to think you're number one. And if you want to be number one, you got to think it's always possible to win. And so Navi came in here going, dude, of course we're going to win, even though nobody else was saying that. And now they're still saying it. Yeah, they dropped a couple of games in between, a couple of sets in between, a couple of moments in between. But as the great philosopher Vin Diesel once said, it doesn't matter <laughs> if you win by an inch or a mile. Winning is winning. And if Navi take this one, it doesn't get put up there in their points column that it took that, that they lost to after. None of that happens. All that shows up is a W. And so that's what Navi's looking for here. Gene, first pick overall as we jump into knockout. That's a good pick. Gotta say, Vin Diesel's definitely up there as my one of my top three favorite, you know, philosophers of all time. <laughs> <laughs> the, first, the first brawler coming in for Navi is Gene. It's definitely one that brings a lot of versatility. And the heels will go a long, long way. But out in the open is a map that can kind of almost encourage teams to want to, you know, survive on when they're put into that back corner of their spawn. And it does tend to go from bad to worse. Mech coming in now for Team Kess, and we know what that brawler can do here. So much survivor ability, but it does struggle a little bit with aggression. So if Navi wants to double down, I saw some fantastic plays in North America last month with Daryl on this particular map. I wonder whether they'll be daring enough to do just that, but Brock, I love in out in the open. You can just yeah. use your rocket fuel to break through the wall, have easy access to the mid very, very quickly, and it gives you options when you're placed on the back foot, when your opposition go on the aggressive, gives you a couple of choices to make. Do you want to go far right? Do you want to go mid? The Eve is banned, so they can't go left, unfortunately, but nonetheless, mm -hmm. bands looking pretty decent to me across the board. Having Bonnie out of the mix for Team Kesso is quite key, as well as the Eve for Navi. Some really good uh, decision-making happening on both sides here, because this is one of the most important sets that both of these two sides have played all year. Angel Boy again finds the RT. A lot of RT this set. Arc Talk to me a little bit about the camera guy and, and, and what you like about RT and where you think he fits into compositions. My issue with RT is that you don't really get too much say when it comes to your super. It's, it's largely used in the competitive scene as more of a defensive mechanism against brawlers like Gene. So pairing with Gene makes a lot of sense to me. Um, but at the same time, Nanny coming in for Nanny, uh, for Navi, I should say, um, <laughs> it, it's a great thing to have, you know, to have the people rolling in. RT, I feel it will probably receive a rework to one of the gadgets where it doesn't really have much, as the Brawl Stars team were saying themselves on their podcast recently, time to explain. Uh, I think RT might receive some tweaks later down the lines. They've obviously touched things a little bit now with the super, taking down the uh, tick. So when you've got your super, having the ability to have less shots activate uh, now by half as what it used to be, uh, tick coming in on the side of Team Kessel was what I was trying to say at the same time. Um, but RT, for me, I feel like it could be a better brawl if it just had a bit more of a versatile super. Um, sure. In its current state, all the pro scene are just keeping it pretty much as a sharpshooter. That's the idea, you know, and I think as we get more and more brawlers coming out, we're going to see more and more like niche selections, more and more of that, where the super is very specific, and a lot of times it's used defensively, but I mean, hey, the sharp sh he's doing damage. He's got 5,800 HP. So we'll see how it all works out here. Navi, bottom side. Team Queso, top. And Meg in that mech. 
needs to be the first target. Otherwise, the late stages of this knockout round will be tough to deal with. Team Queso have Nami in a corner. Not great. Here comes the tick. And, well, mitigated. Great return to Sander there. Use from Angel Boy, but I do admire the way that Team Queso have approached it so far. Keeping the pressure on the situation and keeping Navi back. Most importantly, that tick over time will just be able to whistle things down. They can just keep everything suppressed here. But now, keep coming in. Will it connect those boss there with a lovely little gadget pop? But MMA punches him for it. Blacksy will get Oh, hit him! Off. Low HP, but he's outnumbered here. 2v1. They surely should be able to deal with this on the side of Navi. Blacksy going to try his best to try to feed himself another super. Not going to matter. We'll come back in mecha form as well, regardless. And that round goes the way of Navi. Very, very close. Very, very close. Meg there, Black C could have turned on that. Now we have to be, I mean, honestly, just better next time. <laughs> Don't miss those shots because you got away with it that time around. This time around, not so safe. Two versus three, Navi on the bad side. Black C amplified up and Cube tries to take advantage of it. Can quite secure the kill though. Blacksy will have to earn a new mech. And that could be a bit of a saving grace moment for Navi if they can start to rekindle this round. But it is really Team Kester to have all the high cards here. Trying to close the gap in and force back Angel Boy. Cube trying to just balance himself out here to allow a bit of an aggressive push whilst the peep comes in. But Tickhead coming in. Will it get taken care of? No. That leaves Cube incredibly low. And the Tick shots will whistle him down even further. Team Kessler will play this perfectly. And there's nowhere for Cube to go. Nowhere to go at all. Round one and round two in opposite directions. And now we're here for the rubber round. Black Sea, again, the target of Na'Vi. They really want to get Meg out of this mech early on. And I've got to say, I agree. I think that's the right choice. Got to isolate it. Got to take care of it. It's so good at suppressing that back corner. And Navi know it. Keep coming in. Again, another big last hurrah from Boss. But Blacksy takes the front of it as well. And the tick head was nice. cleaned up quite nicely. So by Navi, better than previously. And a few vengeful spirits Dude. from MMA do secure the takedown to Harvey. It's now a three versus one. I don't even think Meg can handle this kind of scrutiny. It's going to be one easy pull, a bit of a spin from Angel Boy, and a securing of the round for Navi as they move on to match point. What a, what a difficult thing for Navi to balance. So they wanted they they want they wanted to go on the on the Meg the first time around. This time around, they clearly changed their strategy. But by targeting the other players, you clearly open up the door for Meg to come and flank you. So they had to keep their distance, target the other players while still maintaining, you know, dealing with the Mecha girl. Really, really difficult balance there, but Navi does the dance. And so they are one set away from going to finals. I want to say that pin from Cube is vastly becoming more toxic than the protesto. Thumbs down for me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's got to be getting inside the minds of Kesso somewhat, but regardless, they've got to keep all his emotions at bay and bring this one back as they are behind, but I've got the comp and the legs to be able to do and bring this back against the team like Navi. Even so, a match point, match point. Let's be honest, F dot today of all days <laughs> wouldn't be the strangest of things to see. Big pressure though from Cube and big taps following up and Boss will go down to Cube. Huge moment. 2v3 now. Blacksy trying his best to earn that mech. He's got the shield, but... Oh, he goes down! No good at all, leaving Javi all alone. And this round surely goes the way of Navi. And one away from finals. That one would look like a little oops from Team Queso, to be honest with you. I don't think they wanted to lose that. But Navi here taking the field one more time. Javi with a great super. Well, Javi with a super. I'm not sure that grass was useful, so not a bad play. A really important takedown there. Kesso outnumbered. But are they outmatched? Angel Boy's low as well. Return to sender. We'll get bots low a little bit here. And maybe coming in on the jump pad. But now he's going to be out of position here. Gets the pull though to boss. Huge pull from MMA. And it will survive on boss though. Both did the same. 10 HP and a dream and big body blocks from Black Sea. 
the barrel coming through. Navi very happy that they didn't destroy that. Black Sea back in the mech. That's going to be the most difficult part of this for Navi to deal with. Tick doesn't have the super just yet. Everybody focusing on Meg. Black Sea alive for the moment. Cube will deal. And now, Cube versus Boss. What? Boss oh, wins it. The gas. Just the gas. Oh the my word, the gas <laughs> saved him. There was no way he was going to win that. A Tick best save him with legs. Oh my word, a saving grace. A shard still, Picasso. Uh, oh, what a hand of God moment that really was. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just speechless. <laughs> I'm, I'm usually the big loud guy and my mouth just opened agape. <laughs> oh my goodness. I Stuck in the spell. corner again is Navi and the tick head goes and finds one, but it's three to one, three to two. Navi have the upper hand. Well, do they have the positioning power? That's the question. Return to send us big from Angel Boy, but Blacksy trying to keep everything under control. The swipe will miss. And now the chance for Navi to respond with big taps. And Javi's low as well here. He can't really contest it. A chance for Navi to escape this position and go on the aggressive. Angel Boy missing these shots. Won't miss that one. I don't care how many it took. That's the one that landed. Navi one away from finals. The pull is good. And Navi are great. Navi will head to the finals for the first time all year. Nostrovia to Navi. Rip it. <laughs> A huge congratulations to Navi. You got to hand it to them. They kept their cool and and you're staring down the barrel of a potential reverse sweep. Uh, I mean, that is always a tough thing to do. In fact, they're the third team out of all those today that were in the same position. The only team, in fact, to be able to stop it in its tracks. Got to commend on that side of things. Team Kesso for that very same reason, because they almost managed it. And I would say it's pretty hard to start that process of a reverse sweep than it is to halt it. Both sides yeah. there, giving it their all and giving us such an incredible matchup to watch. What an exciting semifinals things are already starting out to be. Yeah, man, I I loved this matchup. I think Team Queso came out and played. They did really, really well. Uh, and the only times they fell down is when Navi stepped up above them. Navi came out to play this 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 month. Honestly, surprised a couple of folks. But again, I said it earlier, uh, and, and I'll say it. I'm sure a little bit later. I don't think Navi are that surprised. I think they came in confident as all heck to this monthly finals. And they played today, Ark. They played today like, what are you surprised about? We, This is <laughs> what we do, kid. Why are you surprised? Like they, like, they didn't miss a beat. I like it. Oh, my word. That, that uh, you know, moment as well where we saw the tick able to come up on top against the RT. It was uh, a lot to do as well with the recent balance changes with the poison gas. Now it was 20% of damage based on the Brawler's max HP per second. And, you know, that, that adds a, a big factor in when you've got a Brawler like uh, RT there. Boss had a great round, didn't he, the Team Care? So looking at the stats there, Javi had, did definitely struggle a little bit more so. But across the board, Navi, really, really strong. Angel Boy with seven, Q with four, MMA with three. A solid final set it really was for Navi, and uh, whew, I think they've earned it. I really do. They <laughs> pulled out all the stops here today. But who is going to be the MVP of this MMA? Ooh. As voted for everybody, you guys at events.brawlstars.com. If you haven't been there yet, sync your game, get those rewards, and vote for your own favorites. But a deserving one, no doubt about it there. Fully deserved. Yeah, without a doubt. I look at this Navi squad and... If I had to vote for an MVP, I don't know who I'd vote for. I think Navi really brought the squad as a unit today. Really, really it's fun to watch. You know, I could say impressive and all this, but just, just fun to watch. A team like that kind of dig themselves out from underneath, come with their own style as we've kind of hit a couple of times. Uh, just that is what I sign up for, man. That is, that's the good stuff. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. Absolutely so. Well, one semifinals down, another still to come. SK Gaming did get the win over State of Division earlier today. If you are just joining the stream, and what an incredible win that was for them. Match point, match point yet again, as we saw later on against Reply to Foot. 
And it's really the tale of the underdogs in that lower bracket stage that's prevailed today here. SK Gaming, Foot Esports. This one is going to be an absolute banger to see who joins Navi in the grand finals. Without a doubt. Semantic against his previous team. He's loud. The SK guys are loud. This is definitely going to be a fun matchup on and off the field. A lot on the line, obviously, as finals looms in the distance. Whoever wins this goes on to play against the Na'Vi team we just saw successfully win. And I reckon this side of the bracket's feeling good about either of their chances for what it's worth. That said, we got to play this semifinals up first. We'll do Bounty, Knockout, and Gem Grab. And we'll see the other ones should we get there. Semantic, Drage, and Ope. This is a fun team. This is a fan favorite team. What's your take on this squad? Uh, they've been making moves, haven't they? It was a bit of a slow start to the year, no doubt about it. But when Foot started to get the momentum going, they've seemingly been able to keep going with it. And again, what uh, the peak so far for me this year was that reverse sweep against Reply Totem earlier today. A squad which, you know, historically Foot have kind of struggled a little bit with. And for that same reason, I would say come in a little bit more hesitant to play and a, a little bit more sketchy when it comes to some of their gameplay. So in this respect, SK, it should be an easier opposition, but I say that lightly because ultimately going back into the, the week, we saw this very matchup in the Kessel Cup in the last stage of the loser's bracket, and it was SK that picked up the win there. It was a 3-1. So Foot coming into this one, they've got to put that defeat in the past and kind of treat today as a bit of a blank canvas. They've got the luxury of having been in a monthly finals this year before, whereas for SK, this is their first one of the entire year. They haven't qualified until this month. So... Having come in as your first monthly final of the year to knock out the team that have won every single monthly final this year, things have started in the best way possible for SK. But the question is now, can they maintain it? Can Foot do an upset here and see themselves in the grand finals? Also, you know, you sit here and one of those moments, as we see 85% of the fans are going with the classic SK. 15%. On the foot, and I imagine that that was not an easy choice for a lot of these fans to make. That said, I think the SK the SK gaming team is pro perhaps a little more proven, is what I will say. But I think that recently, man, I'm trying to make heads or tails out of that poll. Everybody's going to SK, but this is perhaps the larger jump for them. Is it just, is it just team recognition? Is that what we're seeing here? This is the question, you know, because uh, I mean, as I was saying off stream before we came live, I feel like a lot of teams are looking upon SK and still seeing the SK of last month and at the beginning yeah. of the year. They are no longer that squad. You know, that has been made perfectly clear here today. And for that same reason, a lot of the SK fan base really coming back to the forefront of the voice and saying, we're back to cheer who we've been wanting to cheer for all year long. Let's see though, the draft for Layer Cake takes its form. Ruffs coming in for SK to combine with the RT, the bands being Bonnie, Max and Tick. The foot, it was bands of Janet, Sprout there and Penny to add to their pick there of the Gene following up shortly. but. You know, Layer Cake really does cater a lot to some aggressive ideas we've seen in North America. A great deal of Sam on this particular map. I wonder whether Foot might be daring enough to do so, whether SK might be with their third and final pick coming in in just a moment. But Carl, kind of come in. Control is all the rage here so far for Foot. Let's see how their third and, uh, third and final brawler takes its form. One Layer Cake. Gene is definitely my first selection as well. I probably want to see some... Do I go sharpshooter or do I go something annoying here? I'm classic. Give me a sharpshooter. Otis, okay. I like Otis as, as a nice little blend. Long range damage, but certainly brings some utility as well. This is objectively a good choice. And the Grom across the way will bring a ton of damage as well. Hard to deal with specifically on layer cake, in my opinion. At least I always get hit by it, but maybe that's not what I should be basing my stuff. 
But the Archie what? and the Colonel Ruffs to flank him <laughs> should be a good look. I like the Otis pick from foot there, by the way, just to kind of preempt any kind of tanky idea. Anything that's going to push them back into the spawn side. And I think the Sprout Baron as well, as we saw today with SK in that fifth and final set against Zayt's Division, picking that Sprout, leaving it with Chaos or Yoshi. Both are amazing with it. I actually had to do a bit, a bit of a double take actually today to see whether it was Yoshi or I Chaos playing it because it was phenomenal in dry season. So I think that, that was a good idea there from Foot just to kind of like, you know, sway the draft a little bit more in their favor as to how they want to play the game. But nonetheless, Grom still going to be very suppressive here as well. So let's see though, who gets the early start. No vengeful spirit value there for Drace. The Mance going very aggressive here on the right hand side, getting behind Yoshi big time and a big flying hook from OP as well. Everyone on the side of Foot is just wasting no time here, but they are behind. And more so now. <laughs> <laughs> Five stars plus the blue one for SK. Chaos kind of tossed the sandbags out there in a weird moment, but they're here now. Semantic on the flank, looking for Jetton on the right side. Jetton hiding well and hitting him with the Grom stuff. Oh, man. The Otis just shoved out. No kills for Foot just yet. There's the pull. And just like that, I'm here to curse things. Five to three, SK still in the lead. Oh, big touch from OPE. Got a bit short change there, honestly, because he did tremendously well until that. And a bit of a missed pull from Drage will not alleviate the problem. Seven stars for SK. The blue star still with Foot. Four star lead then for SK. So two takedowns needed for them. OPE is too weak to really continue contesting this left hand side. And Shooting his way around it. A little bit of a connecting shot, though, from Chaos will keep him low. And a great angle there from Chaos. Double tap, super for his troubles. Supply drop coming in thick and fast as well. And that's only more power to SK. Jetting here, just keeping Semantic at bay. Ope jumps in, trying to get the moves and takes down the thrower. Beautiful use of Carl, but the trade out's great. Eight seconds to go, and Foot are here. Drage versus Jetton, 12 to 6 overall. Drage can't do it all by himself. And so it's SK Gaming taking game one. I, I, got a, I was so worried for SK there because OPE seemed to be in the perfect position. But he just got wiped out immediately quickly. Yep. I'd love to see it back. So like where he went even. <laughs> I had to do a bit of a double take. <laughs> but I mean, I like the way that Foot really approached the situation. That could have definitely gone a different way. But going into this matchup, they've got to be a little bit more cautious as to how they approach the early moments because SK will be that team that go back on the defensive and play passive, which they did. But it's good to see that Foot that same reason are thinking aggression because that is the way that you play against a team which want to try to deviate down that path so far so good this time around but just the blue star with foot like chaos pushing up incredibly deep on this right hand side and if OPE yeah. wants to fly and hook in no super to be able to help out with the takedown which he kind of needs against the, the situation of things Yoshi low as well semantic feels it's time to push and goes in so far no kills on either side and it's been a lot of gameplay already gone out yeah, for Foot, they clearly are, are operating around that gene pool, so nothing doing is good for Foot. Because they're just a couple of pulls here, and they're able to kind of bank points that way. SK, what they did in game number one, which I want to see them do here in game number two, is they played aggressively and built a lead so that when Ope goes in and wipes everybody, they're still up. It didn't happen here. And so Ope went in and wiped everybody, but now it's Foot in the lead, eight to two. Eight to six, thanks to Jet and getting the answer back. But it's moments like that where Foot really should be able to secure the kill and not give over any stars in the process. But a huge pull from Drage will extend their lead massively so. And they all push back into the spawn. They'd like to secure another one, really, to get out of this pickle. But OPE just chuking his way around it. Healing up now, the back of the healing pass from Drage. They're far from out of the woods. Big flung hook gets again from OPE. And he should secure Jetson, which he does. Living Chaos, really vulnerable on the left. As well as Yoshi, really vulnerable on the right. Another flying hook back in. OPE is everywhere in this match. And it's almost over three stars away from Foot ending it out early. Man, flying hook so impactful. Changes Carl overall. Makes him so aggressive. And Foot are able to go ahead and tie this one up. And the difference there was the Carl play. So... We saw game one where Drage was just the pull man 
Everybody waited for the pull to come in, and they executed off of the gene pull. Now, like I said, SK were previously able to kind of like be more aggressive. So when those gene pulls did come through, they weren't enough to kind of fight against the mountain that was SK's victories. And so Food realized that that strategy of sitting back and pulling wasn't going to work. So, all right, Carl, go. Be aggressive. And that's how they found their victory, changing their approach. Watching OPE on this Carl Rowley is something special. Gotta say it. Like, you can just see when he's one shot away from Super, he's already preparing the Super before he connects the shot because he's so confident it's gonna land regardless. And there it is exactly as I'm speaking. Can't quite commit there. And I fully agree with the idea of going back. He had to do it. He would have fed Stars over and foot would much prefer to keep this lead. It worked out much better for them in the last game. Another flying hook in on the right-hand side now for OP, swapping lanes again all over this game, left and right. He's everywhere. But again, you've got to be careful to not hand over stars to SK. If SK get the lead, they're going back into the spawner. More often than not, they can hold it pretty well. Exactly. That's, that's, that's the problem. SK with the lead. So keep everybody at bay. Foot, that is. Red team just needs to keep SK at bay and go in when they choose. That was the wrong choice. And so, and so is wow. that. Yoshi does get taken down. But after the exchange, SK are on top. Six in a blue, above five. This is still a winning position here for Foot. They just need one singular kill, and that's exactly where you want to be in the final moments of 25 seconds and counting. But... Again, this is where SK feel very much at home. And more often than not, it does lead to a win. But foot closing in now and good HP for it. If OB gets super here as well, it'd be massive. It's playing, they're coming back a little bit too soon. Jets in the way of position. OP punishes the take down, but it's not enough. They need another three seconds to do it. The lines up are there. And Chaos No will survive. And SK take the set. 77 HP, that's 76 more than he needed. A great play calculated there from SK Gaming. Very, very important plays. And SK are able to go ahead and take that one. Layer cake in their pocket. And uh, Semantic left asking, why, what, and how are they gonna fix things in set two? Patience, perseverance, I think going back to the drawing board a little bit to remind themselves as to how SK like to play. But for that same idea, they did bring the aggression to the table. Uh, I mean, we saw more often than not that that aggressive nature that Foot brought did pay off. Sometimes they're just getting a little bit overly so, but I feel like that is the way to really penetrate the hearts of SK. And it's these moments here where every time it, it was troublesome for Foot when they were in that back spawn and there's not many teams that you can really say that around the world, in fact. You know, when it comes to those you know, moments where it looks like everything's against you. Great uh, uh, observation there from Drake to actually pull the legs and put uh, their Yoshi into a vulnerable position. But this was a very, very clutch ending moment, realistically, there. Because OP got a lot of value. And he, in a couple more seconds, he probably would have got a double kill there as well. Yeah. Here the stats, though, across the board. And... If you look at that, it's pretty balanced for the most part. Definitely a bit more of DPS on the side of SK, but nonetheless, you know, Foot, I think they've got a real chance here of, of bringing back a set of their own more often than not. You know, if they can just kind of like, again, remind themselves to who they're facing, uh, but very close first set to start things off. Well, SK and Foot Esports right now in a bit of a barn burner as we try to find out who goes to the finals. To face Nottis Vincere. At the moment, SK Gaming lead versus Foot, but they will be making a swap. Jetton can be sitting down, and they're going to bring in their teammate, Guile. Well, it definitely displays a bit of confidence on the side of SK. I mean, Gear wasn't uh, a present, I believe, in the majority of the qualifiers, if not all of the qualifiers leading up to things. And did post on social media just recently to say about, you know, the fact that he was going to be on the bench and, you know, took it very professionally. Got to give him a lot of credit with the way that he uh, went about that as well. But now coming in, and we'll see how that changes things and if it changes things at all as well. So, yeah, definitely an interesting choice. But I would say on the side of SK, a choice that you've got to make when you're in the lead, realistically, here. And uh, now it's definitely going to be an interesting affair because of Semantics, former teammates, were EA and iChaos. 
and mm -hmm. Rage's you know, former teammate was uh, was Yoshi. So uh, yes. a real mismatch when it comes to these two teams and their past and their present scenarios, but uh, coming to clash here and uh, it makes for some great stories. I mean, that's exactly what I, that, that's exactly where my mind goes is, is the old teammate conversation. Uh, realistically, you know, we like to make a lot about these players knowing the enemy playbook and this, that, and a third. I think a lot of brawl strategy is out in the open. We kind of know how teams approach. The meta's pretty cut and dry. You know, there there are some kind of secret strategies that we hold for big lands. Or, but in general, you know, the idea that Drage and, and Semantic are going to be able to read everything SK Gaming are doing, I think that's not perhaps the right angle here. Am I correct? I would say more or less, yeah. Um, you know, ultimately... And what I will say is that I do like the look of the bands. I mean, SK banning out Meg, which might be a bit of a head turner, but we saw it played out on this very much earlier today in APAC. Yep. And um, I think that that shows some good awareness from SK. Foot have been playing in Meg a lot recently, and I'm sure it shows on the API in terms of their play rate. So definitely showing some awareness to what they would like to bring here. So hopefully for Foot, they've got some, uh, some plan Bs and Cs lined up as well. But Janet, for sure. A solid choice to come in and as SK respond with Bonnie and that is an SK pick if I ever saw one and a great place for it as well because it works fantastically well. Tick for control. I like the way it's shaping up to be on the side of SK and if it can keep up their same ideas following on from this Janet, I think we're going to have good comps on both sides here actually. For sure. Flaring Phoenix in particular. Honestly, it's just a mess of a map, so I, I think there's a lot of strong choices. We saw some very interesting throwers going out last time around, uh, as, as far as our sets are concerned. I almost never dislike a good Grom pick, but I also never dislike a good Gene pick. Last choice over here, and it's Fang. Cool. Fang goes well with the Gene. You pull him in, and Fang secures it. Bonnie with a little bit of uh, drop the base. I also like Fang in Knockout specifically because Fang's super tends to do a lot of damage, but then put him in a bad spot. But you don't have to worry about being in a bad spot if everyone's dead in Knockout. So <laughs> always yeah. like Fang here. And this could be an interesting choice as to who plays it as well because Semantic Notorious on the Fang, but OPE is very much the flavor for him as well. Yoshi going to be bringing in the Otis here. And I quite like that as a great hard counter to Fang. Ultimately, it's one thing to go in aggressively, try to get that takedown, but if there's a Otis mute available, then you're just a sitting duck and you're going to be feeding over kills and kills are what matters big time in knockout here. There are some vulnerabilities though, a little bit on the side of SK regardless. That Bonnie is definitely going to be another great escape mechanism for a counter to that Fang and leaving therefore the tickers more vulnerable for sure. We'll see. I imagine they're the last hurrah gadget being ran by Guillet. But in we go. And it's Semantic on the Fang, and that makes me worried. But at the same time, everyone on the side of SK knows exactly what he's capable of doing with the Fang because they were on the same squad last year. So there is that <laughs> as a bit of a counter maneuvering potential on the cars here. Look at him going on the left hand side lane, straight in. Needs to get that super quickly because if he's got that, then he is taken much more seriously. Right now, a lot of presence in the middle lane here. Ope off by their own. There's a little bit of damage pushing Foot backwards, but nothing really happening just yet. I think Fang really needs to find some damage out. Chaos goes down, in goes Semantic. Nice knockback coming out for the rest of the team, and they knocked him down. It's a two on two with Ope in the middle, turns it to a two V one. It touches the gas. And so now it's Drage versus Gie. Great there from Drage. He had to be cold exterior there to make sure that he didn't fumble that. We've seen it happen too many times with Gene in those final moments and just kept Gie low enough to be able to secure it. But again, that tick pick on the side of SK with Gie's running that gadget is a concern. They know that now is the case and the last hurrah. It's going to cause a bit of a complication for Fang on the side of foot to time that perfectly to 
ensure the takedown before you get that knockback. Because with a bit of team support, it really can see to itself. And I like that support that we saw on the side of foot in the previous game as well, when Drake was just sitting in the bush waiting for the ball and waiting for his teammates to be able to handle when the body came in. And you can see that communication was really there. Now though, low HP is a chance potentially here for SK to push, but they decide better of it. Want to keep their full HP and wait for the oh. gas. But now Chaos gets impatient, jumps in and gets rewarded for it. Tickhead coming in, taken care of, but a three versus two is not great news for Foot. Well, Drage in trouble as well. The tick's going to keep him backwards and the gas going to hit him. No, there it is. And so SK Gaming are able to go ahead and take game, oh, round number two. Bring us to a round number three here. An important one for SK. As you pop that from a chaos, lands a couple of shots, maybe just a little bit shy, but Drage has the pull. That's what's keeping SK back. And Semantic knows that his super is going to mean that the aggressive nature of that particular brawler. Can't really get the left-hand side lane, though. Yoshi's got the mute to hand as well, but now he's on the right-hand side. Gets a big stun off there. Chaos weak gear as well, but the last hurrah was big. Big mute as well. Drage with the pull. Gets Yoshi taken care of. Chaos goes in. A bit overzealous there. It's a three versus one now, and surely this will lead to Foot taking the game. It almost has to. Gie by himself on a tick. No disrespect, but I don't think that's happening. <laughs> Semantic gets <laughs> funny with it. And finalizes that one for a foot. It's a nice look there from the boys. I like the composition. I think it's working out well. Well, I said coming in to this one that I felt like foot could definitely get themselves back a set. And it's looking that way so far. I don't want to speak too soon. There's a lot of defensive maneuvering available to SK that wasn't quite put into motion in the last game. But this time round... Mistakes can be learned from. Drage trying to get that pull as quickly as possible as Semantic as well. And for that same reason, SK need the defensive measures in play. I think Yoshi's got possibly the closest to getting his so far, and that's always a good thing to have. OP just trying to avoid feeding into Gear here because ultimately depriving Tick of those countermeasures is very crucial with a comp like this. Literally both sides trying to earn the supers, and I chaos is the first to earn his. Where do you go in, though, is the question. Now that you see that I chaos has the super, you probably spread out if you're foot, and that's kind of what they're trying to do here. Ope oh. he survives, but Drage does not. So the trade out happens, wasn't on chaos's target, but it goes down all the same. Ope half or less, Semantic now half, and even less, as he's going to go ahead and throw this one, and give round number one to SK, denying some of their super. Yeah, I'm all for hero plays there, but ultimately Yoshi had the mute, EA, as we know now, running last to rise, the gadget's got the knockback, nothing realistically a fan can do in that scenario, would much prefer to keep yep. his super for this round, and I think that is definitely the wise call to make. As OPE looking to have a bit of a better round. Definitely, I would say that he was the uh, the forefront of the scrutiny on the side of SK in that last one. And it's like, got to do, you know, he is a, a real problem. Especially if he takes the skies. going to be showing up where everyone is. Yoshi going to swap lanes, go to the left-hand side now. Because again, Semantic has got that super. But now, Semantic going to the mid. And just surely waiting on Drage to earn his super. So they can combine forces. That's why Gears is keeping such a close range away from him and does not want to feed him anything more than he has to. Semantic now has that super available. I Chaos does not. Those are our initiators that we're looking for. Drage also has a super. He can pull somebody in as well. So Food has a couple of options here. Unless they take Drage down, there's the pull, and they take down Semantic first. Drage follows, and now it's all against Ope. But Ope in the sky. Wastes some time. Ultimately does fall down. <laughs> you know, if he takes off a couple of seconds later, do all of SK die to the gas while he's in the sky? I think he would get affected by the gas as well, but I was really hoping that if there was a hero play to make today, then that would have been the one. Imagine if you got team wiped from the skies and how beautiful that would have looked. But 
Nonetheless, SK juked it perfectly. Uh, I mean, I don't yep. think he got a single shot off, and that speaks volumes to me as they are really taking this one seriously. Bringing back that game was very, very important, and now Foot not, ne not looking nearly as comfortable as they did coming in with that first game win, and now in a serious bit of peril as to going down two sets here. This is a really, really crucial game here because if Foot can just bring it back and come out strong, it'll even things out. If they don't, and SK continue as they meant to go on, they could be going two sets ahead, and that could be too much for Foot to be able to handle. That is possible. If SK are two, it would take a reverse sweep, and those are pretty rare. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For context, if you are just joining the stream, we've already had two, almost three of them today. <laughs> well, Drage finds the pole, and he's had two, almost three of those. But Yoshi winds up getting the trade out. Gie, going to go ahead and call this one. Ope still able to build up some super, nonetheless. And so Foot are able to find their, uh, their food hold, if you will. Well, let's see what we do there. I like it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Unintended, though, right? Unintended. That one was on purpose, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Ticker coming in, and it is taken care of. As the thick head gear is being ran by Gie, so those tick heads do count for quite a lot. Especially against this kind of comp, it's quite difficult to take care of sometimes, and hence another reason why OP has got to stay on his feet, as he is probably the best prepared to do so. A Chaos low here, popping gadgets, give himself more maneuverability, but Semantic closing in, can't be far away from Super, I feel, based on his aggressiveness in that scenario, maybe one shot away, and there it is! Exactly that, but Drage can't really support the action here, no magic hand, low on HP, got to heal up, and that might deflate a little bit of the aggressive aggressiveness there. Well, Ope dealing with iChaos and denying a super still. Going to take to the sky and see if they can push out the right side lane. Not going to happen. But here comes Semantic. And just like that, Foot coalesce onto the mid lane and take him down. iChaos going to go towards the top and fall as well. And just like that, Foot find one in the win column in set number two. And they looked really calm and collected in the process. I've got to say, they were in a big big spot there for and to come out on top i think it speaks volumes they're not being in any way deterred from the task at hand and no way intimidated by sk because that would have placed them in a terrible position going into this next set now we're all yeah. even i mean this now has blown this set wide open as we go into gem fort next a gem grab SK have been responded to, and uh, they won't like it. And I don't think by any means they was bringing in Gia and making that swap. I don't think that at all. I think Gia played fantastically well, honestly. Yeah. And a lot of the times was able to defend what was a really tough comp to go up against when you're playing a tick. But Foot were able to hold themselves, and that speaks volumes to me. I've got to agree there. I, I really like the teamwork that we're seeing happen here. You see a Ope goes into the ultimate, pushes players out, and then comes back to team up. He does the same thing here, uh, or in the next clip. Watch, we'll see Ope take to the sky, use the super, and then combine with the fang. Right here, boom, same spot. That's yeah. intentional. Every time fang goes in, Ope's already in the sky, landing down by Semantic's target. That combo, so much fun to watch. They're able to go ahead and, and grab this one. Yeah, I fully agree. I praise you for bringing that to our attention because that is a really key component as to what made Foot so dangerous in those scenarios. But as I was just saying about Gia, look at the look at the stats. I mean, that says a lot to me. Seven takedowns, the most of anyone on yeah. the board, and I think he had a great set. Regardless, though, SK will be bringing back in Jetton and subbing out Gia, trying to give themselves maybe some synergy of a advantage there to be found. As you know, that was the uh, the roster lineup thinking back to Kessel Cup earlier this week where SK did get the win over foot as a 3-1. That's the last round in the lower bracket. But uh, certainly, you know, looking at the first set of this particular matchup, it did seem like SK looks better with Jetson, so I don't necessarily disagree with the substitution. I think that's uh, best to go back to the times when they had foot under their thumb, and that did seem to be the case earlier today in Bounty. But will Gem Grab be the same? That's the question. And Gem 4, we haven't seen it for a while, but 
I really do like this matchup, but boy, oh boy, things have changed since the last time we saw it. The indestructible walls now are more important than ever before, and it does mean that if you get a Meg in the middle of a Poco, you're going to struggle to get them out. Uh, Pam used to have a great time here, kind of dwindled away a little bit across the regions, but nonetheless, we saw that very brawler played out here earlier today in the APEC region, so like me, you know, they know, because <laughs> I really <laughs> do think Pam here has a great time, but uh, for sure, Let's see what the options are. Rico banned, very important for Foot because SK would love it for iChaos. Med banned for SK because they know that Foot would love it. And Stu coming in as the first <laughs> aggressive brawler to the table. And I really do like it. It could be OPE, it could be Stomantic, but either way, it's a win-win scenario for me. I like the Sandy ban here as well. We're seeing, we're seeing a little bit of a reminder yeah. that she exists, you know? Or, or he exists, rather, and... and uh... Just like seeing seeing Sandy in the meta, the stew on Gem Fort always going to be a fan of that. Uh, with the unbreakable walls, as RT is locked in here, I raise the single word question: throwers. Good question. Actually, to be fair, yeah, I mean, it's probably normally uh, later pick Amber coming in where well, they can see the big picture, you know. Sprout, if SK were going to go for it, needs to kind of land it though here as they are. Well, actually, yeah. we've got the third and final pick rather. So actually, they're in a perfect spot for something along those lines. And going back to Sandy's, once we mentioned, we saw it earlier today, didn't we, in, uh, in Hard Rock Mine. It was a basic attack damage buff of 40 HP, but enough to warrant the ban that we're seeing on the side of foot there. As, like you say, just creeping slightly back into the meta. Uh, definitely lacking though a gem carrier. I'd imagine the Stu wants to stay aggressive on the side lanes here for foot. So. I personally do love the Pam idea. I'm going to be taking in the Gus. I don't know whether I'm a massive fan of that particular pick, but nonetheless, if it does go on the lane side, then it will have some decent range to go up against things like the Amber. Mm -hmm. Let's see what they're going to be following up with, though. As also, a last second shield on the stew, never a, never a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just a shield to anyone last second. is always going to yep. be a good time. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I don't know, for me, I just kind of don't really take to, to Gus, despite the uh, the play rates for him being incredibly high, um, and also the win rates, so I, I can't fault it. Ems coming in for foot. That's an interesting one. Yeah, Ems. You know, I guess at the end of the day, you know, just, just area control. Ems is, Ems, is a, Ems is a brawler that I feel like we have approached as a niche character. She has a very specific reason to pick her, but more and more, uh, teams are just kind of going with M's, and, and, and it's been working out. So I don't. I'll be honest, man. I don't love this draft from Foot East. I was gonna say the I, same thing <laughs> on the either side. Actually, it's a bit weird, isn't it? <laughs> it is. I I immediately like SK's draft a little bit better because I think that Colonel Ruffs is always good. Stu's always good, but Colonel Ruffs is always good in a more wide brush sort of way he can do the damage he can help his teammates he can drop the bat like he can do a whole bunch of stuff whereas Stu is just always good because he's always Stu so I like the roughs a little bit more and also Amber I think is very 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 strong so are either of these compositions getting my number one comp of the day award probably not it doesn't exist <laughs> but still I like SK's a little more I think the Rust is interesting because obviously Chaos is such an established, you know, Rico player anyway, so we can really use those bounce shots to great avail and already gets that supply drop taken care of, allowing more maneuverability on that back left-hand side pocket. But no Pam, you know, no Jean. Interesting decision making on both sides. I mean, the Crow would have been great. Maybe it would have struggled against the Rust, but you know, I definitely feel there's a couple of orders which could have definitely played into things a bit more. Regardless, it does feel like so far SK are making their comp work just a little bit better. Now as well with the break on the right-hand side from Jetton, burning down the bush, it's going to allow to see that crossover. And that's key, really is to know exactly where your opposition lies. I think SK, their comp, I'm swaying more towards that break there on the top left, actually just isolating, you know, the uh, the bush, getting rid of it. And Foot have got a lot of catching up to do. Just a little bit. Trailing by three gems and they don't have mid control. Jetton's doing a good job here dealing with Semantic. This Stu has not been able to get involved, and just now he tries. Can't take down the Amber, needs help from the mid lane. 
But the countdown's already going. 10 seconds to go. 10 gems on Yashi. And that's going to be it for SK Gaming. Taking game number one of set number two. Three. Set number three. Comfortably so as well. I, I gotta say, I did feel like SK just seemed very much in command, in control. Didn't really seem to get tested too much by foot in that last game, at least. Definitely got the better draft, in my opinion. But foot chose theirs for a reason as well. We can't forget that. We've yet to kind of see where their thought process lies. Just wasting think... no time at all to get into the mid. <laughs> Go on. Yeah, I think this M's makes more sense when you have mid control and aim to keep it. I, mm. I can't imagine hinging my entire draft on that. Uh, but either way, Foot now have their position in the mid. And now let's see if Ope can do what I've put out there. Maybe that's what the M's is here for. And Chaos definitely kept on the outskirts of this mid section. Six gems to zero as I Chaos wins the battle. And the other battle won as well, so it's a two-on-one. Drage pushed out, and now it's SK's turn to own the mid. Yeah, big aggressive plays from Chaos. Drage still healing off the back of it, in fact, and shortly tapped up by Yoshi. We're going to get back into the mid now anytime soon. But uh, the problem that I have with the foot comp, really, for me, is the fact that they are really playing to the you know, to the command. And they're at bay to, to SK, aren't they? Because SK can break open, take away some of the bush. They can shape the map to how they want it to be, when they want it to be. And foot can't do any of that. They can really only depend upon their aggression. But when SK know exactly where they are over time, it's really the early game where foot can thrive. And that's now past us. They've got the gem lead for now. But have they got enough to be able to whistle down this utility more and, Ooh, and get the gems Sim. in their pocket. Big takedown from Yoshi, and now it's strange again. That same story of the 1v3, and oh no, it's going from bad to worse. They'll leave the gems there, but they'll come back and it'll be probably eight gems apiece. It's just SK looking control, don't they? They really do. Yeah, Sim a little aggressive. Basically, Ope seems to be going for these plays, and Sim tries to finish them off. This time, it works out. But the other times, both players fall, and then Dre just pushed out by himself. Foot are able to regain their gems, regain mid, and now they're gonna retreat. They've got 10 seconds to go. I Chaos on the left-hand side, dealt with by Semantic. Mid lane, dealt with by no. the rest of the squad, but the kill is good already. And so, Foot Esports will start the countdown again. This time they might have a better shot. Never mind. They gotta be a bit careful here. I mean, that was definitely looking to me like a surefire countdown in favor, but the gems are still spawning in. And there's 10 now. They've gotta go for a takedown. OP is low and probably walks down 180 HP above his head. Surely can someone finish him off? Chaos is trying for it. Huge gush shield to keep him in the mix. Not the cleanest. Not the cleanest of countdowns, but the lead up to it, I want to bring it back to that because that was where the genius really did show its form. I think the positioning for OPE towards that final gem spawning to allow that first countdown that we saw really did you know, just shut SK out of the question. Allowing them to get on that countdown was definitely a far better play than what we saw when they were on that countdown. Reset. Games in each corner. I chaos the first one to fall here. Nice pickups by SK Gaming. Although Drage this time standing his ground. Drage has been retreating most of the time. And now Semantic getting aggressive. And that's been the bane of Foot's existence most of the time. But if it works out t two out of ten times and those two times win you the game, is it worth? I guess that's the question. Sticky oil down for Jetson. He won't want to burn that. He'll want to keep Semantic right there. Keeping him vulnerable, and yeah, that's gonna be surely ooh, a trade off. I'm sure Semantic will take it. Big shield from Drage keeps both himself and OPE uh, present in the mid. But amplified shot there from Yoshi applied to OPE. And more slow again, just it, it's becoming that same story with Amber now. It's it's almost better yeah. to have your super down and not really burn it, isn't it? Semantic knows yeah. it, comes in with the aggressive play, gets to take down this time round, and that's making it a three versus two, but. SK just continue the assault. Drage slow low and goes down yet again. It's going to force the that gems. Big. He's got to retreat here. Oh, but the secondary kill after the fact. 
Doesn't even matter that Fuka to regain their gems. It is a two gem lead now, give or take. That last one likely belongs to the red team. So SK are one away from the countdown and their lead should be such that they can full retreat and not have to deal with a match. Drage gets poked and popped and that's a blue team countdown. SK Gaming on the good side. What can you really do? The sticky oil there in the mid was just so suppressive, I'm sure. Frustration building within foot. They just wants to go in and just go and force it. You can't really do that. And that's what we're seeing SK is able to handle this situation so easily, so successfully. Thoroughly deserving of that win, in my opinion. They played it perfect. Just ensured that they had everything knuckled down and that was a huge set for them to win. Largely in part, in my opinion, by Chess in there, just choosing to lay those supers down and just allow Foot to dig their own grave, really. Very, very professional win from SK Gaming here. I feel like this was a situation where we really got a chance to see kind of SK approach the situation, assess the situation, download what their opponent's gonna do, bring out the note, but this was pretty much how you earn a pro Brawl Stars victory. Nothing was given to them, Foot played well, and honestly, there was nothing outrageous that really made me go, what's happening here? You know, ultimately, I think the picks were a little strange, but I don't think it necessarily lost them. The match is what I want to say. I think it really was how they wound up playing their picks. Ark, I noticed that, I, I noted that Semantic was, I'm going to say over aggressive, but that same over aggression is what earned Foot some victories. So I want to sit here and kind of attack the draft, but the M's cleared out the bush as well. And I want to sit here and attack Semantics' play, but when they won, it was off of that aggression. So ultimately, I guess their game plan didn't work out as cleanly as they would have liked, but I think they did what they intended. Yeah, I agree. You know, it's one thing with Semantic because, like, when he goes in the aggressive, it's more often than not what wins him the trades, isn't it? You know, and sometimes that aggressiveness can go against you. One of the things for sure, though, is that, you know, Chaos and Jetson, phenomenal, phenomenal games, didn't they? I mean, 13 takedowns, 12 takedowns, Dracius with the two. Dracius really struggled a little bit in that last game. I mean, again, largely in part to what Jetson was able to do when it came to that gear and, you know, you mentioned, you know, you've got your, your notepad and pen out, F dot. I mean, the one thing that I wrote down in mind was to simply, you know, nerf that gear. <laughs> Amber's <laughs> mythic gear is looking very, very daunting and competitive, isn't it? And you can just kind of see how much that slow really just evolves the super and taking it away from something of a damage deal is just something of a just complete area of denial. And oh, yeah. you know, if I was put, I would be, I would have been uh, pretty frustrated in that scenario as well. I probably would have gotten an overly aggressive as they did as well. Regardless though, this is a chance to wipe the slate clean and a chance for Foot to try to rekindle things and bring back a set. And, you know, who knows, Dot? Maybe we'll go to the fifth and final set. We haven't done that at all today yet, have we? It's been a while, I believe. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> but right away, Drage, Semantic, open. they go, so about that Amber. And they just ban it. No, thank you. Obviously, on parallel plays, I think she's a little bit more attractive, but still getting rid of the hot hands. A good look. Stu, one more time being selected here for the red squad. And again, it's 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 a tumultuous pick. That's what I'm going to say. It is spicy because of how we have seen it play. I think it's a double-edged sword. That's what that that's the phrase I'm going to use. Stu has been a double-edged blade for this foot team. And so across the way, Janet, first pick for SK Gaming. I think it's a solid pick for me from foot. Otis coming in for SK. Again, just to ensure they've got something in the back pocket for any potential tanks here, as Ash is definitely up there for me. I actually think Jesse has a place here. I mean, it was banned previously, uh, I think with the Navi matchup earlier today. And it has a spot. I know it gets a lot of hate, and I'm sure the Twitch chat's going crazy at me right now for saying that, but it is an option, nonetheless. Uh, they have a ban. I think it was a very smart one from Foot, not based on Pond the last set, but simply because the ability to burn down the bush on this particular map definitely opens up a lot of doors. Pam as well has a great place here as well. Carl coming in for Foot. 
The aggressive flying hook in and the supers to be able to match. We've already seen how well it fares for OPE and B going to match it as well. A bit less sold on the B myself. I mean, it's always a good one, isn't it? I mean, it's top three yeah. in the meta right now, let's be honest. So it doesn't really have a, a bad place anywhere, but um, let's see how it fares. I, I quite like what Foot are working with. Let's, let's say that. Honey molasses. That's, yeah. that's my, the end of my analysis. <laughs> <laughs> There's B. Guess I go on the <laughs> See you later. Um, <laughs> definitely, definitely a big, a big look here on Hot Zone. Gia is back in, by the way. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I, I like, yeah, I, I like this move. We don't, or, or I like teams that do this move in general. We see stamina play around with the four man roster. Uh, SK Gaming play with the four man roster. What brings Gia in and out? I don't know just yet. We'll have to take a look at trends and when they switch these players in. Or, you know, make land so we can ask you. Uh, <laughs> it seems I guess like I when set SK a message, get a set lead, yeah. isn't it? When, when they have a little bit of a set to play with at the moment, it seems to be just kind of like, you know, bringing him in. And again, think I, I think... Go on. Is he aggressive? That you, you think, like, it's uh, bring GA in for extra aggression. It's a, more of a gamble, but more win more type deal? I think at the moment, SK know that they've got a great thing going with Jet, and there's been a definite shift in the way that they are playing with him, for sure. And I think that it wasn't really fair for, you know, Gear to go out on that last matchup as well in, in Knockout, because he had the most kills out of any of the players in that set. Let's be honest, sure. that was the stats. So yeah, I don't seven. think he had a bad game at all. He just had the worst brawler to be able to combat a lot of what they had to throw at it. So I think bringing him back in now makes a lot of sense. And playing on the spike, I think it's a great brawler to have here, great for control. and. Already, it's giving SK a commanding position here as they already approach deep into the mid. And so far, we're tied at about 22 each. And it's going to be I Chaos making the first move as we see SK Gaming trying to push into this top side. Ope still alive, able to deal, and there is that honey. See you later. Great job played by Foot, specifically Ope dealing with the aggressive I Chaos. Did it translate to score? Not necessarily, but it denied SK's push, which is huge. It was a pretty decent defense for the most part, but it does say to me that SK mean business. They've already capped almost the entirety of their own spawn side, and that was the one chance realistically there for Foot to contest it, because now SK can just go straight to that top right and focus all their attention and all their aggression on it. In the meanwhile, Foot are trying to play catch up a little bit to it. Drage goes in, gets the takedown. The mute is there. Will he trickle down? No, Gia going to finish him off regardless with the curveball there as well. It's neck and neck, but again, the fact that SK have already capped their own zone does speak volumes here, and Foot are playing a little bit of catch up, to be honest. Just a little bit. This top side already secured, and Yashi just hanging out, building a house. Not threatened at all by Ope as he's kept in bay, at bay by I Chaos. And here comes Drage, and that's going to be over as well. And so SK Gaming winning each of their important duels here. Because of that, they're going to be inching towards victory 90% and counting. Let me scratch the end counting part. But SK Gaming certainly in the driver's seat. Got to take care of Drage, but they won't be able to close up. So Gia does from a distance. Foot cannot break this mid door though. They really can't. I think Drage is not running protective pirouette either. I'm not sure that that was intentional. I assume so. But um, it's, it's definitely, oh, it could be the skin animation to be fair. But True. one thing's for sure is that SK just looks very, very comfortable. I don't think that Foot were realistically expecting the amount of aggression that SK showed in the early outset of that game. And that took them by surprise. This time round, they're more savvy to it. But they've got to respond with aggression of their own. They've got to go realistically towards the SK uh, objective at the same time as them and try to give themselves a bit of a, of a, a leg up in this game because yeah. SK are now on match point. They are one game away from making the grand finals in what is their first monthly final of this entire year. SK Gaming made the push in and Foot played good defense. But the difference is SK Gaming then just won again. Foot never really had an offensive opportunity. Very different, even this early on in game number two, as Foot not only win the defensive matchups, but now they're stepping forward. Drage very aggressive and wins it. Falls after the fact, but this is already 
a better match, uh, a better game than Food had in game number one. Hundred percent. They've done exactly what I said. Just go on the zone, play aggressive, and try to you know, return what SK fed to them in the previous one. But now they have lost control. And at the moment, SK are very close to finishing their zone. Now fully capped, so they can go again, focusing on that top right. And this is exactly what happened previously. But they've got to hold their own. They've got to secure some kills and assert their authority here because time is effectively against them. They haven't really kept much of their own zone either, but that's kind of money in the bank almost, and I hope they haven't placed too much of a uh, of, of an objective lead over that idea because it can go from bad to worse. The Mantis got to clear up this trade here, get some good shots, and now the spawn in from OPE secures it. So not a bad position, but they got to get ahead, back up the map, secure their own zone, and bring this back down to business. SK now back in the driver's seat. EA getting tooled around by Stu while the rest of the team deals with the other side. All right, Chaos survives. No one else does. And there's the end of it. Food has 72%. Everything else needs to come from an aggressive play. SK Gaming, same deal. But SK has been more aggressive, more upfront, and more pushed forward than the red team. In fact, there's another big W. Yashi steps on the point. Gia and I Chaos healing up. And this is where things get very sticky, don't they? For foot. They're gonna go on the aggressive, trying to double down here, and Chaos slows. Gotta take to the skies, which he does now, but it's allowed Drage to get on that zone. Buy some time, have some man to come beneath it. But the mute spot on there from Yoshi. Drage though stays alive in such a crucial time to do so. It's neck and neck. McGee on the zone is speeding in more objective power to SK. Only 10% left. They've gotta shake him. They've gotta shake him now, and they've got to start to come together here or it's going to be all over Huge. and SK Gaming make it to the grand finals of their first monthly final of the year what a fantastic play out of these guys you can see Pedro and everybody just well earned well deserved celebration from this team who has sort of Scooby Doo ran into 2023 you know, in the, in the first frame, they stay in one place and then they zoom. Well, they're hoping for the zoom now because they certainly haven't moved up much in the beginnings of the year. Now positioned to play in the finals against Navi. That's Who correct, is, right? <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. It's been one of those days. I fully agree. Uh, <laughs> who would have thought, though, you know, coming into today, uh, you know, looking back at the qualifiers as well, because SK, they, they narrowly qualified. They were up against the match point, I think twice over in, uh, what is the best of three, and they almost went out. Just It was very, very clutch. But mm -hmm. then from that to today, to knocking out Zayt's division in the quarterfinals, a team that have been number one in the region, winning every monthly final to date. And now they're in the grand finals. Uh, it's absolutely insane. But they are doing it, and they have done it. And if they win it, they've earned it. Yep. And they absolutely have, man. I mean, it's been fun watching them. These teams have, and that's the thing, earned is the word I want to focus on here today. Because, again, I, I, I've said it once or twice already, where we've seen some of these teams kind of okey-doke themselves in the semifinals. Maybe the other team just, like, drafts very, uh, how do we say, Troll, that's not what happened here today, all right? SK Gaming came out here and was the better team in both situations. And on the top side, Navi did the same dang thing. These are good teams playing great Brawl Stars. iChaos is your MVP as voted on by you at event.brawlstars.com. Can't say I disagree with that. I think Yashi was a perfect role player. Gie and Jetten swapping in and out. Jetten had some MVP performances, but I, I agree. was the I constant for this team, if you ask me. I mean, I've got production, uh, production asking me my predictions for the grand finals. You know, when it was SK versus Zeta, I went with Zeta. When it was SK versus Foot, I went with Foot. I am now a believer. I'm putting out there. I, I'm, I'm saying SK for the grand finals now. And that, if you asked me at the beginning of today, 
I, I would never have put out there. I would never have come <laughs> to that conclusion that SK had what it takes to get this far, let alone take the whole entire day. But they are looking stronger and stronger, and you just can't deny that. That's absolutely true. Teams looking stronger. And our team looking stronger as well as we draft Teddy back into the mix. What's good, buddy? How you doing? Dude, I mean, wow. Crazy semifinals. Expect the unexpected in the MEA. And it feels like this month has delivered just as much, if not even more, than the previous two. I'm so excited for those grand finals. Wow. Yeah, I think delivery absolutely is what's happening. We're getting what we asked for, and this is how we got here. Essentially, a couple of the early matches, Dogster Lobster, number one, number high-ranked team, doesn't matter to Na'Vi. Zeta Division, high-ranked team, doesn't matter to SK. And Reply Totem, high-ranked team, doesn't matter to Foot. Both SK and Foot won via reverse sweeps, by the way. That's why we're making such a big deal about it in SK. And Navi 3-2 above Queso as well. Take a screenshot, because the bracket's not going to look like this an awful lot. This might just be a rare bracket arc. It's the most unpredictable we've seen this region <laughs> all year long. And I'm so happy to see it because, you know, every month upon month, you know, Zeta were just dominating. And it kind of felt like maybe EMEA, you know, coming from 2022 was no longer that region, which was just completely unpredictable. Every month, something different occurring. This is that month and it has caused a huge shift. And I I'm just talking over my predictions. Don't want to really dial dodge in too deep, if I'm honest. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> me and Tony are saying SK for the grand final. I thought you're going with Navi. <laughs> I am, yes. I, I went, you know, I went SK in the quarterfinal three and 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 nailed it. That's Navi, I think. Look, looking at how SK played up against their opposition of, of football, I look at Navi and I think that Navi might approach the game in a way that throws SK for a loop. We'll see. We will see. But I do think the SK Navi matchup is. Maybe not even, but very close. Wow. As we gear things up, let's focus on Navi first. MMA, Cube, and Angel Boy. Have had a monthly finals in the pocket before, but didn't escape the quarterfinals. Today, coming back fresh, they're able to make the grand finals and have looked the best I've seen this team look for a very long time. I can't deny it. The pride back in February by Reply Totem was a 3-1 scoreline. And we didn't see them in March. They did not qualify, uh, did not qualify for the March monthly finals. This month, <laughs> it's just a night and day difference, isn't it? Taking down Team Kesso earlier today in the semi-finals. And a huge win for them. Looks the Lobster in the quarterfinals. This match as well, I've got to say Angel Boy, just choosing the Dynamite, staring straight into the eyes of the surgeon. The Primo just didn't didn't care that he <laughs> just absolutely owned it but i would say that for me this is probably the biggest test yet and if they can just go one step further it'll be such a huge moment for them i i i, I think i'm correct in saying that they did not win a monthly final in emea yet they've, they've they've won one in their own region back in 2021 but not in emea so this would be a first for them but let's focus now on sk SK is quite a different picture when it comes to winning monthly finals in the EMEA. They have a ton of them under their belt, but 2023 has been a very quiet year for them. Actually quite loud, but loud as in, you know, people were talking about how much they were losing and how much they were not qualifying for big events, including the first two monthly finals. But it seems like the losing streak is at an end as they are now in the grand finals looking to climb back onto their throne and I, I i'm impressed i mean i have them winning against zeta because i assume that you know the amount of preparation that would get into it would be enough i didn't have them winning against foot but now i mean i'm a believer too i'm also converted aren't i think they've earned it absolutely so and you know Swapping out Gie for Jet, and I, I think that's the perfect way to go about bringing in a fourth person into the equation. I mean, sometimes we do see, don't we, with teams where they have a fourth to the roster, it can cause more harm than good. But today, I mean, it's been looking really, really good for SK in that respect. Ab yeah, absolutely. I, I, I am a big fan of this approach. 
I think having more options is better than having fewer options, straight up and down. And so, you know, uh, a lot of the secret sauce as to when those players come in and out, we will figure that out the more we will try to figure that out the more we see these squads for sure but at the end of the day i uh i will always be a fan of more options than none so will the four-man roster reign supreme i mean that's the question we ask you guys teddy and arc grand finals is all yours see you on the other side let's get it cube gonna pick up Shot it first, the bat's being Max Grom, and I think I saw a Sprout there before the body showed its face for SK. And again, that is a common pick for them, and it was a Sprout. Gene, Tick, Bell coming in as well for SK. I mean, so far, as the, for me, Tony, this is looking like a, a big SK comp, but that Sprout ban really is looming over things, because that's what, for me, gave SK that huge quarterfinals win against State's Division. It worked out tremendously well in dry season. I mean, at this point, it's an every thrower ban, uh, pretty much, you know, besides like Barley, Willow, and Dynamite. You see the beat to match with the Sharpshooters, also be, uh, you know, a little bit preemptive towards some potential tanky ideas. After all, this SK was last pick, and it's when you do want to uh, bring in that sort of X Factor sort of brawlers. I like what I'm seeing so far on both sides. Barely standard at this point. This last pick from Navi could already smell trouble. I say lock in the gray, which I'm gonna be honest Interesting. with you today. I was not <laughs> expecting to see this much gray in the monthly finals. We saw a lot of it and I didn't like much of it. I'm with you too. I mean, Grey was the very reason on dry season that we saw Zayt's division fail in my opinion, but a lot of that was in hand due to the Sprout and that is banned. So maybe we'll see a bit more of a moment to be had here for Grey as Penny locked in for SK. And I mean, that is an SK comp if I ever saw one. Penny, Bonnie and Bell coming in. It probably would have been the Sprout if that hadn't been banned, let's be honest. But uh, I don't know if this is necessarily what I would say is a Navi comp um, on the other side of things. And that could be very well a good thing for them because I have been really impressed to see how they've approached the uh, drafts today, taking away some of their more predictable qualities and replacing them with others. I think it's a, a really refreshing thing to see and possibly a lot of the reason to the merit as to why they've made the grand finals here today as well. So let's see whether they could do what Zeta Division couldn't with the gray as we go into our first matchup of today's grand finals. Fight for the blue star has begun. Seems like Q was tempted, but you know, she gets punished early on. Beautiful TP from Angel Boy, and off the bat, it's gonna be five stars. Make it seven for Navi. What an explosive way to kick off the grand final. SK Gaming already trailing, and are gonna have to try to be creative here. One kill onto Q will help close the gap, and it's now four stars still in favor of Navi. Did, did I chaos forget that Janet does piercing damage there? Because uh, he seemed to be using the salty barrel as a protective measure, um, but MMA just shot straight through and took him down. Regardless, though, we have a chance to get a bit more of a healthy lead here. Jetson tapping up Angel Boy goes for the jump, and it is definitely misplaced here. And a big portal from Angel Boy will secure his protective measure. Ten stars to the five. Navi closing in. There's already a big scoreline for what is just a minute left remaining. Begs the question, could Navi do the unthinkable and end things early at the 20-star count? SK don't think that that is the case. They've got the penalty turret down and they're going on the aggressive. There's a lot of stars, let's be honest, on the head of Angel Boy there and MMA. So definitely plenty of time for a catch-up. And Paul, not going to connect this time from Angel Boy. That was his last one as well. But he got some good value from them earlier. Let's see. SK can close the gap a little bit before a final push. One more kill here would definitely help. But instead, it may come down to a team wipe. At the end, MMA is going to be flying up, but he's low HP. That also means that he can't reset his heals in the meantime. Q, also low. Kill from Yasha last on MMA. 10 to 10, but Blue Star still favoring Na'Vi. They still need a kill onto anyone jump in at last is it enough no not quite cube 63 hp to survive off this engagement but that's just about enough for navi to lock in game number one a very strong start for navi and especially because this cave just come off the back of the game they've been warmed up now 
So for that same reason, maybe the break was definitely advantageous for Navi. Regardless, though, some lessons to be learned. SK went a bit too overly aggressive early on in the last game. I want to see them be a bit more slower paced in their approach. Oh, that's not a great start at all. One falls, the second falls. Don't you chaos left? Five stars as quickly as that into the pocket of Navi. And again, Cube displaying that pin as we saw previously today. Navi do seem to be in high spirits, it's got to be said. Now she needs to be careful. Pool is there, and that's going to be a freebie for Navi. Well done by Angel Boat. Jedin also, just in so much trouble, is going to jump away. Oh. But Cube is ready. Greets him on landing with a supercharged shot. And 11 stars to zero, an even more convincing start from Navi in game two. Another TP from Angel Boy, and she's getting all those finishes unpunished. The Salty Barrel will get pulled instead of high kills, but MMA still finds the kill. With five stars left, and about a minute left on the clock, this may very much be a game going all the way to 20. The first time today could ever, might even be the first time ever in the BSC if it happens. 45 seconds, 45 it's seconds happen. is a great deal amount of time. It is going to happen, I feel. A great TP in there for Angel Boy, but taken care of. It's got to be said. I Chaos on the right, trying to find the angle. You're just trying to heal up as well. Jetson, maybe a bit overzealous here as Cube has got the amplified shot. Angel Boy going in aggressive, but there it is. The first time ever, the bounty has ended early as Navi assert their authority over the situation and leave SK in the dust. Traditionally, Bungie has always been one of the slowest game modes where the games last for the longest, even more before when, you know, there was no blue star and we would get tons of draws. But Navi, they have none of that today, making it um, one of the, well, actually, this could very much be the fastest VSC Bounty set of all time. Uh, very much possible. I mean, it's probably going to get overtaken very quickly, you know, but it, it begins here. It begins here. Navi was an absolutely dominant performance. Game one was good. Game two was flawless. I think it has to be. Unless we saw it happen in APAC earlier today, officially that is the fastest game because it ended earlier than any other game in Bounty history. <laughs> Let's be honest. But I think it does speak volumes. You know, Navi just came in completely undeterred by everything that SK have shown today. Uh, you know, again, this is the team that knocked out Zeta Division in the first possible stage. The team that have won every monthly final. And then put just now, in, in spectacular fashion, they don't look phased by it at all. It, it, Navi are not a team that, like, ever seemed troubled by the situation upon them. They just focus down, hunker down, and let the, sp let the stats speak for themselves. Six for Cube, five for Angel Boy, three for MMA. And even with MMA having the lowest, the takedowns on the side of Navi, still equal to that as the most on the side of SK. Great DPS to add to things, 250, the most there for Angel Boy. What a storming start for Navi, and I hope I haven't made my predictions on SK too strong too soon. But what a huge moment for Navi. Again, a team that have never won a monthly final in EMEA. That is the way you want to start it if you think you're onto the cusp of victory. I just want to commend Angel Boy once again the stats had him ton damage out of everyone and there's a lot of kills as well and we were doubting that gray pick but i mean it's certainly delivered and that's the beauty as well of not just drafting well but drafting well you know with your team's teammates skills and what they are comfortable playing and gray is definitely a bit more of a niche brawler at the moment and one that they were able to make shine more than any other team in EMEA today. It's great to see what the thought process was behind Grey in the quarterfinals, wasn't it? Because the Sprout was what really caused the problem. But having that out of the mix being banned shows me that Navi are really well prepared today when it comes to their drafts. They've been working on it a lot. And just to mention as well, Gia's subbing back in for Jetan now. So a big change on the side of SK as their bans are in as Max, B and Primo. I love the Primo ban here. Surely picking up something in the scrimmages of Navi then to go so heavily on that particular brawler on the side of Navi was Stu, Janet and Max also as that Bonnie first pick from SK occurring from last year they really do value Bonnie in pretty much every map mode it seems but uh, the Meg's available and that to me is a concern and likely one that Navi are gonna not hesitate to snap up either in this pick or the second 
We haven't really seen any combinations of Meg and healers yet today. I thought the Navi would be the squad to do so if they went for it. Let's see whether they do. If it's Ash and Meg, I, I'm kind of a bit worried, but there's still plenty of counters to be had for SK if that were the case. Maybe they're not going to go Meg, and that would be a first. <laughs> Let's be honest today. If Meg's not bad and it's pretty much picked either first or then the switch over. But I do feel like it wouldn't be the worst of ideas to have the counter of a spike or something to pair with the Ash or the Loom and kind of really double down on their chances to have the Ash prevail. As, like I said, plenty of options for SK to be able to counter that particular brawler. Oh dear, it is what I expected. And uh, yeah, SK have got to now pull out all the stops for these counters. That is a very, very gnarly looking cop, Teddy. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to be SK right now. I really <laughs> wouldn't. I mean, Navi's drafts today have been absolutely on point, to be honest. There's been creativity excellently executed, too. Yeah. And then, you know, stuff like this, which is not particularly creative, but it's just a smart Works. thing to do. I mean, it's <laughs> meta picks that are dominant and that force um, your opponent's hand. Barley is an interesting response here. I mean, Surge makes sense, right? Barley, I'm not sure. This is not a map where I like him particularly much in the first place, but I'm trying to find a good reason. I mean, it can do okay <laughs> on lane. I'm just scared he's gonna get W keyed by the Ash. I think this could be a Lou gut feeling, but if it's Gear on the Barley, that makes a lot of sense to me because ultimately he has always been a solid pair of hands with the Barley. Could very well be the reason why SK have actually subbed him out and brought him in for Jet and Willow coming in. Now, this is an interesting one. Every time I've seen Willow played, I've not seen it win until today in APAC, where it did get a win and it was in Brawl, but it may have even been Bill Goal, which was the map. I think that at the moment, she really just sits way outside the meta, but in Brawl, she has a place. If you haven't necessarily seen yet, Willow has the capabilities of having a super which then takes the mind control over your opposition, which does open up a big opportunity to score the goal as your opposition. You can basically, uh, you know, pass the ball into your goal, you can self-score effectively. If you're able to you know, have the mind control connect with your opposition, pick up the ball and place it in their own net, that is now a thing with Willow. So I do understand it, but it is a risky one. It's definitely a risky one. It's going to pay off here for Navi. Well, early on, it is not a jumping onto MMA. It's going to be a free kill, and Yashi just walks it in as escape. Take a, an early goal, or score, rather, an early goal. 25 seconds in, I kills his jump. is not quite going to make the landing as Angel Boy is ready. Q Need to pass the ball upwards. Yashi was a defensive jump. It's low HP across the board, but Gear goes down, and... Now Navi return the favor. There's a goal of their own. One minute and 45 seconds in. Whoever scores next is going to take the game. Big return for Navi. They love that toolbox gadget for Meg. But hey, it works for them. I'm all for it. Big suppressiveness onto Yoshi there and a bit of a helping hand from MMA. He's doing pretty well considering that Gie is such an accomplished Farley. He really is. But again, I want to see more use of that super really to warrant the pick for the Willow. I kind of prefer any other thrower at this point in time, even the Dynamite, Grom, they're all up there. Willow's definitely the bottom of the pack. Nonetheless, SK on the ropes here. And Cube knows it, big swipe. Hell slow gets them taken down. Yoshi unable to contest it. And Gear as well, low. Putting MMA into a great spot. The super pass is there. And as is the goal, Navi respond with back to back goals, leaving SK in the dust yet again. Smiles occurring on the face there of MMA and Q, but again, just playing it slow, steady, staying with focus. So important in these scenarios, but that was a convincing turnaround, it's got to be said. Yeah, by the looks of it, I, I, I do agree. I mean, Willow is not looking particularly strong, but nevertheless, Navi, you know, if they win two lanes, they're fine. The Barley just doesn't really have the stopping power when the Meg is inside her mech and the ash is pushing forwards but there's a team wipe early on here sk again able to score early on about the same time it took in game one the problem was the aftermath afterwards 
where Navi were just able to get two goals in a row and take away that game. Huge last call for Guillet. Pass through is there. Chaos jumps in, gets the knockback as well. MMA just able to buy a bit of time, but is it going to be enough time? A bit of a fumble from Mike Hales can quite get the ball to be passed, but Guillet is enough. Just in the nick of time. SK will take the game over incredibly quickly, wasn't it? Let's be honest. But nonetheless, back in the fight. We wouldn't have it any other way, let's be honest. Just goes to show this comp does have legs. I do worry a little bit on that right hand side for Navi with that Willow. Guille just really made that last game count. Yeah. SK can bring back a set, it'll be massive for them. Definitely going in to increase their confidence coming into this next set to come. But that is a bit of ahead of ourselves. Let's see how this one goes first. Jump from Yashi, gets a kill, but Akios is alone in defense now. He gets the swipe, gets the kill. Akios looking for the trade. It's gonna be low HP in stand, and Q will disengage. Akios still on stage one. Looking to get that second stage, so he has an extra movement speed that will help him navigate through the map much more smoothly. MMA taking tons of damage, and Gear just playing outside the range nicely. Yashi with a snipe. To the left, Akios doesn't have jump, but he doesn't lock it now. Will go down. Two on two, where SK know they can't score, so they'll approach things more defensively. He is doing work. His DPS has got to be pretty high, but now three versus one. Like Akios jumps in, gets the knockback, gets the ball as well. Buying so much time for his team to respawn back in. And Q without the mech. It'll be lower HP than normal. Oh, will they get it? Yoshi with a great defense. Oh my word! The control and that is what we were waiting to see from MMA the willow pick comes out strong finally for them we were waiting to see the impact of that willow pick and at last we do but there's a chance here still for SK gear pushing forwards will go down to the poison and actually this opportunity shouldn't be allowed to be turned into a goal I guess will go down by the looks of it, we have a little bit of a reset. With ever so slightly more mid control here for Navi. SK Gaming, they need a goal, otherwise, they're going to be down two cents. They're going to recover from that goal as well. I mean, it's definitely, it does pack a sting. I can assure you, when you're effectively scoring against your own team, it's not just the mind control in the mechanics, but it also is one for yourselves with only 15 seconds remaining now. But the ball in it currently stands, I just don't see a way for SK to be able to get to it in any shape or form. Yoshi gonna make an attempt, but not gonna happen. Navi really did well there, didn't they? Let's be honest. And they claw it back. Beautiful stuff from them. What a strong showing from Navi today. A set away from taking their first ever Motley final victory. And when I say victory, I mean not just a game, not just a match, taking the whole thing. They've won some before in ECA way back in 2021. But that's two years ago. And ever since then, they have not been monthly finals champions ever. Last year, when it came down to things in the final month, it was their best performance thing to date. I think they made the grand finals of that month. And it just wasn't to be, was it? This time around, as history would put it, I mean, notoriously, Navi tend to have a slow start to the year when it comes to their monthly finals. I mean, they don't tend to make the grand finals this early on, and it does feel like it could be in the air. Just the way they've come so prepared for this, uh, it really does speak volumes. This is that moment, I believe, coming out shortly with MMA as well, with the Willow pick. Many people probably didn't even see it coming at all. It was very swift. There it is. Just that angle there to be able to secure it and blink and you miss it moment. Angel Boy with 10 takedowns as well. But again, I've got to draw attention. Gi, you know, with a hefty amount of DPS, uh, Yoshi actually had the most on the side of SK, but nonetheless, what we've seen today more and more, time and time again, is Navi playing out the objective. Despite the statistics in front of us, it was them that really focused on that. Just getting those goals scored and just eradicating all the DPS on the side of SK, which, let's be honest, is more than the highest scoring person on the side of Navi being Cube. A great round for SK for all intents and purposes, but not when it came to the scoreline. 
Yeah, I could not agree more. I mean, it's crazy. The highest DPS on Navi is lower than the lowest DPS from SK, and yeah. that's not even counting the fact that the Willow had below 100 DPS, which is incredibly low. So, a tough set for SK to lose because they were winning their lanes all right, or at least getting damage. But Navi was able to most often heal it up, brush it off, and go in and their pushes were rewarded with a goal usually, which was quite the big difference here. But Kaboom Canyon and Heist is gonna be different. Getting some pokes and kills here and there is gonna be very useful in keeping control of the mid, and really it's only from the mid that you'll be able to get damage on safe. Such a great map, isn't it? So many options here. Depends on what the bands are, of course, but I'm looking for crows, pennies. Lola's a great hero as well. Penny Band, Amber Band, B, Max, Pro, and Eve, all of which I like, I'll be honest. And Collect will be the first to show its face for SK. It's a very strong starting brawler. Able to stay within the mid whilst getting damage. Goes a long, long way. Coming in shortly, though, will be the response, and that'll be the Navi. Uh, just to mention as well that Jetson is coming back in for Gie, so he will be present for this one. Hopefully, for SK's sake, it's not the last. First brawler coming in for Navi. Sometimes some safer ideas, but I think the Crow is going to be a must here for me. Bonnie taking it away almost from the hands of SK because surely they would have followed up with that. He valued the Colette a bit more, but it's definitely a solid one to have and a big, big pick for EMEA. Very, very common. In both the pick rates and the win rates. Will it be a crow? Will it be something like a Meg? Because it is available. I don't think Meg has a place here. But then again, I'm, I'm constantly surprised today. Uh, pretty much more often than not, when Meg is not banned, it's picked. But so far, not going to happen. The only game where that was the case was Knockout. Pretty much every other instance, if it's not banned, it is, has been picked. Otis by Navi is a bit of a tankier defensive measure. And now, the ball back over to SK. Yeah, I maybe still like a Brock for the wall break and the damage on safe. But it's not the easiest one to play out. I mean, you get jumped on by the Bonnie, you're pretty much done. And if you're up close against anyone, you'll be losing those matchups too. Carl is an option. We saw it earlier today on Kaboom Canyon as well, and they will go for the Brock. Nice. I kind of like the come from SK Gaming, but I don't know if I like it because it's just comfy and familiar picks to this map or because it's actually meta, if that makes any sense. I like it. I do like it. I kind of wonder whether Navi might try something a bit daring, like an 8-bit across the river or something. But yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, daring is definitely where their minds were at. And But I'll be honest, I think this is actually one of the weakest maps for, uh, for, uh, for Buzz, if I'm honest. I think that safe zone makes a lot of sense to me. Hot potato even makes a lot of sense to me. But here it's definitely going to be more vulnerable. And with so much range at the disposal of SK, Carl with the flying hook to go over the lake can really cause a lot of damage, as you mentioned already. The Brock with the incendiary, the Colette for control in the mid. I'm much favoring more towards SK Gaming here in terms of their draft, but this is where, for me, Navi are a little bit of an outsider because they've had some crazy or wackier ideas today, but more often than not, they have, they have come out on top with them. So it's a tough one to call so soon, so early on, but it's Angel Boy on the bus. And that is always, always, always a bad day for someone. <laughs> yeah, I could. I, I mean, I could not agree more. He is an absolute danger. He's probably just going to go down here, but he's allowed to heal up a little bit and actually gets a good one to I kill. Should be able to connect the rest of his ammunition onto the safe. That gives a nice early lead for Navi, but one that Jetton quickly wants to equalize and does so successfully and miss from angel boy that's a lot of value it takes a while to reload that bus super and in the meantime he's pretty much just a sitting duck feeding supers he does have his super back now he's gonna use it onto yashi cube is sneaking up onto that left side and escape they're committing three players to defend him off but then they leave and let him be Still quite close in terms of the scoreline, just the 4% in it. It's Navi. Do you want to fend off this push coming in as Chaos joins the mix now? 
The mute available to MMA could be very important here. But HP too low to really contest the situation. Angel Boy's just waiting for a chance to go in. That was not it. Not even close, really. So we'll have to earn it back and stay in position. But SK already just kind of going a bit away from the radius. He would like to be able to earn it faster, and they're not giving it for free. Justin goes in with a flying hook as well. Protected pirouette. It's going to keep his survivability in check. We'll get just a little bit of damage. But in the meanwhile, on the other side of the things, Navi have caused some damage. They got the lead. Yeah, now Yashi in the mid is not in the best position. Needs to fall back and will do so successfully. Beautiful kill from Akios with the help of Jadon. Onto that buzz. The Colette super. It's going to cause a pull as well. And Angel Boy is now suddenly in the middle of the action. Invincible as well for a second whilst he was fighting already in mid. And now only 3% are separating Navi from a match point. They still need... Well, actually... They have the lead, but they'll extend the lead. Furthermore, and Yashi knows that even if he were to push forward and get some more hits on safe, that would not be even close to enough. Fairly close for the most part. Definitely still winnable for SK. But I mean, Navi, they're on match point right now, and all eyes are on SK to do something, to find some sort of reaction. They pulled off the reverse sweep already earlier today. Now they got to do it all over again. The might of the world up against SK now. I mean, we've seen reverse sweeps today. <laughs> That's safe to say, isn't it? We've seen two, almost three. But would it be a, would it be a third today? A, a solid third? That's the question. Now and ever for SK. But for Navi, this is a huge moment for them. And they can feel it. They can sense it. They're this close now. And they were breaking character just a little bit between the rounds. We saw the smiles coming back that we saw early in the quarterfinals. I think it's obvious as to why. A big jump in there from Cube does get a great deal of value considering the Jetson has the protective pirouette in progress and Angel Boy comes in with a big smash. But it is SK that come out on top and are able to now get themselves dug deep into the mid and maybe a little bit of damage they can. Not going to be an opening there for Navi to allow. So they have to go back to the drawing board, but pretty decent, all things considered. Oh, shoot. It's still low. Just trying to get as much value as he can whilst not healing up. An interesting interaction on the left. It had been a minute since I've seen it, but basically Angel Boy pulls the Carl and the Carl dashes away. But that doesn't get rid of the buzz that's leached onto you. And look at that damage on safe. Body blocking as well very nicely to keep Angel Boy alive for longer, dealing more damage. 54%, that's the lead that was picked up by Navi after that push, and there's two supers available as well, one which is going to be missed by Angel Boy again. He's missed quite a couple, but the ones he's hit have absolutely made up for that. Mimei has got the muse as well, but SK have not been giving them many opportunities to use them and have more than not been evading a lot of these supers, and that was a bit of a rough one there for Angel Boy. It's chaos, it's some damage dealt. SK is still behind. 25 seconds left on the clock. Angel with a big stun. And that is going to be a big blow for SK. Justin comes in. But how much damage can he realistically get? Not enough is the answer. And SK going to repush 15 seconds on the clock, Teddy. This is a nightmare for SK Gaming. Navi, all they need to do is defend. But if SK over aggress, they can just jump in with the Pawnee and they'll do that. Right now, get the final bits of damage. Overkill, maybe. But it doesn't matter to Navi, because they are your EMEA champions for the monthly fan finals of April. Fantastic stuff from Navi. Their first ever monthly final win in the EMEA region. It has been two years since they've last won a monthly final. Maybe a little bit less, but still a very, very long time for a team that was pretty much uncontested in their previous region. It is a statement for them. Welcome to the new era of Navi. A historic moment, no doubt about it. One that Navi will not be forgetting for many years to come, it is safe to say. I mean, what a just complete and utter chaotic day when it came to the scorelines. But that, for a grand finals, was one of the more convincing we've seen all day. And I think that says a lot 
as to how much Navi wanted this today. And when you look back at how their year has been as well, the, the amount of preparation that they clearly put in today, it showed full force. I mean, it was so apparent that they were just a, a notch up of everyone else. And they've earned it. Absolutely so. Great for them. Couldn't be happier for them. And it has been, let's be honest, a long time coming. Yeah, it's crazy to think about. You know, it's been, what, 12, 11? I think, uh, yeah, 10 or 11 monthly finals they've participated in the EMEA. Maybe even more. And it's the first one they finally win. They've always been there, you know? Yeah. But never quite been there. And this time around, they will claim victory against stats wise. I mean, it looks better on the side of SK Gaming, but getting a kill is not the same as getting a high impact kill. And getting kills with the right timings and the right positions and with your teams being able to really capitalize, you, you need kills that create opportunities. And Navi today have truly excelled at that, getting the kills that provide the most value so that you can capitalize, that you can complete the objective at hand. Angel Boy is going to be your MVP for today. Thank you so much, up, Teddy. Always the, uh, always the bridesmaid, never the bride, really, for Navi, isn't it? But uh, I think I like it's worth the MVP. Someone. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> it was one of the best moments of Worlds, wasn't it? Uh, really, really was. But I think it sums it up perfectly, really, for Navi. Because they have just always been that little bit short. But today was not that day. And they really have proven themselves and everybody else. I mean, there was no doubt about it. Navi Nation was always, you know, backing them. But regardless, what a day. f -top. You're watching from the sidelines. Got to bring it back around to you, man. Like, how was that to watch? I mean, it was kind of what I expected to see, man. I think Navi came out with with a new fire underneath them, but the same. They're they're Navi, man. They're playing their game. They are feeling it. And like I said, coming into this finals, I was like, I think they're going to win, and I think they're going to win emphatically. And uh, they did. So not surprised here whatsoever. I am surprised that we're here in the finals watching Navi versus SK. But after the table was set, I got to admit, Navi, they're just playing something different, man. There's something in the air right now for 2023 that has Navi on it. You mentioned that they haven't won a monthly final in how long? A couple of years? It's so they have been over a year, yeah. Yeah. For EMEA, they've never won a monthly finals. For ECA, they were pretty much consistent, you know, in their region, pretty much every single month, if my memory's not mistaken. But they have struggled ever since. Yeah. So this is a, an awesome way to sort of bounce back. SK Gaming also, I mean, bouncing back, finding themselves in the finals. Obviously not the final performance that they would like to put up, but they tra they took down their opposition in Zeta Division, which is the number one, the team to look after. And they beat up their opponent in semifinals as well. And so SK Gaming, like I said, I mean, this is not their finals performance that they would have liked to have. But certainly, you leave here feeling some type of way in the positive. Absolutely. So Navi, do what they needed to, Teddy. What's the biggest difference maker here for Navi in your eyes? I think they learned how to draft. <laughs> <laughs> which, which, which sounds which like is interesting. This, but for it, a long time, dude, I, I swear to God, it felt like they did not know what they were like meant to be doing in the draft. They've been improving steadily, but this time around, I thought they had the best draft throughout the day, which to me is crazy to say that about Navi that, you know, <laughs> typically would have the worst drafts. Certainly something to experiment with, but experimentation leads to some good things and here navi find themselves very very comfortable as your number three team trailing by less than 30 points to reply totems number two zeta division clearly still number one but don't forget folks zeta division and reply totem both knocked out in the quarterfinals this time around arc not only do we see navi we see foot up there at 134 points and sk gaming certainly have a couple more points still off 
of the top eight, but I'm going to figure out just how many points they have. It's been a big shift up, hasn't it? And kind of what we were hoped for on summer level coming into this month. We wanted to see this region be blown wide open because when you get to that kind of halfway mark of the year, you really want to see just like the tables get turned and especially as a lot of teams as well, maybe disbanded along the way or some you know, roster movements as well, having shifted then uh, not just the action that we see, but also the points that are on the leaderboards and the teams that are competing. It's uh, it's very refreshing, isn't it? Well, just when you thought that you knew all of that safe division we're going to have, just a clear run. Navi, come along. <laughs> and SK, come along. And, and all these other greats we've been waiting to see really you know, evolve into full form. Uh, it's, it's just fantastic. EMEA really is the gift that keeps on giving. Worth noting, SK Gaming with 102 points in total. So shout out to them trying to join the rest of the pack. This is the way the rest of the world looks. At the moment, if we were to cut it short and go directly to Worlds, we would have Crazy Raccoon, that's Chitampo and the boys up from East Asia. EMEA would be repped by our top three. Over in NA West, it's Dog Walkers. In NA East, it's Tribe Gaming. And then South America East has Zest on top of the crop. Still got to figure out what mainland China is doing and how well they're handling things. But at the moment, things are spicy in the EMEA region for sure. That third spot being put up for Navi is, well... Very interesting. That said, we also have our Lance Chance qualifiers, and these are the squads that we might get a chance to see over their arc. When it comes down to the LCQ race, a lot of interesting teams here that are just on the cusp of being household names. Who do you think has the best chance outside of North America to make their mark on the BSC? Just start with the small questions, F Dodge, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say, North America for me has always been a region that I've thoroughly enjoyed watching. And, and this year has been just nothing short of a spectacle. I think most of us have really been doing so much in that region for me. I, I think Dog Walkers as well, you know, really, really shining through. Obviously, SC Men and Tribe have dominated for so long. And now we're seeing a lot of these underdogs really showing us all their worth. But uh, South America as well. I, I think we've got to keep a bit of an eye on them. Reconic Esports obviously with a big pickup this month. And you know, don't take your eyes off EMEA. You know, Dogs the Lobster, this could well be the year that we do see them, you know, really just strive for greatness. Every region brings something to the table uh, and not to discount any, but you did ask the question, I thought, I've got to go with my faves. So you, you put me on the spot. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I respect it, man. Well, you know what? I, I made you do the tough stuff. Now, time for you to do the fun stuff. Play of the day coming at you. Ark, talk us through the top play of today. I mean, there's been genuinely so many, and uh, but this was one of my personal faves. I've got to say, I've never seen this happen at all before in Knockout. But if you keep an eye on Philip on the left-hand side here, gets so much value from this early outset burn onto Blacksy, and it's a super that follows up as well, juggling his tasks between Javi there and Boss, and then the burn down there, and pop, pop, and then Boss just hesitates to pop, but nonetheless, he pops too. A triple takedown in Knockout with Amber with the burn. Wonderful stuff and just really, really impressive to see. Beautiful. I mean, that's the type of precision that we want to see when it comes out of some of these oddball select. Eh, when we see these brawlers being chosen. Got to pick my words carefully there for sure. It's everything getting shifted. But a number of good plays throughout the day, without a doubt. And a number of good players as well. We've got Navi sitting by for a good chance at a chat. Kill from the under on the grave there as well. MMA, it's good to see you. How are Hello. you doing, my friend? It's been a while. Your smile has been very, very prominent today, and for good reason. It's a very, very historic moment for you guys. I'm gonna ask the most boring of questions. How does it feel? Yeah, feeling so great. Uh, <laughs> uh, I can say something like, sorry for my bad English, but uh, I can uh, say some very words. But anyway, our team right now so happy, so I can uh, I can answer on on your all questions. <laughs> Dude, you've got great English. Don't worry about it, my friend. I've heard your interviews before. They were on point. I want to talk 
a little bit about previous months. Let's go back to last month. You didn't qualify. T tell us why and how that all happened. You know, what was the story there? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, about our uh, past uh, monthly final, monthly qualifier, uh, it was hard month for us because we didn't qualify. You know, sometimes uh, team uh, can thought about if you can qualify, you bad team maybe need something change, but we talking about this a lot. It uh, uh, was hard conversation about it for us, but anyway, we believed in our team. So we practice a lot, we work it a lot. You know, even for boot camp, especially for me, I need to fly so much time to get uh, get to the place and play with my team. So uh, this month was for us very hard too. But we we do this, <laughs> we did this. <laughs> That segues actually very nicely into my next question as well, because for me, this month, there was a very noticeable presence. Uh, the way that you guys handled yourselves, your drafts, and the way that you played was exceptional. Talk us through what did you guys focus on this month? How did you go from last month not qualifying to now being on top of the region? Yeah, um, maybe we just uh, start focus on our mistakes and be be honest to myself, to every teammates, and like this we become a, maybe a very good team and uh, a really and and we showed we uh, our really power what we can show and this day it showed it so everything was uh, useful for us. Like we think about what we did mistake, where, how, how need to fix it. It was a very, very big uh, work. I, I don't mean like uh, practice with scream and other. It's all about our me mentality. So it's together works great right now, as, as we can see. <laughs> it really shows. I want to bring things around to last year, actually, because some people at home may not remember. But going back to September of last year, you faced off against SK Gaming again in the Grand Finals and came short 3-1. And again later in October, the Grand Finals with Tribe Gaming EU and you lost 3-2. How does it feel to have come short you know, in those Grand Finals compared to now? What makes a team great in that sense to be able to come back and, and face those big losses but then come through and prevail to get the win. What does that take to come back and keep going at it? Mm. <laughs> it's a very interesting question, but uh, what I can say about this, uh, it's something like uh, in this uh, in this year, when every qualifier, every monthly final, so important, uh, when you become as already in the final. It's a very, very good uh, profit for you because uh, it's very important, important as, I, as I can say early. But uh, you, you feel so good and already just ready to play this uh, last game. You don't worry like it was it's our first round, our set, our first set. It was hard for us a bit start and come to play better. But uh, in, in this final, we... We, was, we were all ready to play and uh, beat this game and take our first champion monthly. It's uh, very important for us because, uh, yeah, it's a EMEA, it's a very strong region, so it's uh, very cool. We can see it, your mindset, the focus was absolutely on the money and a massive congratulations to you and your team. Do you want to give any shout outs to your fans and following? We know the Navi Nation <laughs> and how much support they give. So anything you'd like to say and uh, then you can tell us how you intend to celebrate. Yeah, um, what can I say? Thank you very much for everyone who supports us. It's hard for us. Uh, it was hard for us after our previous monthly final. So thank you very much, guys. And thank you for so cool cast to all casters. Uh, thank you for Brawl Stars Esports. 
and also for our organization Navi, uh, who supports us after even every, very, very bad results. And of course, uh, thank you for our uh, family, like for everyone, uh, me, Cube, uh, Angel Boy, every have a uh, very cool support uh, by our family, yeah, from our family. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you very, very much, guys. And perfectly said. No, let's go and then celebrate. Enjoy your day. Congratulations once again and good luck next month. We'll see you guys very, very soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Great to see you, Thought and Teddy. I mean, you know, I, I know MMA mentioned about his English. I think he mentioned some things that were very, very crucial there for me and, and really encapsulated a lot of what the BSC is about. You know, coming back uh, against the odds uh, and just being able to improve your scoreline, it, it makes a world of difference when you see a team that just keep coming back until they make it in this region. What I loved, what I loved there was how he really stressed, like, listen, man, it, it's a mentality. Everybody always says it's a mentality switch, da, 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 but he told us how. We went to work. Like, it's work going to practice in this, then the third, but now we look at it analytically, kind of talked us through that. Very cool to kind of see how, how it's different as we approach. And the more, the longer brawl goes on, Teddy, we're going to see more and more of this. More teams kind of take a step back, realize that they need to reassess how they approach the BSC, and then come back to work and then find success. This is a much different league than it was even just last year and especially the year before. This is a professionals league. Navi played like professionals today. I'm very excited. Yeah, I mean, you know, not only did they work really hard to get here, here's the thing, every team works incredibly hard, right? Even just to make it to the monthly finals. But for Navi this time around, it absolutely paid off. They went from ninth place in the, in the, in the leaderboards to third. Now, that's a massive jump. That's, you know, straight up qualifying if they keep it up like that. And ninth place, you're not even sure to potentially make it to LCQ. So it's a very different perspective. And honestly, I mean, I I'm so happy for their success. You know, working yeah. hard pays off. And, and that's the sort of uh, stories that we always love in the BSC. Last bit. To end on, I think is really fun how Navi certainly came through and, and worked and improved, but they're still the same Navi squad. They trusted in their approach and they just refined it a bit and they find themselves on top of EMEA. You guys are on top of the world. Thank you so much for joining us. That's it for us here at the monthly finals. We'll catch you on the other side. Injured boy should be able to survive, but no, he doesn't. He goes down. Is there enough time here? They're in the zone. A couple percentages behind. I think they may have miscalculated because right now Cube is going to lock it in for Navi. SKR staring at that clock. One star separates our teams. And Jetton, 400 HP. Here comes Meow. Now Jetton healing up, hiding behind. Yoshi gets the kill. That's it. It's done. Zeta Division number one in the region. Out. Angel Boy missing these shots, won't miss that one. I don't care how many it took, that's the one that landed. Navi one away from finals, the pull is good! And Navi are great! It's neck and neck, Bagheer on the zone, it's speeding in more objective power to SK. Only 10% left, they've got to shake him, they've got to shake him now, and they've got to start to come together here, or it's going to be all over. Huge. SK Gaming make it to the Grand Final. Navi, all they need to do is defend, but if SK over aggress, they can just jump in with the Bonnie and they'll do that. Right now, get the final bits of damage. Overkill, maybe, but it doesn't matter to Navi, because they are your EMEA champions.